kind of a northy rising swell yesterday and then and another reinforcement further from the west so yesterday we were off for our uh, our second official day of running but it was too much north swell a little bit too much sand you know the wind has kind of been a non-factor which mm -hmm. has been nice yeah. it's been really calm i mean there's not a coconut leaf moving as we speak right now but this westerly reinforcement has helped us being able to see more open lefts and there's still some rights out there too i know i was you know i'm always amazed with the athletes that the way they make it look easy when i showed up this morning it looked so big and scary <laughs> some second reefers rolling through and uh but i mean still guys couple guys getting some backdoor barrels we saw some in and outs and it's just cleaning up it seems like every minute it's just getting better and better yeah in and outs that is going to be the the key for the big scores um i want to say thank you to surfline for putting this on their website and uh, getting this broadcast throughout the world and uh, mahalo to salt and air productions all of the the crew here with mike prickett and the gang thank you guys so very much so anybody tuning in right now we want to say mahalo to you as well and share the site tell your friends it's going to be an epic day we're not quite started with the official heats yet i believe we're shooting for an 8:45 start so that's about 10 minutes away from our time right now and we've got a couple of really cool teams i, I believe our first team that's going to be in the water is as you know we do uh the pulling of teams out of a hat to see who goes first and It'll be the Peruvians yes. that'll be out there. The Peruvian Tubos team with uh, Alvaro Malpartida, Gabriel Villaran, Cristobal de Cole, Alonso Correa, Joaquin del Castillo. So that's a really strong foreign or uh, international team. International. Uh, another really cool team that I'm excited to see and so stoked for is our Wahine team, our WSL Wahine team. Yeah. That consists of Carissa Moore, Malia Manuel, Moana Wong, Kokoho, all local girls that know this spot very well and really like the fact that the Hui opened up that avenue of competition to have the Wahine come here and yeah. compete. Yeah, I'm so stoked on that division too. And it really shows the level of women surfing, right? To be out, to be in this event and the Hui backdoor shootout, shootout is known for pretty much it's heavy days right i saw carissa actually this morning walking on the beach and i was like good for you girl you go because it's pretty intimidating but i mean she's tough and she's go. also saw malia manuel and some of the other girls uh women excuse me and so my hat i tip my hat to them the women are definitely charging and i'm pretty sure we could say you know girls wahine women female it'll all be all g <laughs> um, and I want to say mahalo to our sponsors, too, because obviously uh, this event, you know, it's got a lot of prize money. It has a lot of prestige, but it will be uh, impossible to run without our great sponsors. So um, the Keiki Bungalows right down the road here. Right. That is uh, sponsoring this year, along with the Hui Wax and the Odom Corporation. Thank you very much. We've also got uh, Sinaloa, the tortillas. Sinaloa. I buy those all the I time. I do too. <laughs> Aloha salads. And uh, Chris Lufrano, been uh, helping us out for some years now. Body <laughs> Armor, Kona Brewing Hawaii. Hopefully we'll be helping us out a little bit later. Yeah. <laughs> <in the afternoon. laughs> Monster Energy and uh, Keala Aiwohi, thank you very much. Uh, Defend Hawaii, Chris and the crew there. And we're wearing our beautiful brand new Oahu Golf Apparel. Bro, these shirts are -shirts. comfy. They're super comfy. Tim Hazelgrove and the Oahu Golf Apparel OGA. Thank you very much. Himiko Organic, Kenui Kitchen, Konos Hawaii, Pupukea Grill, and Two Thumbs Tattoo over there in Mililani. Better bowl. Mahalo. And um, wow, a lot of uh, great. Uh, food and beverage sponsors yeah. I'm looking always, forward to. I always get excited looking at our sponsors because I can start to predict what's for lunch. Yeah, and then hold on, Opu start rumbling. <laughs> <laughs> rumbling like the surf this morning. Boy, it's amazing Yeah, my Opu right cannot here. compete with that. Bro. <laughs> There's some huge waves coming in and um, 
you know, our Surfline forecast has it being really consistent and steady all day. Yeah. And uh, just looking at some of the reports here from the buoys that are out there. And um, the main buoys that we're looking at, 51001 and 51101. They're huge, uh, you know, 13 feet, 16 seconds. That's that's a pretty healthy swell, you know, solid 10 to 12 foot pipe. Um, yep, for real. You know, you're talking, Rocky, about um, the team divisions and you're yeah. excited about the, the Wahine team and the Peruvian team that's up first. There's some really cool teams. There's a Snap 4 team. Yeah. I don't know if you got a chance to see that film, but that was a smoker. I haven't seen that film yet. Yeah, I will watch it. Now. It's cool because I think we, you know, we live in the era of, uh, you know, sh short clips these days where everybody's, you know, posting ten to thirty second videos. So it's kind of cool to go back old school to watch a full length movie, and it kept my attention. Yeah, you know, uh, there's some of those, uh, you know, nights when the every the girls and everybody goes to bed, and and I'll be up watching TV and do a little YouTube search of like, you know, the old, the momentums and, and those <laughs> kinds. And yeah, it's like, man, it's a full 45 to 50 minutes of like just guys surfing. Yeah. Definitely uh, uh, appreciate the more full length features than the, um, you know, five minute clips that we see these days. But yeah, so much content out there. That's For the sure. point. That's so true. much content. And you that is a strong team with Mason Ho, local standout. Obviously, uh, surfing's in his DNA, especially here at Pipeline. Oh, yeah. With uh, his pops, Michael Ho, and the late, great, legendary Uncle D. Uncle Derek. See all of the uh, tributes as you walk into this, right. you know, kind of a, I feel like it's more than just surf houses when we line up the, you know, the area here it yeah. is like hollowed ground of hollowed just ground pipeline proficiency and and, For sure. and, and there's history a, there's a real kind of cool community and historical sense to it when you s see all the names of of legends that have surfed here and sadly those who've passed as well uh, and you can feel the mana and the spirit from these individuals so that'll be uh Mason Ho will be joined by Benji Brand, another excellent pipeline surfer. Baron Mamiya, he's been showing his stuff the last couple of years and has just matured exponentially uh, in his surfing style. Parker Coffin, a California standout, and uh, Aton Osborne made a name for himself the last couple of years here. So that Snap 4 team going to be exciting with a couple of newcomers. Right. Um, you know, you've got uh, Quicksilver with Koa Rothman, Reef McIntosh, Cody Young, and Zeke Lau. Right. And, and uh, Zeke, by the way, was also in Snap 4. Okay. I voted for him to be the best one in that video. I thought his section was amazing. Um, but, you know, so was Mason's and Benji's and so many others. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's why that film was so cool. Everybody was just ripping. But looking forward to watching Zeke today as well. He's, he's had an amazing year. Huh? Yeah. A lot going on in life with getting engaged, the ultimate surfer. Yep. Uh, you know, leading the rankings, getting on the tour. Yep, back on tour. That's that's so good for Zeke. Yep. Happy for him. And the Huey Wax team uh, made up of uh, pretty much four living legends with Makua Rothman, Billy Kemper, Kai Lenny. Jamie O'Brien, uh, all, you know, with success out here. Kyleni, kind of the more recent uh, convert to, you know, he's always rode a short board, I know, throughout his whole life. But mm. in the competition, you know, obviously, uh, you know, more than a handful of times, the stand-up paddle surf champion and big wave surfer. But now getting uh, into shortboard competition right. he's a talented individual i mean amazing how rounded he is you know yeah i'm always blown away like sometimes i forget that he he's amazing at like even windsurfing right it's just like whoa yeah 
kite surfing, windsurfing, stand up paddle surf, big wave, small wave, short board. I haven't seen him ride a conventional, traditional longboard. That's the oh. only craft. <laughs> I'm sure he I have can not do that seen Kailani on, <laughs> but I have no doubts that if he were to, it would be on. I'm sure you'll able, able to hear the uh, beach announcer, the great Kainoa McGee, and he just blew the official start of this the Hui Backdoor Shootout of 2022. It is on, and the Peruvians are out there. And the format is one of the greatest formats I enjoy watching right. because these guys, not only are they competing for a team effort and a team score but you're competing out there with your team and we had done this format a couple different ways mm -hmm. in the past it would be one kind of sc scrapping for the waves right right but when it's all your teammates it's just like when you're free surfing with your friends like oh go bro go, go. and you're <laughs> super stoked to call them in and i tell you surfing this wave there's no other place where you want that encouragement. And, you know, right. it's so much easier to relax and know this wave's coming to you to catch it rather than to fight for position and, right. and be in the wrong spot, too, because you're pushing each other so deep. So this uh, reinvented, you know, current format, surfing with your team is the ultimate. Yeah, that's one thing I love about the backdoor shootout. Um, there's a real aloha spirit to it real community sense a lot of like you know like a lot of aloha lots of sharing and here we have a wave right here and this is going to be difficult because there's no color jerseys and i kind of know some of these guys a little bit <laughs> <laughs> from seeing them compete in previous events but gosh I don't, if I saw him in Foodland, I might not know who it is. <laughs> so looking at this, uh, we might wait for some cues from our beach announcer, Kainoa, to right. give you the exact names. But we can tell you on this Peruvian team, we have Alvaro Malpartida, Gabriel Villaran, Cristobal de Cole, Alonso Correa, and Joaquin del Castillo in other events right but here we go paddling oh. and decided not to go that one spitting at back door right there wow oh, this and he is it's amazing to getting I mean, a even though that you couldn't see it on the screen it was just a perfect peak that barreled left and right spit bolt ends Ooh. I guess maybe one of his friends needed to cheer him on a little bit more. Oh, for real? Push you? Hard to pull back with some uncle pushing your feet, yeah. huh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, this was, I mean, I wasn't even a, a grandma. I was like 22 years old. <laughs> <laughs> by, by Chris Taloa. And I know there's a, a lot of us that experience uh, that. Where you're like, oh, all of a sudden you get this turbo boost. On the bodyboard, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he Chris was Juan. On the bodyboard, and yep. <laughs> so you see our Peruvians kind of stacked up right there and it looks like it is uh, four surfers at a time you know some teams have more than four surfers and they'll probably rotate in and out yep. uh, to give more people opportunity but this event has the team award for best points amassed as a four person surfing team yep and there's also the individual awards so and the point scale I believe we're still pushing it up to that 12-point well, scale. Just for that extra. Which is unique extra. to this event. You know, there's so many waves out here that are better than a 10. And when that's the top of your scale, 
you know, every year you probably could have five or six tens of different varieties. So another really great uh, adaptation to the criteria is pushing it up to that 12 points. And, and that right. extra two points gives you some room to, uh, you know, reward those waves that are, you know, you look and like, wow, that's better than a 10. Why don't we give it a score better than a 10? <laughs> yeah. And I remember that's exactly what happened last time. Oh, here we have a rider up. Yeah, so the last backdoor shootout. Also excited to watch the 12 point ride of Keito, Keito Matsuoka. Keito, yeah. Ended up being the wave of the winner. Yes, it was. I, I actually hosted the event at um, for Surfline uh, that gave him the wave of the winter and so I got to see that wave a lot of times <laughs> over and it never got old. Right. One of those things where you could watch it a zillion times and still be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, you know, Rocky, when I showed up this morning, as I'm looking at the waves today, I feel like entry even with the forecast it's there's some pumping surf in the distance yeah uh you could see from this back door over the years you know because i think it's pretty fitting to have peru in this event yeah you know of of our international competitors of course we've got uh japan uh, always here but you know, how great to incorporate the, the Peruvian contingency with all of that history also linked up with, uh, with the sport of surfing. Yeah. Yeah, and these guys are no strangers to charging waves too. Um, especially, you know, Gabriel Villarán. I've seen a lot of heavy barrels, but that guy and uh, many other, Cristobal de Cole and Alonzo Correa, here we go. Okay. We've got a goofy foot surfer up and riding. And, man, he had to focus so hard. Wow. See how he just got flicked off? Like Annihilated. the power of this ocean <laughs> and the way it just detonates on that reef. I mean, he literally was there one second as he <laughs> drops in. Watch the transition. Oh, there was stick Gone. with the drone shot. And then it just literally, like, Where'd he go? Fly off the <laughs> table. Just a crazy big drop. Another uh, interesting team that we have uh, on tap for this year's event is Team Florence right. with uh, John, Nate, and Ivan, and, uh, and then Eli Olsen joining right. them. I see Alex Florence, which is mom. Mm. I'm curious to know. Maybe I think she's just like the mom sponsor. She is. Maybe. Uh, Who knows? You but know, she maybe surfs really well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we could see her grab her board and go with How the, cool is that, though, to have boys. a family? I think they're the first. Well, maybe we've had the whole family in the past, but kind of cool to have, like, a family team. Yeah, the, it's the Ohana team. And, and, you know, Eli pretty much, you know, kind of adopted brother of that family right. too they spend a lot of time together so that's uh that's quite fitting for the team florence team and um you know maybe their uh last event that the the hic event that we had here at pipe recently it really is cool to hear john john talk about what it was like to, to surf with his brother through yeah. all, all those rounds so maybe that inspired him to throw in a team for the family well i tell you what uh it really you know, I know Ivan has been a, a great understudy of his older brothers coming up uh, in the last few years. But, you know, in competition, he really put his uh, skill and name on the map with those performances and getting a perfect 10. Speaking of 10s uh, earlier, it's perfect 10 during that HIC Pipe Pro, uh, which was a little different format than our previous year's pipe masters because it was during that same waiting period mm. but really great to see the 
locals from around here and the guys that normally wouldn't have a chance in the pipe masters to get that opportunity and man they, they did not squander it there were some really amazing performances but ivan really stood out and could have inspired this family team yeah <laughs> no amazing yeah so as we're looking out to the horizon it really looks like the surf is cleaning up now that we often hear that term morning sickness out here do you want to explain that to our yeah viewers? so you know the real early mornings before the sun comes over the little mountain behind us you can get um, you can get the swell being a little bit wonky a little uh, side chop and different kinds of uh, uh, rough patches and sections and it seems to be happening more often early in the morning. Somehow, you know, when that sun comes over the mountain, it does something either to the temperature of the water right. or the air, but it just starts to organize itself That's a lot better. And yeah. that morning sickness term uh, is really prevalent here on the North Shore. All right. So we are uh, seeing another nice tribute to Derek Cole right there, King of Pipeline and Loving Memory at the right away there. But we've uh, added five minutes now to each heat. So originally 50 minutes. The heats are now 55 minutes. And I think Water Patrol just relayed that message. You see the remnant jet ski wake on that drone footage letting the current competitors know and that's probably a comforting thing to, yeah. you know, hear that you get five extra minutes, not five less minutes. <laughs> bro, how's that, though? What what other surf contest would they, out of the blue, hey, bro, you get five more minutes. By the way, well. yeah, we're going to extend the heats. I love it. Yeah, it's like you talked about earlier, the, the community vibe, the family vibe, the Ohana vibe, it not only makes itself felt while you're hanging out around the area and seeing everybody, but it's also just, yeah, the mechanics of the event have that vibe of, hey, you know, as long as the rules apply to everybody, we're making our own rules and because um, we can. Yeah, can. Despite the fact that there is like this real Aloha community, there's still like competitive spirit out there. Yeah. So I know that uh, you know I'm, I'm it is a, it's watching a healthy all of our competitors here, and and uh, you can tell that I mean there's there's aloha, but there's also some you know desire to win. Yeah, it, it, it's a healthy competitive spirit. Right. Um, and you know it 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 has a it has a uh, free surf kind of vibe and feel to it. Mm. But there's real dollars and <laughs> prestige <laughs> at stake. And, you know, what I love, too, is, I mean, we have some of the best pipe surfers in the world surfing this event. I mean, from... Without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, we got, I mean, from John John Florence to, I mean, Billy Kemper. Everyone on this list is just... Uh, amazing, accomplished pipeline surfers. Mason Ho, looking forward to watching. Are there any other teams you're really looking forward to? Um, you know, I, I really like uh, the lineup for the, the Volcom team. Right. You know, you got Kaimana, Henry. He's a previous winner of this event. And the New York surfer, Balaram Stack. Right. Always puts on a great show here. Mikey O'Shaughnessy, he's a former Wave of the Winter recipient. Right. Uh, Jack Robinson, amazing out here. And then you got the Young Bucks. You know, you got Makana Pang from North Shore. He's been performing really well here and charging the last few years. And then a finalist from the HIC Pipe Pro right. and a young teenager, Kainehe Hunt, right. in this uh, for Team Volcom. So I, I really like the, comp the, you know, the makeup of that team. <laughs> oh, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> Uncle, Brian. See you, Uncle Brian. 
All right. All right. Oh, we got some of the uh, the OGs, OGs hanging out with us today. So Uncle Manny DeSoto, Uncle Brian Amona, of course Uncle Eddie's yeah. been on the on the uh, <coughs> swell watch since first thing in the morning. But and uh, the Japan team also very strong. Right. Although I don't see Keito Matsuoka, mm. Shinpei Horiguchi, Taichi Wakita, Gai Sato, Daiki Matsunaga, and uh, Riaru Ito, a newcomer for Team Japan. Well, Kato already dropped the mic on us. So yeah. Yeah, he said, bah, Boom. 112, and I'll see you guys <laughs> later. Uh, so it's good to see um, uh, Uncle Brian Amona over here. Yep. And, you know, 1976, they founded the Huyo Nalu. And you'll see in and out, there's some segments that they show a little bit about the, the history of the Huyo Nalu. And we could throw in some Hawaiian terminology in the event, so teach some terms. So the word hui, it just means the group. It's a group or a club or uh, to, to gather. Mm -hmm. And he'enalu is the Hawaiian word for surfing. Uh, he'e is the, the octopus. Yep. And nalu is the wave. Kind of cool, the he'e. If you ever, I don't know if you have an eye for that, but some, some guys I know get I, good I, eye I for that. <laughs> Probably the, the, the best eye I get for he is on National Geographic. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe in line at uh, Foodland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you don't really see them sliding at Foodland. But yeah, yeah. But uh, what you're alluding to is the manner in which right? the he moves. Right. So if you watch an octopus as it skirts along the bottom of the seafloor, uh, it's got a real smooth, slick glide to mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. right? And so to he uh, is, is to imitate that octopus as it, the way that it, it slides. And so sliding along the nalu or the wave is our uh, term he -e nalu. Yeah. And what a, a great way to introduce or have our first Hawaiian language teaching of the day than to start with the hui o he -e nalu. Right. Um, right. Yep. Looks like a so paddle. So just getting the words from uh, Kainoa McGee, they were, the Peruvian team was going to attempt to replace one of the surfers while in the heat. I'm not sure if there was either an injury or, or some kind of uh, uh, strategy, mm -hmm. you know, behind switching a, a team member. But you can only s switch a surfer during your next round. You right. cannot do uh, during heat substitutions. So what you're telling me is there are some rules. There are some rules, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, you cannot sub in like you do basketball. Right. You know? Okay, you come out, I go in. in but right, right. it's um, one of the surfers in the heat that was going to be substituted. But we got the word that you can substitute into the next round. Next so, round. And that's how that part of the format was familiar to me over right. the last few now, years. How many times does each team get to surf? So that also will be determined kind of based on the conditions. Right. So ideally, we want to give everybody as much chances as possible within the time frame and within the quality surf. Mm. Um, so we've seen rounds up to five and six rounds of surfing when we've been really blessed with right. a lot of good surf. We've seen as little as, you know, four rounds. And uh, a round constitutes every team getting to surf their full potential heat on that particular day. So right. for today, we've got the Peruvian team starting. Uh, we'll find out who drew uh, heat number two. But as, as we said in the beginning... The way we create the order of teams and their surfing is literally picking numbers out of a hat, mm -hmm. which is you don't get much more fair than right. than that. Um, and so Peruvian team, uh, the Peruvian Tubos team drew number one. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're out first. And uh, we'll see who the second, third and so on teams are throughout the day. But um uh, it is really um, important that each team gets their full session for that day for the round to 
count. And I know in the past we've had a very unique panel of judges. Right. Uh, ranging from the great Sean Briley to Pancho Sullivan to um, uh, others that have competed and, and done well here before. I, I haven't gotten the word on exactly who the judges are for this year's event, but, you know, during our break, one of us can go yeah. Yeah. mosey on up there and see. No, I love that, that um, the judges are experienced surfers out here at Pipeline. Yeah. So I think they understand how critical a wave is and are able to take that into consideration when dropping a score. And being that the criteria gets pushed up to that 12 point scale, it just, every little part of this contest that you examine, you really see the uniqueness of right. the event. Right. And I like how uh, it's been, you know, formulated over the years and and they've had the open-mindedness to try new things see what works see what doesn't work see what's worked back so i think we're really honing in on the ultimate format right certainly well, in addition to all these team surfing uh folks that we have here we've an, an event that really uh is a part that's cool about this event is the different types of wave riding vehicles and we've, we've got long borders we've got stand-up paddle borders yeah so that'll be uh something to watch yeah. as we progress through the event no i'm not sure if we're gonna see those divisions today but i do look forward to them and it's kind of cool that especially with the longboard division i mean some of these folks bonga perkins lance o'connell kai Sales, uh many many others uh Kaniela stewart you know, they, these guys know how to tube ride at Pipeline, even on a nine-foot board. It's not easy on those big boards. And there is a big drop from one of our Peruvian Tubos team competitors. Right. You know, another interesting uh, concept with this event is nobody really needs to like find a wave or find a score so we will see our surfers be quite selective right yeah and we're seeing that i think too in this this heat they're being selective and you know it's got to be a, even though the the nerves for the competition may not be strong mm. there's still nerves for getting caught inside because we just have some of those second reefers come through wash through that's probably a little nerve-wracking out there yeah uh just being in the presence of these waves and uh, if you're thinking about getting into this ocean oh man the the heart rate really starts to elevate right well now on your screen you're seeing just two surfers in your frame and it you know looks like a very lonely lineup but there's a third surfer there and you know, we've had a lot of rain the last couple of weeks, so yeah. you'll see the water color be a little bit murky, mm. you know, not, not as not bright as blue right. as it usually is. So that uh, would be the reason for some of the little tints of brown tints. in the white water and uh, some of the, the darker color water that we're seeing. Man, it was just coming down yeah, like was every day over the holidays, too. Uh. That's why Hawaii is green, though. It keeps us green, and no complaints, that's for sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, just got to mow the lawn a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. But I get plenty of excuses for not go outside and mow the lawn. Like, oh, raining. <laughs> <laughs> just so happened there's a football game on. No can work. <laughs> yeah. <Raining. laughs> right. So also looking out here, you can see the Hawaiian Water Patrol sitting in the channel. It's always nice. These guys are the best in the business. Been doing it for years. Yeah, uh, and decades, right fact. now three jet skis in the water. So it looks like two for safety 
and one with the big antenna where Larry Haynes is shooting off the back of that ski to get some of the in-water footage, which is some of the, the more priceless footage right. that you can get of pipeline. For sure. You know, and, and with the expert operation of those jet skis by the Water Patrol team members combined with, you know, Larry's zeal for getting the good shots. Right. Uh, get some of the greatest pipeline in looking shots that you'll ever see. Right. You know, it's hard swimming around out there holding this bulky oh. camera <laughs> above water. So for sitting sure. on the ski is great. Uh, yeah, it always amazes me how they can get the ski right in the right spot. I mean, earlier this morning we were watching them surfing the waves. These surfing guys, uh, definitely with a jet know what ski. they're doing. Don't try this at home. <laughs> yeah. And earlier we were talking about uh, some terms, uh, what the word hui and he'enalu mean, surfing and hui he'enalu. We saw Uncle Brian Amona. Uncle Brian was one of the original founders of the surf club, the Huyo He'enalu, formed in 1976. Wow, that's some history right there, 1976. And at this event... Were you born yet, Rocky? No, I was negative tree. Wow, bro, <laughs> so making me feel old. I was positive tree. Okay. <laughs> so uh, 1976, you had, uh, you know, a really big influx of attention. Uh, to the North Shore and to the waves here. Mm. And I know, you know, leading up to that, there was uh, obviously, you know, the beginning of the the influx of attention. But I, I feel like, you know, it started to really start to, you know, ramp up during the 70s. Yeah. So, I mean, I have my own take on that. And I think uh -huh. the... the the version of the story that's pretty prevalent, at least amongst the you know surf documentaries and such, um, really kind of looks at the story of of um, bronze dozies, for example, right? Mm. People tell the story of uh, the bronze dozies came and it's sort of conflict conflict that took place. That we hear Yeti Aikau helped to kind of mediate between you know guys like Rabbit and with some of the local people, the Hawaiians here, Native Hawaiians, um, and it formed the Hui Ohe Nalu. But I think what also helps to contextualize in that story is understanding what was going on in Hawaii in 1976. So Hawaii is this essentially in 1970s, Hawaii is um, undergoing this period that we now call the Hawaiian Renaissance. Okay. So essentially, for so many years prior, decades prior, um, Hawaiians had experienced a lot of loss of, of identity in many ways. Um, uh, now, this isn't true for everyone. It's not like everyone forgot who they were. Right. But uh, we had some kind of policy in schools, for example, where they were they were not teaching Hawaiian as a language anymore. Okay. Uh, so you see some of the who spoke language fluently is like their first language. We call them manaleo. So manaleo is people who Hawaiian is their first language, and it, um, it's what they spoke um, from passed on from their families. Well, in, s in the 70s, people are starting to realize that a lot of our monoleo are now passing on um, and, and then, you know, realize that kind of anxiety over losing that sense of identity, right? Um, and language is so right. important, I believe, you know, with using the language or, you know, as a part of cultural identity, very and important. And what's cool is since then, the Hawaiian language, actually, uh, there are more speakers now mm. uh, because once they realized that the language was, was in many ways threatened to be lost, um, they opened up a lot of these what you call language immersion programs. Here we have a writer here. Oh. There we well go. done. Probably the best ride we've seen so far today. Yeah. And oh another big drop. Alonzo. Alonzo Correa. Oh, and yeah. He comes through. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good sign, Rocky. We have two back-to-back -back barrels. I think that's a good sign that uh, the waves are getting good. Yeah, starting to open up a little bit more, give a little more opportunity. Two main waves and one 
two successful barrel rides. Yeah. <coughs> and I think that second wave probably scored a little better. Yeah. It was, it was deep. Here we go. Kind of, you know, you. <coughs> this was the first one. Pumping really hard down the line. Oh, that was, I think that was the second one. This is the first one. And just in that pit line there, he was visible the whole way. Right. You know, not going to be the, the huge score that will be one of those keepers. But for a Peruvian Tubos surf team member, being able to surf pipe right. with just three of your Peruvian friends is score. a dream in dream. itself. For sure. But that second wave, a little bit deeper. Still, though, you have the, the criteria of... And you kind of use it to, you know, gauge how the score is going to come out um, if you're, you know, just spectating. But the degree of which you think he might not come out. Right. That's the uh, kind of the, 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 the standard. Yeah. yeah the, the scale of if it looks like he's going to make it or it looks really makeable, the score probably won't be that big. But if it looks like, wow, I don't know if he's coming out. Right and he does come out, that's when you know it's going to be a super high score into the double digits. So those two waves there, the first one, you know, going to be on the, you know, probably the lower end, the mid-range, you right. know, four or five points. Uh, the second one, probably just a little better. Yeah. I don't think it's going to uh, get into the excellent range, which would be anything, you know, above a nine, right. or eight or a nine. Eight or a nine. So I think that second one will be – Kind of fitting more into that, you know, yeah, six to seven point range. A, a great wave, well surfed. Yeah, and on but for our criteria, going to remain on that part of the scale. Right, and on on that first one, I think was Alonzo. You saw him really trying to stall. And right. stalling, what we mean by that is dragging your hand, your body, uh, any way to try to slow yourself down. And in those situations, usually you're kind of working hard to force it. Whereas the second wave. He's behind the peak. You saw him have to pump the board, go up and down, and uh, just so that he could make it through that cavern. Yeah, I mean, that was a pretty pretty good illustration of uh, the brake pedal and the gas pedal. There we go. When you're surfing pipeline. So, hope to get some scores. Yeah. Um, they had a few waves, the Peruvian team, uh, to start off, but saw a couple of big drops that were, you know, not producing. Saw a couple of quick kickouts. So those are the two most meaningful scores that uh, they're going to put on the board for their team and for themselves in this first heat. But, man, it is uh, quite the the draw to, to draw number one out yeah. of the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Little. On, on, on the first day of... The 2022, the Hui back there right. shootout. And I think, you know, even a little bit of nerves for this team in particular, you know, um, performing in front of their peers. The peers. You know, right. that's a lot of pressure. A little pressure. We have a paddle here. See that stall we were talking about earlier, dragging all the way at the bottom, ends up not working out too much for him for the barrel. But definitely a good sign that we're we're seeing that you're saying earlier that morning sickness sort of calmed down and a lot of a lot of big barrels out there. Yeah, some drone footage that we're checking out right now with uh our next heat. Oh, boy. Getting ready. Oh. We're going to head out there early, not leave anything to chance. It's one of those days, man, where you could be paddling out. And we'll try to get a, a look at who yeah, that team the is. That is the right Florence there. team. Yeah. Fireworks and about to happen. You know, I like how Water Illegal Patrol fireworks. is going to stop right there, give them a ride. Right. And um, speaking of fireworks, man, I... I'm so impressed at how many fireworks we always have oh, during oh, New Year's. And look at that right there. That was come on, right come on. at the takeoff. Oh, pulling in, there it coming is. out. 
very well done. There's that wow factor you're talking about, right? That kind of uncertainty of is well, it going to come out? From our angle, looking from the back here, it really looks deep. But here's the drone shot. Right. That was a wide one. Uh, that's what we call like from the north peak, right? Yeah. And almost, almost off the screen. It was over towards gums over yeah, here. Yeah, it really swung out. Uh, good job of tracking that one and finding it and uh, getting there it is that really high line entry into the barrel right. and it wasn't you know a super big spitter mm -hmm. you know there was almost no spit coming out of that one and somehow that surfer navigated inside that to find that exit that wasn't really gaping it wasn't your traditional yeah. you know pipeline wide open gaper that mm. you know spits tons of water out the other end it was uh, one of those you had to really technically skillfully get in and out of that one yeah a little more almondy shape we call it yeah yeah kind Although of almond I, have to say, I mean it is pipeline so it it's still pretty round right right, right? but not uh like you're saying the the like the real classic wide uh barrels that we and, see and another pipeline. um you know addition to the criteria has to do with the quality of the wave right <coughs> that you're surfing on so Which is although like that was really well done technically mm. the score won't elevate into that excellent range just because the wave was somewhat marginal right. but still great greatly surfed wave. i think that's what makes our sport of he'enalu so exciting and so unique right i mean no other sport really that i can think of where the court changes face the entire time. Right. The ramp has something different for a different surfer to offer. It is very stationary. Which is, in many ways, gives it a kind of a spiritualness to it because it's like the ocean, in many ways, chooses the rider. Right? Correct. Especially at, at Pipeline. I don't know if, you know, most of our viewers realize this, but Pipeline's lineup is not really definitive. Right. Like, they, they can swing a couple hundred yards to the left or to the right, and the waves break everywhere within that zone. Sometimes and you can go right over by the left, and sometimes <laughs> you go left over by the right. Um, it's, it's, it's a pretty wide open field, and so, you know, oftentimes the wave and the ocean will choose you if you're sitting in the right spot. And, and it is really uh, something about, you know, being in sync with the ocean or, or working with the ocean. You're never trying to battle the ocean or never trying to, you know, conquer. It is very much a f go with the flow, yeah. respectful, and just try to be in the right spot on the right side of, you know, whatever wave you're trying to surf. And, you know, that, that does lend a lot more to that spiritual aspect of you know being in sync with the ocean being one with the ocean and it makes our sport very very unique right you know Which the only others i can think of mm -hmm. that would be somewhat similar is that if you're like this uh, big time you know backcountry skier mm -hmm. snowboarder that's you know traversing down these uncut trails of you know and then the avalanche starts happening <laughs> <laughs> so you know that's basically you know it's the closest wave, right? comparison it's but wave. it's uh, other than that you know everything uh is is not not quite like it right actually a common hawaii saying is never turn your back to the ocean always respect it and um because Anything can happen at any time. Well, and you saw that quick shot of the shoreline and how smooth the sand is all the way up almost to the vegetation line. Right. So, you know, we're getting some really high surges. And yeah. that rule to never turn your back on the ocean definitely applies while hanging out here today. So our surfers are, are moving about the lineup right now, trying to track something down. You see, having a look at that one, but just breaking a little too far in. Mm. And it, it, you'll see it. every time 
a surfer paddles for a wave here, if they don't catch that particular wave, you could almost hear the vertebrae in their neck snap oh. as they turn around to look what's behind it. <laughs> it's the, the ultimate like consequence of, oh my, I'm missing this one, but what is behind it? And uh, you'll do like the exorcist full 180 <laughs> snap back to see what's back there. The chicken neck. Yeah. Uh. Well, you have to help me today, Rocky, because um, we have so much exciting surf going on. And sometimes I'll start a story okay. or a history something. Right, right, right. And then get sidetracked by one barrel. And, and then you know, forget where I was. So. Well, I think uh, we have some waves coming right now, though. Definitely some big waves out the back. You see them scratching and scrambling to get out of the way. Definitely a, a cat and mouse type of uh, yeah. analogy right. when it's like this the cat being the big huge second and third reef wave and the mice being our surfers <laughs> uh, i think i was talking about 1976 so we were uh leaving us off at 1976 yeah, and the uh, the year. renaissance right hawaiian renaissance uh, also the, the founding hawaiian of culture the Huyo Hitenalu. and the founding and some of the reasons for the founding now and, and it's interesting that 1976 itself is important. I mean, because the 70s, you know, you had this era of, like I mentioned earlier, um, this renaissance of culture of, in Hawaii where they're realizing, like I said earlier, with language and the importance mm -hmm. of not losing the language as the mana leo were passing. Um, but also we had another few things going on. We had the, the launching of the hokulea. So the hokulea yes. is the double-hold Hawaiian voyaging canoe that made its way to Tahiti. And that story is important to surfers because many surfers were on that. Speaking of surfers, here's a sick one. Just a little in front, and it didn't have that wall. It was more of uh, just a big peak and then oh. a shoulder. But look at this one from the outside. Big bottom turn coming up here and just going to stall and sit in that big pit. Impressive looking, but not as deep as he'd like to be right. which will not be a big score but it'll be a confidence booster and anytime you can make a wave from the drop to the bottom turn all the way through here at pipeline you can never amass enough confidence it takes it, confidence it, to do that where he just waited and waited and stalled whereas your natural instinct instinct when you'd see a wave bearing down on you that's three times over your head is to run is away to get away <laughs> <laughs> he's like no 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 i want to slow down i want to get closer and closer to it and that was pretty gutsy and that's that's what you'll see with our our top pipeline surfers these oftentimes we call them pipeline specialists and they specialize in just being fearless in the face of a monster right right that that comfortability on such a, an immense part of moving water that is really, yes. you know, nerves of steel. And look at this, spinning around, getting in this one, oh. and Woo. worked really hard to get right under that one. Right. And uh, the wave, unfortunately, didn't cooperate. And there's one of our first bails on screen. Not to bail means to ditch your board, dive under, because if you get, you know, dive deeper under, then hopefully the wave doesn't wash you through to the shore. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so check out this replay. replay. That was a really good effort to set the rail and uh, don't, just didn't extend. You know, that wave didn't progress down the line. So just a quick under the lip, tuck in, and then a kick out. Yeah. Yeah, and a charger too.
Yeah, and I, I, you know, these guys, the Peruvian Tubos team, they've been quite selective. I mean, I give them a lot of credit. It, there's a lot of pressure being an international team in an event like this. But, you know, us local surfers have a way, you know, if you're in this event as an international competitor, that is like tons of respect that these local surfers have for you. And, uh, you know, accepting the challenge and being here competing for these guys. I know it's a lot uh, and they feel probably some extra pressure to, to perform. And look at this down the line screamer and no chance there, but what an effort and just super courageous that one. Packed that thing, even though it was closing out. Went for it anyway. Yeah. Uh, but but this team, they've been, a, aside from that one right there, they've been a little bit selective. And I have a feeling that the Florence team coming up next is going to be less selective or maybe more active. Right. Uh, we'll see, though. I mean, you know. And we get, I mean, the Florence brothers grew up on this beach. Right? Yes. Since they were little kids i remember once years ago i was surfing out here at pipe and i was blown away this little kid paddled out and he looked like he was six years old literally he was probably little kid. eight or something but right and it wasn't small right and he was in his wetsuit had the blonde hair and i was just like some where's this child's parent <laughs> yeah and um but man he was so comfortable and so i mean having that comfortability out here I, I think these brothers definitely have it. And so, you know, and, and having that, that knowledge of which waves to go on right. uh, just sort of comes with that experience. Well, and there's no other way to get experienced out here or to, to know how to surf this wave without putting in numerous, countless amounts of hours. And, you know, even then you still get fooled or you still get tricked, you know, by this wave and by this surf spot. And, you know, that, that goes for a lot of places on the North Shore. But and in surfing in general is just, you know, the folks I work with uh, that are either first time surfers or that are wanting to get more serious into surfing and, and ask, you know, how do I get good or how do I, you know, what, what do you recommend I do if I, you know, want to take this up as, a, as an activity? And for one, it's, man, you have to be so patient uh, and realize that it takes a lot, a lot of hours, many hours to get okay, right. to get decent, <laughs> you know, to get anything that you would call good or, or you know, consistent. Right. You know, it is uh, just countless amount of hours put in. You know, the, the ocean conditions change every session you go out or are different from the time before. Right. The people you're surfing with or, or around are, you know, trying to get there. So it is just overall, yeah. man, it is not easy. And I commend those folks that really take it up and, and right. uh, get serious about it. Well, uh, our beach announcer, Kaino McGee, uh, just announced there's five minutes left. Okay. Right. And earlier we, we mentioned that we added those five minutes to the heat so, so this, the this we'll are see 55 minutes we'll see if this uh extra five minutes does anything positive for the peruvian tubos right. surf team they've got a couple of pretty good waves under their belt so far and it's just round one so they've got something to build on mm -hmm. and what's uh, great about the format is obviously they're going to get to surf again they're going to have another swing at it uh, at another time during the waiting period it probably won't be today i feel like with eight teams yeah each team That's you know we've pretty much allotted you right. know one hour per team so it'll be the eight hour full day so we're gonna watch the first full complete round of the shortboard convention uh regular competition team competition and uh the right. florence team will be up next they're just a few minutes away from their start so we'll see if the peruvians can take advantage of that Last 55 minutes. minutes that was uh, extended into right. this first round. 
I'm going to bring it back to 1976. Yes, let's go back right. to 76 so, for a little uh, bit. 76. We started talking about 76 because um, the Huyo Heenalu was formed in 1976. Right. I mentioned that 76 is also a time where the Hokulea canoe was launched and the double hole voyaging traditional canoe that um, uh, sailed to Tahiti. Eddie Aikau was on the second voyage, and we know that actually Eddie you know, lost his life and gave his life to try and saving the crew, and it capsized. 1978. You know, watching this. Oh. Joaquin Del yeah, Castillo. We, oh. And that one gets the attention of everyone on the beach and up in the houses watching. You know, chicken skin moments when you're when you're the surfer in the spot and you get a wave like that. And when you're pow, you can hear the beach the roaring. screaming and yelling for something that you did at pipeline is a really great feeling yeah we got to see the replay of that happy ending yeah the beach erupted and pretty cool that was of course the best wave of the, the morning so far that was the best wave he, he was definitely fully behind the curtain and I know from our screenshot, it looked uh, like you could see him the whole time. But when you look uh, into the live shot, the beach shot, he was quite disappeared. Was For sure. And then a lot of the the, the um, scoring, see maybe not the, the, the score itself, but, you know, just how well you can gauge the, the quality of the, the ride is the eruption. Of the beach yeah. crowd. <laughs> it helps. It helps the <laughs> score. Here comes another one taking off behind the peak. He opts to kick out of that one. Well, yeah, that was exciting. Here's so that was, I believe that was Crystal Ball. There's a Decole. heavy one right here. And Crystal Ball. Wow. Kainoa just mentioned the equipment that he's noticed from our Peruvian surfers riding, um, you know, a little bigger boards, which was, uh, I mean, in, in the, it isn't until more recently that we see guys riding short boards out here. Beautiful drop shot right there, just looking right into the pit. And I think we'll see in the next heat, especially I think John John is kind of notorious for riding these little boards in crazy big pipe. Yeah, I mean, the, the paddling power you have to have to move those little boards across the water to track down these fast-moving big waves is uh, something else to be uh, discussed of, you know, the, when you talk about the uh, uniqueness and the sport of surfing, you know. Not only do you have to have great balance and, and standing skill, but you got to track these waves, and there's nothing pulling you around there's no you know gravity like when you're on the snow and the slopes it is all about paddling and tracking down these waves and another aspect of, of surfing that right you know it, it doesn't get as much attention because it's you know not the cool part of it right, but man right. it is such a heavily required skill well i mean it seems like every time I try to go back to 76, the <laughs> somebody gets barreled. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that is the end of our first heat of 2022 in the Hui Backdoor Shootout. The Peruvian Tubos team riders have uh, completed their first round. And, you know, to recap, they, they got really good rides. The best ride, I believe, in that last uh, few minutes of that sequence where we had that super deep frontside pipeline tube and uh, of course right most the importantly horn. the exit and <laughs> oh my goodness right off the bat wow already I mean we wondered like will these guys you know be as patient John John right at the horn already getting barreled
So with that end of the first heat and the start of the second heat, we'll say uh, aloha for now. Right. To Isaiah Walker and uh, go get some breakfast. I, I'll finish the 76 story. We'll, we'll get back the to day. 76. We'll get we got plenty of time, bro. We got plenty, plenty time, time. because I've I've got some uh, right. questions and some cool things to right, right. discuss with you uh, a little later. So we'll 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 bide our time here and uh, we'll see you in a few. All right. In a in, in the next heat. Welcome back to the Backdoor Shootout. We're here at uh, Pipeline, and it's me and Ezra. Yeah. Uh, Rocky went out and took a break from this one, but right now we're watching some replays from the waves caught from all the Florence brothers. Here's Ivan. 
goofy foot. Came out of a small one. Nice performance by the Peruvians earlier. Here's John John on a nice replay. These guys get busy, the Florence brothers. Family legacy down here on the North Shore. We all watch them grow up, huh, Isaiah? Right, for sure. It's cool to see that already, just at the start of the heat, they've already ridden, each of them has ridden at least yes. a couple waves. I wanted to reflect when these boys, when uh, you wake up at this beach and it's not surfable, you see these guys paddle out right over there by gums and uh, they make something that doesn't look humanly possible absolutely fun and getting spit out of these tubes over here on the inside. The Florence brothers, yeah, very exciting sure. heat for sure. Yeah, so we have um, John John, Nathan, and Ivan. And then Eli Olson is, as we mentioned earlier, the Hanai brother who's grown, grown up with, uh, they've grown up with yes. each other on the North Shore. In fact, a lot of these guys grew up here together, surfing pipeline. It's like their playground. But we're excited to see in this heat um, the four of them. And I'm, I'm looking forward to some backdoor waves. I yes. think these guys are going to be. This is the heat. Isaiah, I also wanted to uh, ask, is Alex Florence in this heat? I didn't get to see. Well, Alex, I think, is the mom. And uh, she's listed on here, but I'm not too sure. Sh I don't see her in the lineup, but maybe she's, uh, you know, the, the support on the beach. You got it. You got it. Yep. She's been around the world with these boys. She really knows how to raise them. We got some sets approaching. This isn't going to be a dull heat. We started off a little slow. We have 55 minutes. Awesome of Dahui shootout to add another five. Another five right. is uh, big for your uh, paddling back out to your heat. And here we go. Yeah, I see uh, there's get these second reef roll-ins that have been coming through all day today. And if you watch, they're going to have to either dip it or just paddle by it. You, know, you do have to be selective out here at Pipeline, so even the best, like the Florence brothers, are making sure to pick the right ones. And they must be very calm because it is a team event. They're competing on a leaderboard, not against each other. So that also alleviates some room and some stress in a heat. Right, for sure, for sure. Yeah, so we have 55-minute heats, and we got this pumping northwest swell that's we've been watching uh like we mentioned earlier that yesterday we had a lot more north in the swell mm -hmm. and it was wasn't the right direction and conditions but we're happy this morning to wake up and to see some waves from a better direction for pipeline yes. pipeline traditionally likes more west in a swell yes it does it allows it to stay open and not uh to shut down and so we're fortunate to have that more westerly angle in it today yeah, I um, watching you in rock earlier in the Peruvian heat, just watching some of the ones that come from deep, and I was actually getting excited. It looked like something was coming in, and it just passed by the reef completely. So it's also tricky conditions. It can get really inconsistent, but you have some really consistent surfers in the lineup right now with right. Ivan, John, John, Eli, right, and Nathan. For sure. Some brackish. Pipeline. A little bit murky, small kind of murky. At least, it's not, at least murky. it's not brown, though. It's not brown. Yeah. i seen a massive Chun's left and Lonnie's right, and over there has got some Willy Wonka chocolate for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. And who, outside off the wall. Some big lines coming through. Big lines. These boys uh, make it look so natural. For just sure. paddling around out there, football fields, 100 yards here, 100 yards there, getting yeah. in position. Very interesting. So for those of you just joining us, we'll introduce um, this. There's a team format in the Hui Backdoor Shootout, and that's what we're, we're running today is these uh, team formats. So we have the Florence team right now in the water earlier. We had the Peruvian team. We also have the Hui Japan team. We've got a Volcom team, a Snap 4 team. A Quicksilver team, WSL Wahine, WSL Wahine team, and the Hui Wax team. So a total of eight different teams that we're going to be running today. Each of them 55-minute heats. Uh, we started at 8:45, so yep. that's going to be a full day just running these uh, these these teams today. Very exciting. Thanks to all our sponsors: Sinaloa, Aloha Salads. 
Body Armor, Kona Brewing Hawaii, Monster Energy. Thank you, Keala Iwohi. Defend Hawaii in collaboration with the Hui this year, Chris and the crew. Oahu Golf Apparel, you look really sharp today. Yeah. Isaiah. You nice too. hat. <laughs> yeah. Himiko Organic, Kenui Kitchen, Kono's Hawaii, and Pupakea Grill. Everybody knows Pupakea Grill out here. Right. You've, you've uh, ventured yep. there. Had many uh, good fish sandwiches over there. Salads, delicious stuff. Also, Two Thumbs Tattoo Hawaii. So thank you to all of our sponsors. Thank you very much. Earlier, Rocky and I were talking a little bit about some historical stuff. I love that about you. Yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. So we hopefully we can, uh, during the, the lulls and the breaks here, we can be able to revisit some of those uh, historical uh, lessons. And um, so we were talking about 1976. So I start off with that because Uncle Brian Amona walked by and true yes, to Shaka. A very original yeah. brother here. And so we're talking about 1976, the formation of the surf club called the Hui o Heenalu. And, of course, Hui means group and Heenalu, the term for surfing in, in Hawaiian. And I was talking about how 1976 was an uh, important year in Hawaii because it was a pretty tumultuous time, uh, often referred to as the Hawaiian Renaissance. And we had uh, all kind of things going on. I mentioned the Hokulea Voyaging Canoe set sail, its first sail to Tahiti in 1976. It was a successful voyage. Uncle Buffalo Keolana yes. was on that. Boogie Kalama, my good friend, oh. Ikaika Kalama's dad. Uncle um, Boogie. Uncle Boogie and, and quite a few others, a lot of others on that voyage. And um, it was a 78 voyage years later that, that Eddie Aikau went on that uh, hit some, some troubled waters and ended up uh, swamping and and we know of course the story of Eddie trying to save the crew by paddling off to a, a nearby island but it was so far away that they yes. you know never found him so that was Hokulea's story but also something very important 1976 is there's an island in Hawaii called Kaho'olawe it's one of our smaller islands and um, the military was using it as a target practice place where they've been you know bombing it for years and there was a crew uh, called the Protect Koholawe Ohana. Uh, Emmett Aluli and many others, um, uh, Kimo and, and so many others that were involved with going and actually protesting by going out on the island and camping on the island to try and stop the military from bombing it. So a lot of kind of energy in that 1976, with the protest of Koholawe, um, the, the resurgence of, of Hawaiian as a language, this kind of uh, it was it was a real tumultuous time period so the hui is is really that time is really centered in that same kind of cultural context and so with that there's a lot of energy of of, of a lot of feeling of of protection of, of wanting yes. to uh, preserve what may be you know getting lost and and, and i think surfing I important that because surfing is a is a tradition in, in hawaii that goes back you know hundreds of hundreds of years that it's also one of these cultural art forms that Hawaiians saw worth preserving yes uh, which contributed to I, th I think kind of that that time period that energy and so it's important to look at it in that historical context of what was going on in the 70s why is it that um, the Hui was formed yes um, and I did feel that growing up when I came over here early 80s with some of the Hui uncles, and I still felt, you know, that it was still there, that hierarchy, the culture, um, right. the brotherhood. And something interesting about He'enalu or surfing is one of, you know, f because of it takes place in the ocean, right? The ocean is a place where, unlike the land, it's difficult to sort of possess, right? To, yes. You know, you can't put a fence around it. You can't no, you call can't. it private property. You can't buy it and claim that it's yours. No. You know, you, it's it's a it's a space that um, in Hawaiian it's uh, it's like a pu'uhonua. A pu'uhonua is a concept that means like a kind of a sanctuary, a kind of cultural space that exists offshore, which is cool because I in like Hawaiian that. the concept of of aina is not just about like dirt and rock and land. Mm -hmm. Aina stretches out into the ocean. Into the ocean. And so it's a it's a space that's part of the of, of Hawaii, but a kind of a different space, right? 
And right. so the ocean then is, and surfing uh, being a cultural art form in the ocean becomes a place that remains in many ways a Hawaiian space. Yes. And so a place to preserve. Um, and so it's, it's kind of cool still today at these events we can think about this because we have a lot of Hawaiian surfers out here in this event that are um, celebrating this kind of cultural richness of a tradition of called He'enalu that's been around for so many hundreds of years. Yes, thank you for all your mana'o. I'm like excited watching Pipeline, watching right. Florence, Team Florence with Rocky Cannon and Isaiah Walker and getting educated right. all about our culture. I mean, this is a awesome vibes down here at the Hui Backdoor Shootout. Right. And uh, while you were um, teaching us that lesson, there has been a slight lull. The guys have there just been paddling been. around, getting in position at Brackish Pipeline, forever changing. And yeah. Yeah, we saw, I mean, right at the horn, we saw John John pull into a couple of barrels. Right at the horn. Right at the horn. <laughs> Same wave, two barrels. And yeah, then I mean, it's fortunate that we have 55 minute heats because sometimes when those wash through sets come in, you know, it really breaks up the lineup and yeah. gives them a chance to reset. Five minutes is huge. A lot can happen in five minutes. Uh, looking out to the horizon, we see some lumps approaching. Yeah, um, the Florence family team, I wonder what their game plan was. Just go out there and surf like they do every day together. Right. There we go. It's seeing uh, some waves coming through. I was saying earlier to Rocky, if anyone, you know, can traverse these challenging conditions, that uh, it's this team here, oh, the big Florence time. family. Yes. These guys were born with that reflex that tells them they can just hang over the ledge with no uh, anxiety or remorse. Right. And Rocky's no stranger to Pipeline. Growing up I with Rocky this Cannon, guy. this guy has been knighted by Pipe many of times. That's why it was always good catching up with you guys this morning. Uh, he stays and humble in that regard. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, and quiet. what's the Hawaiian word for humble? I, uh, ha'a, ha'a. Ha'a, ha'a. That's yeah. right. So I remember you uh, educating us about some Pipe surfers in 2019, last you guys run, and about your friend Kaleo. Um, sorry, I forget his last name, but he was also a big Hawaiian legacy out here at Pipeline. Right, right. Um, yeah, Keo Ka'io, I think maybe yes. you're referring to. So Keo yes. Ka'io, uh, one of the pioneers of surfing big pipeline back in the day when Greg Knoll guys you know, got a lot of the attention. But there were some Hawaiians out here like Keo who were surfing even third reef pipeline. Yes. Yeah. I know you can never forget those guys. That's such rich culture. I mean, you know, our surf industry is, is so big now and someone right. left the floodgate open. But, you know, I just that's why it's so good to learn from professors like you. I mean, you know, take a look back. We got to know where we came from, the right. culture, the hierarchy, the players that came before us and paved these ways and made things what they are today. Right, right. Yeah. So... ocean is seems to be kind of settling in this heat and i'm hoping to see some back there door, door yes barrels here. yes um i did hear our awesome uh beach announcer kaino mcgee he called out he mind surfed a backdoor wave earlier and uh that's the thing though once you get spit out at the back door it look kind of looks like it's a lot of work getting back out yeah but these Florence brothers, they are the ones to do it. Also with their childhood buddy, Ellie Olsen. No joke. These guys know what they're doing. Yeah, Eli. Here comes a, a wave. Let's see if we got a paddle for this one. Yeah, you see John turning. Taking Just a taking an oh. overhang look. You know, it's easy to sit on the beach, right? Oh, and super easy. Call people in the waves. But when you're out there, you yeah. have to... Be but selective and know which one. You know, these go. guys got split second reflexes. Ellie Olsen up and riding. Textbook grab at pipe as he gets spit out. 
Wipes his face off, kicks back out. Yeah. Good ride for Eli. Ellie. Yeah, Eli, you can see the way his technique there, dragging the front knee. That's a real unique uh, way of stalling and slowing yourself down by yes. putting your whole body in the water. It's like John's taking a look at this one. Here we go, Mr. Florence. Right into the tube. Beautiful work, almost goes for the double. Gets nipped in the forehead, nothing, brushes it off, kicks out. Nice way for him, Isaiah. One more, Nate. Oh, oh my goodness, oh. Beautiful, <laughs> he went way too high on that one. But this guy, these guys just play oh, with these waves. That was exciting to have three waves back to back to back. Back to back. And it, I'm gonna say that John John's wave is probably um, Probably the higher score of those three. Uh, of course, Nate not making it out. Um, and Eli's was a good one as well. But John John's was a little deeper. Yep. He was able to get behind the curtain right off the bat. That's about three off the bat waves. Because once we switched over, um, right when the, when the horn blew, John John had a nice backside pipe wave. I right. mean, that was pretty textbook pipeline Here right there. Here comes the replay. You can see with Eli, yeah. I was mentioning earlier, dragging that front knee, getting into it. You see this wave spit him out and rise out to the shoulder to watch John John right behind him. Wow, throaty, throaty one. Really deep, pulls into the second Ooh. part a little bit. And uh, I love how he has that body uh, claim. Then they have... Yeah, he just Nate pulling into that one got a little too high, like you said, Ezra, and then yeah. caught a rail because of it. Straight talent, though. These guys are just, you know, always upping the ante. Like Eli's first wave, you could see, you know, some of those A-frame big pocket rides. You're going so fast, so, so showing their their technique to slow down is pretty amazing. An average Joe probably wouldn't even get that deep. Yeah, that was a sick one. Got another paddler here. Looks like Eli again. Standing up. Hits the bottom. Tries to slow down. Ends up shouldering off. But, I mean, just those drops alone are, I mean, take incredible amount of skill yeah. to be able to just. He didn't just drop straight down. He kind of went left a little bit and right. then chippered right back up. Well, these guys just know the rhythm of the wave. And, uh. Right. See that how he's trying to slow down to get into that barrel. Unfortunately, the wave doesn't. And we just got news that John John Florence got a 10 point ride for that one. 10 point ride, 10 and point that's ride. the first of the day, I the believe. First of yes. the day so far. Now, the scale is a little different at the Hui backdoor shootout. So, 12 points is actually the highest you can get, mm -hmm. but a 10 is still you know, uh, a great ride. I think what they do is they just reserve that extra couple of points for those rogue, amazing, above the 10 point mark score. The last uh, time you guys ran the event, oh, beautiful by John John Florence. This is the 10 point ride. And he's no stranger to getting into that second tube along like, you right. know, guys like Jamie O'Brien and other pipe specialists. Right. And it's amazing you, you watch uh, how Pipeline will do that. It'll start off as a 10-foot wave and end up as like a 3-foot wave. Yeah. And pipe cone. So John John Stoke. Look at, I mean, it's the really good to they're see. shaking hands and yeah. cheering each other on. Uh, they probably got word, could, can hear us, because the pipeline is not very far off the beach, so they can hear what's going on with the beach announcing that he got a 10-point ride. Exciting. Team Florence in the house. I knew these guys were going to get busy right after the horn. <laughs> yeah. And That's we have more. tons more time left. 55 minutes to be exact. Here comes a here comes a wave. Got Ivan up and riding. The goofer, goofy footer in the family. Kind of similar to his first one, huh, Isaiah? Right, right. Just getting under the curtain. Unfortunately, it didn't. Um, you know, it wasn't too deep, and the wave shouldered off pretty quickly. But 
He's no stranger to this spot too. As yes. we were talking earlier the, at the HIC Pipe Pro, he got a perfect 10 in that event. Oh, nice. 55 minutes, I believe, these guys are just warming up. You can see him stalling, standing Such up nice tall. Style. Again, that comfortability to just relax in the barrel as it's throwing around you. Yes, team events at Pipeline. These guys can, you know, a little bit freely more position themselves, you know. And yet they're no sitting priority. right next to each other, which yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah. I wonder if they all just know exactly what hole in the reef to Me sit next to. Me personally, I'd be sitting next to John John, too. Not <laughs> sitting on him, but just I know he knows. Yeah. But you also could be in danger sitting next to John John. That guy is a definitely cliffhanger, 12, 15 footers. He yeah. takes a safety look. And he will go on the split second. So we got waves approaching. And they're paddling a little deeper, looking more at maybe these rights. So we've got a bunch of different camera angles today. We've got the drone footage. We've got angles from sh straight ahead, from back door, from over at Ehukai Beach. We yeah. also have the water angles from the ski. So yeah. thank you to that. Salt and Air Studios. Yeah, right. always a good job. Mike Prickett and the gang. Love it. That drone looks next level. That thing's big. It just like landed. It carry, yeah. carry one of us away. I know. I wonder how many pounds that drone could carry. So this event uh, is also in memory of Duke Kahanamoku. Yes. Right? Which is super cool because... Um, I mean, that's, that's a generation prior. In fact, Duke had a club that they formed called the Hui Nalu Club. Okay. Uh, we were talking earlier about the Hui Ohe e Nalu, and, but not to get confused with... What year was that? That was in Waikiki. Yeah, that, that was in Waikiki. It you know, started in 1906, 1907. They were kind of a group of guys that formed around this hau tree mm -hmm. uh, on the beach there in Waikiki. Is the hau tree still there? There are mm. how trees there, yes, but, but not. That I don't know exact if it's the one. same ones or not. Maybe Raja. hopefully it was like related plants mm -hmm. from the previous. But but uh, yeah, that and the, and you still have some Beach Boys down there. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes. but how tree? I know the uh, you know the uh, Tammy and uh, all the uh, Moniz, yes, the Moniz family. They still run the concessions down there. Super cool. Awesome to, legacy family. To have that legacy for sure. Their sons. Are right. amazing pipe surfers as well. Right. And good job, by the way, on that Duke film. I really enjoyed that. Oh, I went to right Bishop on. Museum, got my dad out of the house, the yeah. baby, and uh, you guys did a really good job, all of you. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, and you're always coming with that awesome mana'o cool. and education. There's stuff that um, I learned about the Duke that I had no oh. idea, and here we go. Oh. oh, that was a heavy one. Someone was looking over the ledge on that one, Isaiah. Here we go. Maybe we'll have a taker on this one. Kaino has said, got chance, got chance. They're oh. taking a look. There's that picturesque barrel that uh, Pipeline is known for. Ooh. Here comes another wave. Bunch of waves stacked in the lineup here. Hopefully one of them is rideable for our Florence yes. team here. It seems to be very slabby, very punchy, and there is a lot of foam on the face when they do come in. The boys are repositioning them themselves. How big was his club, Dukes? Yeah, so there was a group of them that um, started off with just a handful, mm -hmm. and... You know, it was mostly that the Kahanamoku family alone had a, a clan in and of itself. In fact, their family was the uh, Paoa is Duke's uh, middle name. And mm -hmm. often his family called him Paoa. Uh, but that's the that's his mom's side of the family was known as the Paoa family. And they, okay. you know, lived in Waikiki in, uh, in a place called Kalia Waikiki, which is the area, um, Fort Derusi area. And so Duke had his crew that started the Hui Nalu Club 
And looks like maybe we might have a wave coming through, but no takers. That one swung pretty wide. The way these guys look at pipeline too, I mean, something that, oh, go, 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 go. No, <laughs> go, no, 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 they're no. looking for something totally different. Woo. Well, we do know that these conditions are pretty challenging mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the, the Florence is being selective, choosing the right waves. Yeah, so the Hui Nalu Club uh, was formed for a few reasons, actually. One of them was because in order for Duke to, to compete in the Olympics, the AAU required them to, to have a club that represented you. Ah. And at that time, for whatever reason, well, you know, there were some clubs that didn't allow Duke in them, right? And some of that yes, unfortunately I've had to do with mm -hmm. some racial stuff with segregation. Oh. So they formed their own. They started their own club called the Hui Nalu Club, and it was a swim club that evolved into also a surf club that also turned into a canoe club. Wow. So even today, the Hui Nalu Club is mostly known for um, Was that paddling. surf club one of the first of its kind? Because yeah, I, mean I know Greg question. Noll and everybody had their their clan coming over, right, surfing right. the big waves, but that was all happening right around that time. Well, a well, little bit before. Yeah, a lot before a lot actually. Before. So we have uh, Greg Knowles yeah. here in the you know late fifties and 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 sixties, uh, whereas Duke's club was you know a few decades earlier, from early nineteen hundreds, uh, went through the nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties. So. Uh, the Hui Nalu Club is precedes that quite a bit, and but they also were a surf club that did something similar that we, we saw in 1976, which is sort of maintaining that space in the surf for Kanaka Maoli or yep. Native Hawaiians. And so, interestingly, um, you know, the Hui is known used to be, in fact, called the black shorts, right? Yes. They were known for wearing black shorts with with a, a yellow and a red stripe mm -hmm. on the side. The Hui Nalu Club, uh, you know, years previous, had a they wore singlets. Yeah, right? it was different, right. very different times. Uh, huh? But they did have like a color too. So they mm -hmm. had a um, a black singlet that would either have a yellow or a red stripe around the waist. Oh, interesting. So these colors, red and yellow, important to the Lahui or to our our ali'i. Uh, so red and yellow were traditionally colors of ali'i. Ali is, in, in other words, for like a, a chief or a high-ranking individual in ancient Hawaiian society. And those colors stem from a very, you know, rare types of birds. So in old Hawaii, a chief was marked by their bling, right? So gotcha. the, the clothing that, that they the cape, had, and that whether feather. it was a ahu ula, which was a feather cape, or um, a mahi ole, which was these fancy helmets, or these hats that they would wear, and uh, they would have red and yellow feathers on them. So when you, when you look at the, the Hui Nalu Club and also the Hui Ohe Nalu, drawing from those same themes of color marking of red and yellow as going back to kind of these days of marking a chiefly status. Wow, interesting. Looks like. And those are the marks of the club too. Right. I, gr I was raised around that. And uh, first time coming up here to the North Shore, you know. The club remains the same. Right. A lot has changed with the place, but the club <laughs> remains the same. It's kind of cool to have that continuity. I mean, as a historian, I love continuity. It's um, really history is about connecting us in the present to the past, right? And so you have some of these these markers that we in, that we have, such as you know these colors of red mm -hmm. and yellow, or even the um, the logo of the Hui Ohe Nalu is a, a petroglyph, right? That yes, that also links. Um, to the past where in old Hawaii, the Hawaiians would draw these petroglyphs into rocks and they would tell stories. And one of those petroglyphs, or at least one of them, several of them actually are stories of surfing in ancient times. And so kind of cool that the Hui still uh, kind of draws from that history of, of the petroglyph to identify with um, that history and a connection to it. Wow, very in the present. So actually, you know, a lot of thought, I think, was put into those symbols and kind of cool that uh, they were able to, you know, teach a lesson for us today. To They're kind of learning tools, right? Yeah, yeah. Mark these things as 
remembering the past. I know, looking at the symbol, it's, there's so much authenticity to it and meeting to me and fellow surfers. Right. As you see on the screen, actually, there it is. That yep. is different from, so, you know, that is the, the, the club. Yeah. yeah. So the club logo has the more, like, traditional, like, actual drawing from the from the rocks the the petroglyph yep and uh the whereas the clothing line has sort of adapted a little to to yep. make it tweaked it a little different but that's how you know the difference between the logo of the the club and the the clothing the difference of the surf clothing right and yeah go check them out at dahui.com they have killer apparel killer t-shirts the shirts are very every year the shirts are nice this year is amazing so make sure you guys go check out your Hui hats and your Hui contest shirts. They're all online. We have a Hui wax uh, team. So I guess there's oh, yes. also and another brand. Is the, the Hui wax. wax uh, they also have John John Florence. It's pretty amazing. Um, the new formula and stuff. You guys go check it out. The Hui Wax team is going to consist of Makua Rothman, Billy Kemper, Kai Lenny, Jamie O'Brien coming up later today and here we go a late one john john oh. falls from the sky pulls into unfortunately Ooh. doesn't come out you can see how that end pinched uh, if anyone could have come out of that would have very been very rare john. for for yes but uh what a great sick. fall from the sky he even did something with his hand to um i mean that was technique as he free fell from it John John Florence yeah, putting his family on the board today. Got a perfect 10. We'll see the replay here in a second, hopefully. But I love how he makes it look so easy, like paddling into the wave as it's already breaking and then uses that technique to drag. Here we go. See how he falls. He's literally falling, then finds his line at the bottom of the wave. And unfortunately, the wave itself didn't cooperate. His wall grabbing hand was free falling with him, and then he engaged it. Wow, nice ride for John John. Yeah, it's the, not a make. Ev the evolution of that, of style, of, of you know, it starts off as called the pig dog, mm -hmm. right? And we see that with, um, you know, Dane Kealoha. We also saw that with Michael Ho. Yes. And, and then Johnny Boy Gomes. Oh, here we have a split peak. We're going to follow Wow, John there's John your back door, door, Isaiah. <laughs> and he comes out. <laughs> oh, my god! Wow, goodness. double, double. That is very exciting. Well, the we beast just erupted. And yeah. I, I know we couldn't see it on the, on the footage on the live cam, but they split the peak, and they both came out of deep barrels. That was Ivan on the left, I believe. And, wow. That's what you call a family wave. Yes. For first 10 and uh, first backdoor wave. You know, these guys are always uh, raising the bar, always reaching some levels. We'll try and get this. We'll show you here soon what, what was going on at, at Pipeline on the left while those two bros split the peak. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that was Nathan. Oh, beautiful. So cool to have that family oh, moment yes. where you're both getting barreled on the yeah. same wave, split the peak, Pipeline. Backdoor shootout. Yeah. Gotta love it. Straight talent. Nathan is quite the character as well. And getting barreled all beginning of winter. We have more waves now approaching. So we got some scores dropping. Looks like Nate got an eight, which rhymes. And then John John got a six. 6.0 6 for that backdoor wave. John John. Didn't really need it, but that was a beautiful wave anyways. It's not going to mess with his 10. So, yeah, awesome. That I, my, I mean, my guess is the reason why they went higher with Nate's score is the, the way the shape of the wave was, it's, it seemed to be a growing a on pit. the left, and yes. on the right it was kind of shrinking. So as, we're, as Rocky mentioned earlier, that oftentimes it's the, the wave itself that provides the score for you. And they yeah. both, I mean, rode the barrel skillfully, and they both came out with the spit. Uh, but I think because that left was was bigger and uh, throatier, that uh, Nate ended up getting the 
Two more points than John. My goodness, here is a And it's all for the up. team. Here we go. Nate again, up and riding. Very deep. Come out. Ooh. Almost. A similar clamper to John's one previous. Yeah. Oh, Nathan. Beautiful entry. These guys are getting work done. Look at all the brothers looking over the ledge. Where's Nate? Did he come out? Let's go. I, get, I just would uh, love to hear them mic'd up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, right. I mean, they're a team, but everybody also wants to win. Oh, wow, that That's spit really on that on. one. Here we go, a replay of that wave that they split earlier. Right. Queuing up the right replay. Oh, my God. There's that backdoor wave that John John got a six point ride on. But yeah, unfortunately, Nate wasn't able to come out of that one. But boy, the entry was beautiful. Wave was steep. Here comes another live action here. John John, John going back John. door, stalling, standing tall, deep in the barrel, comes out. Oh, Isaiah, he just said, you want to give me a six for that small <laughs> one? Well, let me get a girthy one. It looked like he jumped onto a different wave, too. Oh, yeah, right over the back. That Riding was insane. past Ains. Here's the replay. Standing tall, deep in the barrel, comes out after it's done. Man, you know where he kicked out, he just kind of got the best of it. He's going right. to go right back out to his brothers. There's not too much going on over there because that is some work on a day like today. We're waiting on some scores here. I was watching some surfers come in this morning. Like uh, He's coming up in the Volcom team later. Um, it was... Um, Makana Pang, he was riding a 5'11", telling Mr. Riddler, oh, I just rode my 5'11", oh but, my uh, you know, I think I'm going to take out my 6'1". I mean, these guys, you know, everybody he's has a their... Pretty sh he's a pretty, he's, uh, what do we say? I don't want to say he's short, but he's a... He's, he's a smaller he's pretty, guy, yeah, but... small in stature, yeah. but, but big absolutely in charging. Hard for sure. Dropping some scores here for John John's last ride. Yep, John getting uh, Uncle Kainoa McGee excited up there. Actually, all of us are excited for this heat. We got some serious teams coming up. Dahui, Japan, Volcom, Quicksilver. We got a Snap 4 team. Dahui, Wax. And Nate Florence on this one. Just up and out. Ooh, that was a lot of, um, that was like um, a fin ad, all the photographers <laughs> dipping down. What I love, too, about this event is John John just got a ride back up, but... Uh, Hawaiian Water Patrol, and uh, kind of cool. In some events, you know, they have strict guidelines about, you know, when you're allowed to use the water patrol. Yes, and, so and forth, you have to be in a certain position or in trouble. But right. yeah, he got a ride right back out. In that case, but very convenient to get back out there. That was awesome. And we, I mean, in the middle of the heat, we had kind of some downtime where they were waiting mm -hmm. for the right waves but it seems like in the last five minutes we've had a flurry of some really good waves yeah that was but we got hit with some amazing education and culture by you Isaiah I love that stuff uh -huh. and um, man this is exciting day sure. backdoor shootouts up again when you Rocky and Kaipo were added in 2019 you guys had some large surf as well huh we did yeah and you guys had jet ski assists Right. I believe. And yeah, they'll implement that in a certain time. Sure. Here comes some waves. Let's see if um, anyone's going to paddle for this one. Because, you know, you get more surfing with jet ski assist, but whew, the Florence brothers is just like, they seem to just beast mode past 100 yards of whitewater, make go. it look like it's what? easy out there. Eli up and riding on a oh bomb. Goodness. Oh, Grabs early, <laughs> comes out with the spit. That's what I'm talking gonna about. It's going to be a good score for Eli. Stoked. Team Florence making their mark. Other teams are watching on the beach going, okay, 
That's this guy's, in, uh, guy's scoring capability is right. off the charts. I loved how he st he stayed low on that wave, which he grabbed again, early at a slant. Yeah, right, and that takes some confidence and wave mm -hmm. knowledge to be able to do that to pull in like just under the lip, but it helped him to be able to get that extra pump to ride out of the barrel. Exactly, he was pretty deep. And we got uh, Ivan here, Isaiah. My goodness, look, right off the bat, stalling, trying to get in that barrel. Love the water angle. Just a short in and out. It's going to kick out by our camera water guys. And I watch this guy out. a lot. I'm a goofy footer. I'm a fan. This guy, he's just waiting for that wave that he wants. Ivan All is right. no stranger to getting absolutely hidden at Pipeline. Coming out, getting another one, and then busting a huge air at the end, which we have not seen any acrobatics yet. <laughs> not yet. Uh, that'd be interesting to be the, the goofy footer in the family, you know? Oh, yeah, I'm big a goofy time. footer myself. Oh, you and, are. Nice yeah, to know. And, uh, All three of us are right goofy on. footers. But, to, you know, to be, to have the other brothers being regular foot, mm -hmm. I wonder what the pros and cons of that are. Probably you're more likely to get more lefts in the crew and splitting the peak. Maybe yeah. they're more willing to give you the left as the as they're out here at Pipeline. Well, Ivan was by himself on the Ehukai left as a little kid. His brothers were surfing the right. <laughs> but yeah, these guys also uh, skate some heavy concrete as well. Right. Very talented at that. Uh, so Eli Olsen just got a trainer. I was telling yeah, that one opened up my eyes, right. so that's going to come in as a good score. I'm waiting to hear maybe from Kainoa McGee, see what he got awarded. It's telling Rocky earlier, I'm looking forward to some wave of the winter type waves out here today. I think we'll get some memorable, memorable barrels today at this event. That's for sure in the last one we saw that. Here we go, replay of. Ivan trying to stall in that barrel. And Wasn't it isn't easy to slow down, right. you know? It's every wave is so different. Ooh. Some waves coming. Wow, Isaiah. 9.5 of Ivan Florence's that was last e uh, wave. No, that was Eli. I think Eli's, said okay. Eli, a nine Good five. job, Eli. Well deserved too. Well deserved. With this heat, you know, there's not much that comes in that's, uh, you know, unridden. If it's something you can take, they're going to take it, and they're not going to be out of position. Right. So 9.5, Eli Olson, and then John John got a 10 point ride in this Ten. heat. Those are their two highest scores so some far. Eights, of the some eights, some sixes, looking good. Look at the horizon. Nate's frothing at, at the bit to come out of one of those clampers. Looking out at the horizon, there's some sets coming. The boys we are might in even the right spot. We'll see if this works out. That out there is what we call the second reef. And the waves are, are bigger. They'll break out there before coming in on to this first reef. Peruvian Tubos had a couple second reefers, right? Earlier when we started. Right. Let's see it coming from the westerly angle, which is preferable at Pipeline. Yeah, that was just a big foam ball whitewater just rolled left right through the lineup. So if you're just joining us, this is the Hui Backdoor Shootout 2022. Stoked and grateful to be back in in uh, in the event because we had a couple of years off along with most of our other surfing events. And so it's really blessed and fortunate to be able to have the event run again and in great surf. Yes, great Taboo. surf and with the Hui. Awesome, awesome cultural prestige event here in Hawaii. Right. Straight local. <laughs> <laughs> and with our, some of the world's best pipeline surfers, some of those right now in the water with the Florence 
Ohana. Yeah, on this list, we got some of the best of the best. You're going to see Team Volcom, Dahui Japan. Um, starting off the event this morning was the Peruvian Tubos team. Quicksilver and first ever WSL Wahine. Right. Ah, amazing. No, s yeah, super cool to have uh, women in this event, especially with these, you know, challenging conditions to, mm -hmm. you know, we... We see on there Carissa, uh, Malia Manuel, Moana Wong, formerly Jones. She was recently married. Yes, yes. Congratulations. And Coco Ho. So, I mean, that's quite a team lineup yeah. right there of our Hawaiian surfers. Yeah. And, you know, kind of yeah. cool, too, that women surfing has, has really, you know, been kind of advancing in the last few years. Uh, and I've mentioned yes. this before. I talk a bit about it um, in my book that I wrote called Waves of Resistance. Yes. That in, in tradition, uh, traditional times in, in old Hawaii, uh, women were very notorious for surfing. And, and um, so we're fortunate that we're able to continue that component of Big time. the history of he'enalu or surfing in old Hawaii. Women were very reputable in, in surfing. And there's many stories of, of women like uh, Laie Kavai, Kelea. Kelea was probably one of the, the most accomplished surfers in ancient Hawaii. Her full name was Kelea Nui Noho Ana Apiapi. Yes, and I heard you talk about her. Which is basically that her hair fluttered. It was constantly fluttering because she surfed so much. It was just kind of like she was always on the move. She was known for surfing on Maui, mm -hmm. but eventually moved over to Oahu. And while she was here... Uh, she ended up surfing in Waikiki. She had a lot of twist, twists and turns to her life with um, different love stories and so gotcha. forth. But the end of the story, she ends up in Waikiki with the chief Kalamakua. And they become kind of the, the chiefs or the ali'i of that area. She was famous for uh, being one of the best surfers at Kalehua Vehe. Uh, the nice. outer breaks in Waikiki and was known for surfing big waves and was very skilled at it so super cool to be continuing that tradition of, that of wahine surfing and surfers and to have them have women in this event at oh, big time. maxing pipeline is says a lot of um, how far we've come and how the women are, yes. are really taking up the challenge i've been seeing a lot of upcoming wahine working hard out here also we i seen keala kenley this morning coming to the houses bright and early that's another Wahine, that uh, you've seen her at Jaws that year and Charging. other stuff locally here. Wow, this is a set that just came in and washed out. Went all the way through Gums. You see Hawaii Water Patrol. That's the second time they had to outrun a left. Wow. Hawaiian Water Patrol. Always amazing having these guys. World's best watermen right here. You got some collaboration of the west side as well. I see Keone Keolana on the ski. Just love all the waterman vibes. Woo, that was a bomber, Isaiah, of a plane. Just have this Coming to check out the action. They must have heard plane. the Florence team is in the water, and they're circling. Just buzzed the tower here, yeah. Top Gun style. Huh? I extra wonder, large drone. Yeah. How's that drone just circling the third reef? Yeah. I knew Uncle Eddie had something in store. <laughs> it's circling again. I don't know if the camera can get this, but we have this massive military plane. Yeah, there it is. Circling. Was pipeline. that a bird or a drone it's that went back by? Again. Yeah, here it goes. Everybody's calling it the yeah. drone. That yeah, for massive. those of that, uh, you are watching, that's um, our other drone. <laughs> Just joking. That it's thing is massive. A couple hundred feet uh -huh. above us. The boys all excited outside. We're counting down this heat. Three, two, one. Isaiah, we got There's a whale horn. out the back, too. I just seen the blowhole. That Good job, Team Florence. Two. 
the recap we had. Nate Florence stalling for that barrel. Good job, Ivan on the inside. And the Florence uh, brothers having a show out there. John John under the hood. Eli with a 9.5. Yes. John, John John with a 10. With a 10. Here we have the split peak with the brothers. Nathan and John splitting the peak. An eight point ride. Here's John John. Backdoor showed us several different versions Ooh. of backdoor yes, today. Yes, he did. And there's the 9.5 for, for Eli. Good job, Definitely Eli. The waves were lit up. And we'll be back with the Hui Backdoor Shootout. Aloha. Aloha. Oh, good job, guys. Welcome back to Pipeline and Backdoor. This uh, first day of the 2022 Dahui Backdoor Shootout. Rocky Cannon with Ezra Rodriguez. We've got Isaiah Walker with us as well. Will it be the the three Musketeers bringing you the action this yes. year for the Hui Backdoor Shootout? And pretty exciting last heat with the Florence Ohana and their Hanai Brada. Eli yes. Olsen yes. bringing us. With the 9.5 at the yeah. tail end. Very good stuff. Yeah. Great heat. Now we're on to an even more exciting heat, or I don't want to say even more exciting, but just as exciting. Oh, yes. It'll be Team Volcom with uh, Kaimana Henry and uh, Balaram Stack, Mikey O'Shaughnessy, Jack Robinson, Makana Pang, Kainehe Hunt. That's the lineup of team members, but obviously only four of those surfers will be in the water at a time. Yep. And, um, man, Ezra, exciting, yeah? It's exciting. <laughs> we're watching Team Volcom, and we're in your yard. We're at the Volcom Bee House, and we are at the Dohui Backdoor Shootout. And there was a 10 and a 9.5, and 
things are starting to elevate, materialize out at Brackish Pipeline? I mean, look at those gaping barrels that you're seeing on screen right now. And Slabs. What I like about this year is they've brought the broadcasting down to ground level, if you will. Ooh, so like you it. viewers at home or in your office sneaking a peek on the other screens, you feel like that you're right, right here because you yes. can hear Kainoa McGee giving his uh, expert beach analysis and live commentary, and his excitement is like no other. That's what makes this contest really special, in my opinion, is his presence and oh, his enthusiasm yeah. is infectious. Yes. And then we've, we're down here at, you know, nor in prior years we were up second or third level at the other Volcom house. It's beautiful as well. Which is great, a view, awesome view. But you're a little disconnected. Gotcha. Right here, ground level, we've got, you know, Uncle Dennis Pang hanging out right oh, there yeah. watching Legend Makana. Himself. We had uh, Moani. Dave Riddle, the Riddler, yeah. hanging out here. we got Moana Wong and Tehotu right there and people just coming in and around. So you really do feel like you're immersed and in the event. And that's what we want to bring to you guys watching on Surfline.com yeah. is to have you be here with us yep. as much as possible. Right here on the balcony. <laughs> well, you know, when we're young fellas, we're all in this yard with butterflies, nerves. Oh, yeah. Aspirations. Yeah. Wondering, you know, when am I going to get my chance? If and look I'm at these brothers chance. over here. Hawaiian Water That's Patrol. Hawaiian Water I Patrol. love you seeing the them. the second generation. Yeah, the second generation. Ha'ahel, and you got Westside's right. Kioni I guess the, 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 the most recent generation, because there's been some generations yes. of Hawaiian Water Patrol. And, and awesome that's your partner those in guys. crime, Kavika Foster. Yeah, that's his my son. mentor. Yep, and I watched Ha'a grow up into the fine young man that he is today. He's a young man. I got stuck in the heat with him at uh, Mel's uh, Longboard Water oh, Challenge. Oh, okay. Yeah, that and was, it was uh, big. And, you know, I had, big to score, I had to score Po'omai and Ha'a, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> man. I just scored two North Shore hammers, and it's big. It's and right it's up big. the alley. Yeah. <laughs> but I always love having them in the water. Um, well, there's Balaram Stack getting yes, a ride back exciting. out, which is another uh, really cool I heard you the, the other year. He loves his nickname. Is his nickname Ballstack? Ballstack. That guy charges, man. Yeah. I was Wait, expecting to see a couple little maybe tail end, you know, being a fan of Pipeline, watching so many generations getting spit out at Pipeline and then doing something on the end. I've always been a fan of that. It's not for everybody, but possible Team Volcom. They've but got some uh, high-flying acrobatic surfers. Which isn't needed, but it always elevates. It just the adds to the, the aesthetic effect, for yes, sure. Sir. I'd like to say thank you to our sponsors. The Keiki Bungalows right down the road here been hosting folks for decades from around the world on this North Shore. The Hui Wax, some of the best wax you're going to come across. Love that wax. All sticky, all the time. And Odom Corporation. And uh, also Sinaloa, tortillas, Aloha salads, Chris Lufrano and the gang, body armor. I'm enjoying some body armor right here. This uh, that stuff is superior real good. hydration. It is. <clears throat> it's like uh, you get an oil change once you drink one of those, and you just uh, right feel here. lubed up, ready to go. This is strawberry good stuff. banana. Very good stuff. Mahalo to Kona Brewing Hawaii. Some more good Kona stuff. Brewing. Monster Energy. Keala Iwohi. Monster. Great, great product there. Defend Hawaii with Chris and the crew. Our beautiful, comfortable shirts that we're wearing. Oahu Golf Apparel. Tim Hazelgrove, thank you. Very Hibiko Organic. Kenui Kitchen. Kono's Hawaii. Pupukea Grill. And Two Thumbs Tattoo. Better bowl in Mililani. You got any tattoos, Rock? Uh, I have two tattoos. Okay. Yeah, just um, one of them from... Uh, the uncle of Hidiata uh, and Remana. Oh, okay. Their uncle came over here a long time ago, way back when, for Hidiata and Kahea's wedding when I was a teenager. And we sat on the beach at VLAN while he tattooed my leg with oh, the yes. traditional Tahitian design. And my middle name on my back, Kahale nice. Paole. How about you, bro? Our Tahitian brothers, no. No, you are I mean, tat you know, free. 
Huh? Tap that's, free? That's pretty I've uh, impressive. I've always interested, or, or but you know, guys know my dad, a Hawaiian Santa Claus, Papa Sam. <laughs> yeah, uh, Papa Sam. And, uh, when we were young, growing up in the amateur days, he said, I see you come back from a trip with a tattoo. I'm taking it out with a chainsaw. <laughs> so I just, you know. I always fancied it, you know, like Billy right. Kemper and some of the North Shore boys. They got some of the nicest tattoos. Right. Yeah, and I love no, that. That that's a that's a little surf trivia for you guys. Is how much tattoos does Brother Ezra have? <laughs> Zero. Zero. But I, but, I, you know, might want to put my kids' names on. And, and now you know that you've you're at the certain past a certain point it's like ah, almost like no need already yeah i would, just turned 43 maybe perhaps yeah hoo -hoo. new things here's a paddle and this looks like it Who could be jack guy? robinson Ooh, and that is jay jack. rob just uh amazing talent i love Ooh. watching him surf since a teenager he's been blowing our minds at big sunset big haleiwa had some really great results here at Pipe. Mm -hmm. And, man, I mean, so glad to see him elevate his game Big to time. the next level. I remember when he first came on scene, there was a lot of high expectations for him, and he fulfilled that as one yeah. of the best barrel riders in the <laughs> world. And he really, really this, works hard this on This wave not producing too much, you know, for a guy like Jack, he really wants that super long wall but yeah i think a lot of these guys when they first start their heat they know they got 55 minutes mm -hmm. which is like the longest heat they'll ever surf you know in any competition mm -hmm. almost besides i think the eddie at waimea has one hour long heats but yes you know the events these guys are used to surfing in the max is would be like a final of maybe 35 minutes or yeah. something so 55 minutes yeah Gives does give you a lot of time to be selective but in the beginning i think they're also just trying to get their feet wet feel out yeah. the day's conditions because you know this place changes you know minute by minute it seems like and to really kind of get in tune with what the the particular day is offering you need to get those first few oh, under yeah. your belt feel your board the speed yep i mean so many surfers and you know you you being a surfer i'm um, Everybody has so many pet peeves in their surfing. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? They're rituals, right? I mean, we have some of our classic peers that, I mean, they're just ridiculous when they get ready to surf. But that's, that's surfing, you know what I mean? That's why we're sitting here. Surfing is an amazing sport, culture, and lifestyle for a lot of us. Yeah, um, and we've got folks that are tuning in from all over the place. Awesome. Uh, you know, Right here in the United States, uh, some folks in Europe, some folks in South America. I'm sure they're cheering, cheering on their Peruvian brothers uh, yes, as they, they were winning in the first round. They got some good barrels. And look at that one just unload on unload. camera right there, like exploding your screen. And rock, it looks to be changing again. It's like a little bit more on the inside and slabby and it's dangerous super looking super right slabby now. and ledgy. And I think that's some of the most dangerous pipeline is when it starts to move in on that mm -hmm. first reef, even though the size of the wave is big enough to break at second or third reef. It doesn't really feather until it gets right to the first reef where it, I mean... You gotta have uh, just an amazing amount of courage to take off on these waves. Well, you pipe specialists were born with that uh, <laughs> thing that you know some of us just like you guys can look and go. It, it, <laughs> you know, I don't know if I, it. Growing up here, it definitely took a lot to paddle out on some of the days and and look over the ledge and actually pull the trigger and realize that. They are makeable. You watch it from the side. I remember as mm -hmm. a kid just looking in from the channel and, you know, not on a day big like this, but being 11 or 12 years old, looking at it from the side, it didn't look possible. It looked impossible. You'd see guys riding it, but the way that they were riding it was just, it made it look wow. like, I don't know if I can do that. And then you get a little more comfortable. You mm -hmm. watch a lot from the side. You sneak in. You get a few. You get something under your belt. You get, you know, like we talked about, get a little more comfortable. 
and then you find yourself in position on one of those ones that you're like, oh, this is one of those impossible exactly. ones. And somehow your rail finds the, the right, you know, angle, and you put yourself in the right position, and then it happens. It happens. And it's like you get pretty, you know, in disbelief that you just did that. Then the addiction. Sets. And then that's the addiction right there. It is like, wow, I can't believe I just did that, but I want to do it over and over, and over again. again. With adjustments to make it perfect every right. time. And, right, and you're, you know, trying to get deeper, trying to get, you know, this or that. So it was a, it was a, a very much a learning curve growing into process for myself in particular. But, you know. Uh, guys like the the Florence brothers that we watched in the last heat, you know, growing up, mm -hmm. growing up in the lineup, basically, yep. you know, just uh, have become so comfortable. It's it's really nice to watch. Yeah, when it's not fun out here and nobody's surfing on the North Shore, those brothers actually find a uh, home right over there, yeah. right out by Gums, and yeah. you know, when you surf for so many years, you start looking at things a little differently. You know, not just all the familiar spots, but there's so much that the ocean has to offer on different things. Yeah, the nooks and crannies and little creases and bumps they that see these those. guys find. They make it look magical. Well, uh, be pretty, pretty crazy to see that how they can do that, and then and then any other surfer and the consequences that you would face. Oh, Here's Kaimana, Mana. a previous champion here. Yes, 2016, I believe. Yeah. Um, also, Robo was, you know, he just went on two waves earlier, and he's just uh, getting a couple pocket rides, like you said. He's just trying to, you know, these guys just go and try, try to find their their seam inside this. Oh, Mana. No stranger to this place. Yeah, one of the craziest shootouts i remember with him surfing and it was this he was raising his hand in this back door barrel like fully outstretched and one of those iconic back door waves back door moments where you saw the confidence of a surfer on you know a wave that was just immaculate but also you know He's not a small guy. He's not. He's big. And he looked uh, on the small side <laughs> gotcha. because of how intense the wave was. And you know, in our. But how comfortable yeah. he was was also yeah. like a statement. In our industry, he's one of the powerhouses up and riding. That's Mr. Stack, I that believe. That is Ball Stack. Not, not the, you know long big wall deep barrel that he's looking for but yeah. those are just so fun to catch and ride and just to be on a wave that big oh, yeah, over a, a a surface that is that shallow mm -hmm. you know like i tell tell a lot of folks you know that pipeline you got these waves breaking over this amount of water the math is just does not work out for no, your it doesn't for your head <laughs> for your yeah. body if you wipe out but to be that close to something so intense is, is where it's all at. Yep, they're very amphibious creatures out there to get through all that current and pull because, I mean, you know, an average Joe could just touch the lineup and boom, Kainoa McGee will be yelling at you on the mic. You <laughs> headed to Rockies, man. I mean, and you're going fast, not just knots. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, that end section over here at Pipeline it is also super crazy, dangerous, detonating waves over mostly sand, but it's real shallow. And I have seen, you know, the ultimate broken board scenario where you don't even get to get out and catch a wave and you're sent back to the beach with a broken board, your tail between your legs. Back to the drawing and board. Just like... Am I really going to get another board to go out there yeah. <laughs> and uh, and try to even just make it to the lineup? So you, you really got to be mentally strong it, in, it this, is. In, in this surfing right here. Yeah. You know, on any given day, 
if this was uh, not a surf contest day, there would be, what, maybe 70, 80 people in the water oh, yeah. trying to catch some of the same waves. And the intensity is just palpable when you sit here and watch it on days like that. But, man, what a treat. What a treat. To paddle out with your teammates. I know. We talked about formats in the years past. They would send out different mm -hmm. team members, you know, to surf against each other, which still made it uh, You're competing against somebody competitive in, yes. in that way. Um, but I like this more recent format of paddling out with your team and being able to encourage each other <clears throat> and uh, push each other. You know, maybe into some waves that you might not usually go for. And, or, and I feel you know, that we're going to get more performance off of them. You know, when you're competing against somebody, there's so much in competition. But right. when you have the team, like you guys were saying, they're competing against the other leaderboards. So right. it's just like uh, it's elevating the sport. It's like get out there. Well, the quality of the surfing <clears throat> is somewhat hindered when you have direct competition in the sense that I agree because you're paddling for a wave that this other guy wants who's not on your team mm -hmm. you guys might be pushing each other out of position to try to just get oh, yeah. the right away so you might you know hinder the overall performance that does hinder the performance you know because people do get personal I mean right. every professional surfer has their individual way of handling things but yes so when you got your teammate with you you know of course, you know, you, you guys, there's still the individual competition where you want to get the best wave. But overall, mm -hmm. you kind of eliminate that direct competition. And then the overall performances start to blossom even more when you've got your teammates with you and you're not exactly as direct in competition and you are allowing them to be in the right spot you know not having a battle for position but just to go freely attack this wave uh with your best positioning and yes. best skill and then we bring out the best in in the surfing yeah and that's what you're watching at dahui backdoor shootout prestige event only one of its kind team event big dollars up for prize money amazing sponsors mm. And we got brackish slabbing what? What would you give this? 10 to 12 foot pipeline? Solid 10 to 12. Um, you know, there may, may be something a little bigger every once in a while on, on the far outside. But we're, we're right now, we're just pumping at solid 10 to 12. And uh, some great information about this swell on Surfline.com. Yeah, Surfline. And, and Thank what it's you. been producing. The drone shot, you see a uh, rock pile at the top of your screen further down the beach. Right around that rock pile is where you'll find Kiki Bungalows, one yeah, of our Kiki. headlining sponsors. One of the most, my opinion, the combination of not having a fixed lifeguard station there, mm -hmm. having some kind of vacation area thing there, and the way Kiki can it's blow up. there, yeah. It's so crazy dangerous too oh you know, the shore break yes when you get into that shore break but but a beautiful area and um check out keiki bungalows when you're coming for your north shore stay right on the ocean and you know you've stayed out here a lot and and it's really one of those things that kind of can just lull you to sleep the sound oh, of yeah. these ocean oh, big crashing waves. Of course, if you're, you know, planning on surfing the next day, it can be a little intimidating. Or, oh, yeah. If you're or, a surfer, you're, you're, not, you're not going but, to sleep like that. But, yeah. man, soothing mm -hmm. sounds of the ocean. Oh, yeah. Put babies right to sleep. Oh, yeah. Team Volcom. Got a wrangle on this lineup here. There's some. Yes, moving okay. around right now to see if there's a catchable wave on the way. Been watching this team get ready for their heat for an hour or two now. They're frothing. Yeah, but there are lulls, you know. And with the danger of these slabby waves, you know, you gotta just, you know, cherry pick. Be peculiar of what you get. 
Well, here's something that uh, could be rideable on the horizon. You see three of our surfers in frame right now that are patiently waiting. One of them is now on the move further out. Here we go, I believe. That looks like a jack paddle. And uh, oh. checking out back door for a second, but decides to pull back. Well, he's getting kind of all excited up there. Yeah. Uh, seeing, it's like, you know, we've seen our first back door ridden waves. Earlier in the Florence team. Yeah, Mahina just brought us some Sinaloa chips. Oh, yeah. They, look they make uh, more than just armor. tortillas. They also make some lovely tortilla Thanks chips. Thanks to Hui Wax. Body armor, Kona Brewing, Monster Energy, Defend Hawaii, Oahu Golf Apparel, Himiku Organics, Kenui Kitchen, Kono's Hawaii, Pupakea Grill. And Two Thumbs Tattoo Hawaii. Thank you so much. We are live. Thank you, Salt Air Studios. You're watching us live. My name is Ezra Rodriguez along with Rocky Cannon and Isaiah Walker. Yeah, surfline.com. That's where it's at. Mahalo to Surfline. And they let that wave sneak through underneath. I believe Kaimana's the only one without yeah. uh, jersey, uh, going wet suit, uh, huh? <coughs> jersey less or wetsuit less, but he's on the move for this one right here. Oh. And he is up and riding, oh, but just my. a little late on that one. Had to focus all his attention on making the drop mm -hmm. and uh, couldn't do the multitasking on that particular one with... Uh, Grabbing the rail and tucking in. So, looks like Kyle Pao. Oh, sorry. That's uh, maybe Keone Keolana picking him up. But you see how late he was and did yeah. not have a chance to set the rail. So, that was just a... Not something a he wanted <coughs> living right here, but he knows yeah. he knows the drill. Yep. It I'm happens to Henry. everybody at one, one point in time. The straight hander. One of our powerhouse surfers here in Hawaii. Yeah, he uh, was a guy that I got to spend a lot of time with in, you know, during our youth, both surfing for the same Uncle Brian Surratt. Oh, man, let me tell gotcha you. Gotcha MCD surf I, team. I caught you guys at the Junior Pro Velsiland when <laughs> I was a young kid. That was a team, wasn't it? Yeah, Uncle Brian was, Surratt, that was, that one of the heaviest, days. best coaches here on the North Shore. Never forget those legacy names as we talk so much. You know, just Oahu and the island chain itself, not just North Shore. Respect, yeah. you know what I mean, for your elders. And uh, Uncle Brian Surratt is definitely a North Shore original. That's when uh, you had Eric Diaz. Eric Diaz All was kinds uh, of hammers shredding on it that up. Team. Yep. The MCD. Polly Boy Cheplik from oh, Big Island. One of my favorites. He came, you know, because, you know, I am a townie. Came into Waikiki. That's, how, you know, how I met all you guys. Yeah. The country team yeah, back in the day. Yeah, we had to make our summer pilgrimage. Oh, yeah. You to know, and that's and the like, oh, there's like, a know, whole different scene over here. We've become friends to the end, you know, yeah. the biggest surf community. But, oh, man, watching Polly and you guys surfing Baby Queens, I was like, oh, I've got to <laughs> change it up. These guys got a whole different approach. Right. Good stuff. Well, here's a, a load of waves that are approaching. We'll see if there's anything with potential. They don't look too bad, the angle, huh, Rock? Yeah. Or, uh, you know, when sometimes when you get the mixture of the north and the west, you'll get these sets of waves, and, and nobody's going to ride these because the angle is too straight in or straight on. You want mm -hmm. a little bit of a tweak either to the north for back door or to the west for pipeline. But every once in a while, you'll get this, <clears throat> this combination of the north and west, which makes for one extended <clears throat> giant closeout. And that's why we're not seeing anybody yeah, take part in these waves. And that's some of the, the part of the knowledge 
in surfing here for for a lot of years that you know knowing which one to hey which one uncle willie grace right uncle there willie grace coming uh, which one action. to catch and which one to back off uh you know comes with with a lot of that experience and mm -hmm. and wave selection just like you're saying like the volcom team didn't even look at those they just paddled right over they them pretty much yeah, knew you, you know knew. from 30 40 yards out as it's approaching the reef that i'm not going to even flinch for this one and uh, it's mostly about setting yourself up for the next set and getting in that position of, of where you want to be. And, you know, there, there's times, too, where you don't really want to chase too much here. Nope. You want to pick your spot. And what you don't see uh, from these shots uh, and from our surface perspective is the row of houses that are up here mm -hmm. and the different landmarks that you use for lighting oh, yeah. up. Uh, and aligning yourself for for the the premium position, and um, you know it, it was it was always surfing here a lot. It's always a lot of looking back at shore to yeah. you know gauge your your positioning, uh, and you find something that is fixed or in a yeah. permanent position. So a certain house, a certain coconut tree, yeah. you know. You could even measure up and look beyond that up into the the mountain ridge line right. and try to find something up there too. So, um, you know, positioning is so important. And when you're talking positioning here, as we see a great wow. positioning for Balaram Stack, and he's was... going to come screaming oh, through. Oh, right. out. Ball Stack comes Ball through. Stack. Huge. That was deep in the depths of pipeline. That oh. thing had one foot of water on it. Yeah. I think the lip was thicker than the water was deep. Wow, Look I'm always on my edge of my seat. Disappeared he is right that there. That was beautiful. That is going to be pushing the level of those double digit scores. Yeah, we saw a 10 from John. Yes. Saw that 9 5 from Eli, which, you know, and I know they also will go back to video to reflect some yeah. of the scores too um, and make sure they're assigning an appropriate score. I, Eli's could, in my opinion, get nudged up a little bit too. But that the one, side one. Yeah, yes, but yes. But this one from Balaram Stack. But where was, he was was so black, so dark from the takeoff. Excellent I know he's a surfing. Nut, nutcase. I, yeah. I love watching him. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely out of his mind. Yes. All compliments of the phrase. Yes. And, <laughs> um, yes, and he's putting Volcom on that thing. We're going to see what uh, Kainoa McGee has to say Yeah, about he's that. sitting right beside the judges, so he, he can uh, fill us in. Anything uh, that, audibly on yeah, anything that goes on, is. we can hear it, and uh, we know. <laughs> so we're waiting to hear. Everybody we, we, was frothed on that last know, the, ride. The, it sounds like rock. The peanut gallery yes. has a whole new definition here at Pipeline, and uh, they're definitely making their yeah. thoughts and opinions known mm -hmm. to the judges. Yes. And but it's an intense the, place already. Yeah. Ultimately, the judges will put put in the numbers. Mm -hmm. But that one's, I, I would say, has to be double digits. I don't know. You know, perfect 12s are going to be really hard to come by. I'm no judge. I'm a big fan. But that might be, you know, compared to John John's 10, they're probably taking a look at that thing. Yeah, it could be um, in that 10.5, 11-point range. That thing was range. inside, a little bit bigger. And... Uh, yeah, it, everybody. He really had some speed on there, though. That was the biggest difference. We would uh, like to request a replay of Balaram Stack for our judges. And also, if... Uh, queue up replay with John John's wave too because those are in comparison right now so we we got there we go rock the word from Kainoa that this is going to be up there there goes Mr. Stack again on a smaller Coney one beautiful exit by him I mean that was like why not go on that one I mean you're getting yeah, barrel. you got 55 minutes, Whew. and you just got something that's probably going to be a, a excellent keeper in the meantime while you're waiting. And, you know, there is also like a rotation out there. Yeah. So Balaram knows 
he's not going to go out to his teammates and then mm -hmm. expect that next big one again. So he's just keeping himself yeah. busy. Their team. Waiting, so, waiting yeah. for his turn. Mm -hmm. You know, he took his turn. He capitalized big time. And while he's waiting for his turn, yeah. he'll sneak around on the inside and get a couple well, more. I mean, you know, that favorite place to be is in the barrel. Oh, Why big not? Time. And that was a nice one as well. And you know, here in Hawaii, it doesn't work like that. You can't catch a wave and paddle all the way back <laughs> out to the back. lineup yeah. and get another one. Not even with your teammates. Oh, it's just oh, not cool, know. man. It isn't cool. Hey, but it happens. Yeah. You I'm know, from town. It happens a lot. I, I know. <laughs> Uh, like like you tell you said, man. Every zone's yeah. got its uh, yeah. different little uh, little. Oh, perks. see, they're matching. So here's the John John wave. That was a ten. It's beautiful, you know, and really excellent score. Great surfed wave, and here's Balaram, just that deeper from that same angle. Balaram was deeper. Front side, back side, that can be debated all day long. I dug it. I kind of liked my straight-on angle from the house, though, Rocky. You just seen that brackish, how deep, slabby. Like, once that thing pounded down, that thing could have lifted him up. Right. Huli maka flip, but yeah. not, not and, and, in this and case. And with this rain, you know, putting a little bit of, uh, you know, that little darker tint on the water, he yeah. probably was going to, you know, bust out his headlamp pretty soon to find I his way to out of there. But I know you know the reef, tunnel. and all my brothers over here know the reef so good. But when it's brackish, it definitely adds a difference. I don't care how many years you've surfed this reef. It shifts. It moves all over the place. That when is another, you can't see the bottom. There's another landmark uh, aspect to it in what you're talking okay. about is looking at the cracks in the reef that yeah. you can't see. What I'm like used this. to seeing and everybody on, you know, watching us is like, oh, the beautiful car canvas of pipeline. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, this adds a different element. Yep. It's and not and straight Willy Wonka chocolate, right, but it's right, brackish. Right. And, and just not being able to see the bottom. Mm -hmm. If you're one of those guys uh, that does use different formations and yeah. cracks in the reef and different boils, it can affect your ability to yeah. find the right position because those notches in the reef you guys even know when you guys are sitting For sure. out there because i know you sit way out oh here we go rock this looks like makana pang yes and i was telling isaiah uh walker earlier that i watched makana pang right before we got started and he was talking to riddler about uh riding a 511 and then he might switch to his 6-1 crazy how small these i mean he's a smaller guy with i mean whew, yeah to crazy talent consider that kind of size board but there's a quick replay of makana he ready for bang pang yeah and a 6-1 to him is a uh, a step up or That's a gun a step almost up. yes yeah and what would you ride good, on a day uh, like today for you? Today, I would be, I, I really like the 7-6 number. That, that gotcha. would be my go-to for a, a big day like today. Um, I definitely felt like, you know, and I'm Makana Pang's step up board is a 6-1. I'm standing 6-1. Uh, that, that's in, your in short, height, short, height, short so, board hot dog. So, huh? you know. Definitely is something bigger for uh, for a taller person like me would would be the the board choice, but um, you know it was like guys like Andy and Bruce that you know still in that five ten five eleven in their height mm -hmm. they were you know scaling it down to like six and fours know, and, and yeah and they know, were riding big next days. next to uh, you know a guy that from Kauai, Max Madaris. Yeah. Super small boards before you came on the pipe yep. scene. He was yep. out there on his Twinser. Yeah. Yeah, that's, Kinda. A, that's a great So going shorter game. wasn't anything new, you know what I mean? The right. guys were already <clears throat> dabbling with it Yeah, years I feel ago. like it, it uh, you know, it kind of just was tailored to the rider mm -hmm. and the preference of the rider. I always felt like I could, you know, use a bigger board and not feel like I was uh, sacrificing too much movement or maneuverability, yeah. you know, just with foot placement uh, per se. But um, definitely, you know, then you watch Kelly and some of the small boards I know. he would ride and, and still does ride. And, and just, 
yeah, it it Kelly's was happening animal. back in the day. Maybe not as much yeah. as it happens today, but there there definitely were those guys that didn't mind taking out something smaller, yep. having to paddle that much harder. Um, but having a little bit more foam nowadays really doesn't hurt. Just yeah. from my longboard background, you know, my longboard is my gun, my small yeah. wakeboard. I don't have any excuses. Right. Let's go, <laughs> Ezra. <laughs> One Hurry size up. fits yeah. all. <laughs> but, yeah, amazing to watch some of that stuff this winter, too, of Haleva, big Haleva. Guys are on some smaller boards. Yeah. And, you know, that growing up around that wave, Terry Aquina and all that, those guys are riding massive boards. And, you know, the Martin Potter days i mean yeah. he's riding a gun floating that yeah, ball sunny so too are, you know yeah. just on oh, like I seven sunny. tens you know sunny strong here we go we got a paddle oh. for kaimana henry missed the mana and he's comfortably into this one nice big bottom turn and the wave just doesn't hold up as much as he'd like so but he oh. will find a little he was patient, waiting Sneaker to slide on through the inside. One. Yeah. yeah, on the inside. And a quick one for Balaram, just uh, checking in and checking out. Well, definitely the best day of this year so far. Brand new into 2022. Yes, that's but amazing. But the last event, the HIC Pipe Pro, uh, where we had John John Florence win the men's division and mm -hmm. Moana Wong, she won the yes. women's division. Man, we had some amazing waves and and a couple of days of really excellent quality pipeline and just kind of set us up going into the holidays and then wrapping around to the new year. We knew we were going to have a chance with this event and what a day to start on this uh, January 6th. So uh, we're going to show John John's wave, the, the 10. They're still going over it. And uh, the judges want to get a good comparison. So, you know, when you have this much video coverage, why not? I really show like them that. Again Replay and again. it. You yeah. know, this is a professional sport. <coughs> oh, yeah. Gone, gone yeah. are the days where you get yeah. to see the wave one time in live action yeah. and have to make an immense decision on just what you saw for five seconds. Yeah, exactly. With the ad advantage of having Salt and Air Studios cover this from multiple angles, why not take advantage? And there is Makana Pang. Makana Pang. Hitting the eject button. This kid's been charging. Oh. Bow. Oh, oh wow. He definitely got his feet in the wax right in the beginning of the heat, and he, now Mr. Stack is set, and he is just charging, surfing his heat. There's McConaughey's replay team. getting right in the pocket right there, looking comfortable, and then goes with the big flyaway kick out. Those always get reactions from the crowd. And then Kaimana Henry, you see him right there paddling back out. Yeah, Kaimana Henry, 2016 backdoor shootout winner in epic conditions. And 2022 shootout, we're looking for some, we got amazing swell on the horizon. Yeah, a lot of waves headed our way. Uh, the surf line forecasters are keeping us in the loop and well informed. Look at that one, just peel off Whew. and uh, curl into the channel. Mana's back out there. You also got Mikey O'Hennessy out there, Jack Robo, Kainehe Hunt, yeah, and Mikey McConaughey. Boy is actually probably going to be uh, subbing in in oh, the next round. Oh, okay, gotcha. So some of the teams, as we watch John John's 10-point ride again, uh, they do have more than four team members, but you can only have up to four surfers in the heat okay, gotcha. active as we watch Balaram stack. So I think, you know, you guys might agree with us or disagree at home, but 
the comparison of John John to Balaram, I'd say Balaram was quite a bit deeper. He was deeper. And so if John got a 10, as we watch a replay of Kaimana's last mm -hmm. wave, that he was able to sneak in and out on that end section, but the drone footage picking up Makana Pang and then switching to that pipe cam right there, looking straight in uh, for Makana's best wave so far. But that wave of Balaram, how deep he was and how much further he had to travel to get out. Exactly. If John's was a 10, they may even make an adjustment to put John's at a, as a high nine or something like that. I gotcha, that. yep. But there is a um, room for movement in the scale, if you will. Uh, and they have to be gentle because waves. the day just begun as well, too. But uh, we yeah, you don't want to, you know, blow your load too early and, and throw out the huge score uh, for something that there could be yeah. uh, another better offering later on. So they're going to be really technical with these scores to make sure they assign them as, as a, you know, appropriately as possible. Yeah. But I do think in this situation, seeing those waves – in succession back to back yes that balaram has to get the nod for I the agree. better score how high they go up on the scale is going to be you know up to the judges and and, and what they want to throw out but i yeah. think you know if john's a 10 balaram's maybe a 10 oh, yeah. eight or 11 and just from where i'm sitting ju i just replay it in my mind i love the replay but that he was <laughs> in that thing that would uh, hurt if he didn't make that first pump right and um <clears throat> part of the excitement of watching this event oh, yes. is, is that we get to see these waves over again and the positions that they're putting themselves in is, is definitely uh, the entertainment. And he is hanging on that it. inside where he got that wave right inside of Kaimana Henry right there. And he's been turning around taking looks. So. You could see a little bit of uh, the wind factor, which was you know non-present this morning. There wasn't uh, just when you said that anything I felt moving the, the, right there, but on the screen you can see too the little bit of that ehukai, that gotcha. sea spray coming off the lip. That the good thing is that it's blowing from you know a, a decent direction. It's, I don't know if it's full trade winds, and we're not expecting full trade winds for a while, according to some of our weather uh, predictors. But you know the biggest thing you worry about. When there's variable wind days, as we watch uh, Balaram on the inside, <laughs> just do a little uh, spinning break dance move right there. But oh, Mana here, Rocky looks like going on a speed ball. He's gonna pig dog it. Definitely oh, powering out of that one. He took the high road too yeah. out of that slab. Needed to take that high line exit. Uh, but the thing you worry about when it's variable wind forecast or when you start the day with, like, no winds, you always are concerned about that sea breeze and onshore yeah. crumble, which the direction that the wind's blowing right now, it looks a little bit more easterly, so uh, kind of northeast, so kind of side shore into pipeline, but, but still holding it open. It'll hold it open because the wind you're talking about will turn it into a tail coping hit event which we would shut it down there because right. this is the shootout it's uh a different contest it's all yeah. about the barrel maneuvers are and uh, not part of the criteria yeah. it is and the tube riding you know uncle eddie does too it's like you know he's not just gonna hold it because he's got to hold it he right. wants pristine prestige slabby pipe slabby back door and, and you know it's to be fair for everybody involved in this contest mm -hmm. making the call to run or not uh it, it's like this morning there's no way you could walk away from that kind of surf that you were seeing Roger that. but there's no way to fully 100 percent predict that it's going to be holding that yeah quality for the entire day so it is one of those uh ebb and flow type of yeah. decisions where you're constantly monitoring the current conditions mm -hmm. you're trying your best to get all the input that you can from the folks at surfline mm -hmm. from uh, different uh, other sources that yep. are on the ground here locally to tell you what's going to be happening or what to expect exactly. in the coming hours yeah because as much as you want you know everything to be equal you do want the surfers to have equal opportunity 
That's uh, hard. Which is hard to guarantee oh, when yeah. you're dealing with Mother Nature. Yep. I always like, uh, you know, would look at uh, George Downing at the Eddie Icon and go, wow, you have a job cut out for you. You got to call the day. You got to have it 25 feet consistent for eight hours. Right. And, you know, Uncle Eddie and the Hui, they want this thing to be meaty, perfect. I mean, you know, the Hui backdoor shootout, prestige event. Well, you're seeing some drone footage right now of. I believe that is Jack Robinson Robo. at back door. A lot of speed down the line, and he oh. is going to come shooting out. That back. is the signature maneuver of the event, the yes. back door shootout. Yes, <laughs> and he's been waiting for that because I watched him tail turn through two, of, and that's not our typical Jack Robinson. So you can see the best of the best at these conditions. You're going to need to go shopping. He, he was... It's like somebody, uh, he was at a house just pacing by the back door, waiting for the opening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. He was like a cat burglar, oh, guys just waiting look, for yeah. that back door yeah. opportunity. And he paced for quite a number of minutes. That was beautiful. Before taking that one. Look, kind of air dropping into it and then set that perfect high line pump and On came out rail, the bottom. though, with speed, yeah. He read that just perfectly all the way. And um, it's going to be a good score coming ocean. in for Jack. But look at this uh, drone shot just capturing beautiful. beautiful waves rolling in at pipe. So in this team event, I believe, you know, each individual team member in each heat, they want top two scores, right? Two uh, waves. So, so it'll actually be, uh, it'll be a culmination of... A number of scores. So I believe for each team rider, mm -hmm. uh, in these particular heats, it doesn't matter when you get your best waves. Okay. So you could have a heat where you don't take any of your waves out of this heat, mm -hmm. uh, or you could surf your next round and have four epic waves. But it's typically been um, for the individual accolades and mm -hmm. the individual counting scores, it is uh, best four rides Oh, that's okay. overall for the whole event. So each particular heat really doesn't matter how many good waves you get or, yep. or, or not. Um, so, like in the last heat, John, he'll keep that 10-point ride. He will. Um, and maybe or maybe not another one from another wave from that heat. I think he had like a 6.5 or something. 6.5. But um, it'll just overall, when all is said and done, all the surfing is done, each person will be having their four best waves gotcha. that they caught, you know, in any round. And with that um, all around, it just lets you watch your favorite surfers more and more performance, yeah. more elevation. Yeah. And, and and you don't have to worry about advancement. That's nope. the huge part of it is that, you know, you get. It's uh, like X Games and Skate, you got another run. Right. You, got you another get another run. run. Exactly. You can um, throw out some runs. You know, and even uh, kind of almost like. Uh, we're wearing Oahu golf apparel, almost like a four-day professional golf tournament Roger where they that. get those four rounds and, you know. Um, and as fans of the surf, we get to watch. You know, you're not losing any of these big names. Right. We get to see them the next day. They're, we they're get to see in them it. in their second, third round. Good stuff. I love the format. Yeah, it's it's very unique, and it's a wonder that – you know, you don't see more events like it, mm -hmm. uh, which I, you know, there's something to be said about uh, when somebody's imitating you. It's because, you know, there's a, a, a side of you that gets a little bit insulted, but also you should be flattered because somebody exactly. isn't liking oh, what you're time. doing. Oh, big time. Uh, but, you know, for, for what it's worth, you know, whether or not we'd like to or see these events or not, but I'm mm -hmm. so surprised that this event still kind of stands alone as the one of its kind. And yes. you know, the only other one you can think of is the big daddy of them all, the Eddie Aikau, which has that same yep. one-day format. You get to surf twice, uh, no eliminations. But, you know, over the course of four yeah. days plus, we get to cherry-pick the yeah. best days and have these guys. And you uh, got the best, yeah. You know, you got pipeline specialists. There ain't anybody on this list. That, right. Yeah. You know, as whereas a conventional pipe surfing event, 
you got somebody from mm-hmm. wherever who doesn't surf here all the time, and, you know, they won't mm-hmm. be that entertaining out here. And you can always have one of your local heroes that put in so much time in a 25-minute pipe heat. Right now, the uh, ocean can slow down, and there you go. The best surfer is out of the event already, right. but that's just time, luck. and Yeah, a lot of know. it left up to luck. You know, and I see a lot of it in the, uh, you know, not. Oh, here we go, counting it down. This ends Volcom's heat. Yeah, so back that'll be the end of uh, the run for Volcom. And you see the surfers exchanging their positions now. Volcom paddling out of the lineup. And who we got up here now? And Rock. it looks like uh, Billy Kemper right yeah. there. So it'll be Team Dahui Wax with Makua Rothman. Oh, Dahui Wax Kemper, in the house. Kai Lenny, and it's Kala Grace that's taking the place of, of Jamie O'Brien. So here's a recap of the Volcom Heat and a couple of... Uh, carving turns there for Jack Robinson but we're looking yeah. for the barrels and Balaram mm-hmm. Stack got this wave but he got one of the best waves that we've seen I like all his little uh, under the lip turn <laughs> which is this one right, right here. here just extremely deep dark and almost unmakeable but he makes it makeable and Kaimana Henry had a couple of nice rides this one way on the inside barrel but couldn't quite make it out and then ball uh, makana pang keeping us busy here we'll be right back after these messages stick around more backdoor shootout headed your way stick around gang Okay, welcome back right into some epic replay action of Billy Kemper 
at the 2022 Dahui Backdoor Shootout. And now live action, Billy Kemper going backdoor. Oh, how he would paddle back out so fast. That was nuts, bro. <laughs> Rocky Cannon with Isaiah Walker coming right into the Huey Wax team with Makua Rothman, the man we just saw two times, Billy Kemper, Kai Lenny, and Kala Grace taking the place of Jamie O'Brien. So we got a couple of, of four heavy hitters out there right now. And we're going to uh, bring up, I believe, Jack Robinson's wave at some point because we're kind of serving as uh, small kind intercommunication with the judges, with our production team, because the judges have a monitor also that they can watch the waves. Oh. And so they need to get it queued up, though, with our, our production team. So you'll hear that from time to time. Isaiah okay. will be helping out, right. you know, yeah. doing some communication. Sounds good. Yeah, I mean, Jack Robinson's wave was so heavy, so throaty. And, I mean, so was Billy Kemper's last one, too. So we're, we're seeing a lot of really good waves being ridden. They're being a little... Selective. And here's Robbo's wave coming up as Billy transitions to the seat of the Water Patrol jet ski. But see how he kind of airdropped? And then that perfect line that he drew from entering the barrel. There was no other way he was going to make it if he didn't get that pump because that wave was so fast. Right. I so well he done. took a high line and it allowed him to get that speed to come out of the barrel. And there's some of these waves, that's the only way that you're even going to have a chance to come out is to have that perfect entry kind of high line pump to get that speed. And uh, Jack did that just right on that one. Yeah, it's cool because, I mean, he went right, but the wave was actually straight in front of us here. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't one of those wide ones that went over to off the walls right on the reef here on the first reef. That's why you saw he had to kind of get out before that back door section kind of got to him. Yeah, it was almost like he was going like into the proper back door right. area, but took off more towards pipeline. Well, it's super exciting. The crowd loves it. Yeah. Um, the definitely. beach crowd definitely is uh, here to cheer these guys on, and we're getting... Um, you know, a lot of viewers tuning in at surfline.com and a point in the background. One of those uh, iconic ridge lines that is featured in so many different photos and videos of, you know, you see a wave and you're watching the surfing and then they'll show a shot like that. And you know exactly <laughs> the area. Yep. If Kaena Point is in the shot, then you know us on the North Shore. There's a, I, I've heard that was, you know, the transition to the the next life, is is through Kaena Point or off Kaena Point. Right, the in, uh, stories off of old souls is jumping off, leaping into the, to the next world. Wow. We're not recommending that <laughs> nowadays at all, but that little <laughs> shot there for. Hawaiian mo'olelo and, and stories and legend has that area as uh, the transition point to the next life. You know, I have an interesting story about, um, you know, a backdrop like that. So, mm. so we see Kaena Point and that landmark helps to identify where you're at, right? So Correct. there was this, one of the oldest surfing photos that we have was taken in the 1890s. And for years, people thought it was in Waikiki. Hmm. Because oftentimes people assume that surfing was dying out and it, it almost went extinct in Hawaii, which is incorrect. And in a lot of my research, I really emphasize that that wasn't true. Okay. Um, so when this photo came out and it's of these two Hawaiian guys holding surfboards, wearing model, and you can see, all you see is the waves in the background. And so... It was assumed that this was Waikiki because they thought, well, no one's really surfing anywhere else and maybe just Waikiki. But I knew that wave and I knew it was Hilo. Mm. I'm born and raised in Hilo and I, I just from, you know, when you're a surfer and you see a wave, you recognize the wave. That's you know so I mean? true. I was thinking about that the other day watching some surfing and it's so unique. Again, another unique aspect of our sport and, and uh, those of us who participate in it 
when you can recognize a wave by its characteristics right. and the way it breaks without seeing anything else in frame. Yep. You can just see the wave and know it's a certain break. And I thought that was an interesting, unique uh, quality of, of how we look at the ocean. Right. It's kind of interesting because the archivist at Bishop Museum disagreed with me. Okay. But in, in my book, Waves of Resistance, I, I stuck my neck out. I said, I think this is Hilo. Mm. Uh, because Hilo is also an epicenter, kind of a... Uh, a mecca right. of surfing in that time period in the 1800s and even prior. Well, and it but was a kind of the f if you're coming from the west, it's the first kind of port or right. entry that you come across. Correct. I mean, unfortunately, they've built uh, this large breakwater, mm -hmm. this wall, mm -hmm. and it's kind of shut off a lot of the breaks that used to go in there. Um, but anyway, so I made the claim, and then fortunately, a few years later, they found uh, the series of photos. So there were there were a couple of different photos. Okay. We only had the one, but when they found the whole reel of them, there was this shot that had a different angle, and you could see a landmark, and it was the Hamakua coastline. Okay. So. You were vindicated. I was vindicated. <laughs> and so it's kind of cool that Heinalu were surfing is something that wasn't extinct, that, um, you know, even though you, you hear the narrative, like the missionaries banded, and then it, it right. disappeared, and then later it came up. I did. Uh, report one time uh, during my university years and came across some some stories I did a report on surfing and uh, of some boards being converted into like school tables or, or oh, benches right, right, right. you know yeah, that yeah. kind of thing which made you believe that it was totally outlawed or banned right. or, or not practiced mm. um, I don't doubt that maybe that was true in some of the Right. incidences or cases but in, in your uh assessment it was still you know going on yeah i mean there were fewer people surfing in the late 1800s compared to say the 1700s mm. but a lot of that had to do unfortunately with rapid depopulation of mm. the in hawaii um diseases ravaged through hawaiian society where you know probably from 500,000 people went down to like 40,000 wow. people. Um, and so, you know, there were fewer people, fewer surfers. However, a lot of people, and we see this even today, that would go to the ocean and surf more when things were more challenging in life. So I don't know if you, I'm sure you find this to be the case. Maybe you have a long, stressful day or things are just kind of stressful. Surfing becomes that escape yep. for you. Um, and and so in many ways, this is true of, of Hawaiians as well when times were tough, especially in the late 1800s, 1893. The queen was deposed in this mm -hmm. illegal coup that took place. And that also coincides with this time period. In fact, Duke Hatamoku was three years old when the queen was, um, you know, ousted in this coup. Right. 1898. There's the annexation, supposed annexation, what mm -hmm. people are calling now occupation. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Duke was still, he was surfing as well. And right at that time, as the Hawaiian monarchy uh, was, you know, being deposed, surfing also had this revitalization as well. And one of my contentions is the ocean was kind of an escape from some of the drama that was taking place on land. Uh, but definitely surfing did not die out. There were fewer people surfing, but we do have this resurgence uh, of surfing that takes place in the, eight, uh, the early 1900s with guys like Duke Hanamoku, who we're celebrating today at this event. Yeah, it's a great way to, to recognize Duke Hanamoku and, you know, to have it in this way of a, of a community event. Uh, an event that is like no other and as unique as the individual himself. As we oh. watch Kai Lenny from that jet ski cam, you see exactly what happened. And he kind of like just got picked up by the wave so much so where the gravity and centrifugal force could not allow him to stay on the board. So he basically had to go into somersault mode <laughs> and... He opted for somersault. Go with the that flow. That water literally. angle was insane. So you'll watch in here as he gets so deep. And that's where he got sucked up the face right there. But, man, 
the, just the uh, the technical positioning you got to contort your body into to have a chance to make these waves is you know just super athletic in itself yeah great for uh great shot by their water crew and larry haynes out yeah there. yeah larry's out there really shooting off the right back into of the, the ski. eye of the needle there and we got right. to see what it's really like on the inside especially when you're going over the falls like that yeah and, and you know surfing also has a way of being one of the most humbling activities that right. you can do because we, we were talking earlier of just the immense skill and talent of that particular individual, Kai Lenny. And, you know, the wave made him look very unskilled or, or in a vulnerable position, which surfing might be one of the, the most humbling sports when it comes to one moment you're like on top of the world. You just rode this great wave, did this, these great maneuvers or what have you. And then the very next wave or the, you know, moments later, you're getting pinned underwater <laughs> and just like fighting for your life almost where right. the tables have turned very quickly. One thing that's cool, um, I mean, going back to history, mm -hmm. when Captain Cook, Captain James Cook from London, uh, he was sort of like the equivalent of, say, what maybe an astronaut was back in the 70s or 60s. Or, Exploring um, these crazy uncharted to the, yeah, waters at least to the western world although the pacific island peoples hawaiians and other pacific islanders had been traversing the ocean for thousands of years correct so, and that's something cool too that also brings us to our tradition of hit and surfing is that pacific islanders and native hawaiians being a part of that pacific islander people were very advanced in traversing the ocean uh, there's a Tongan scholar named Epele Haofa who makes the argument that the ocean is actually a highway. When you look at the Pacific perspective, the ocean isn't a boundary or border, mm. it's just a connector. Whereas in, in a lot of Western society, the ocean has always been seen as like a barrier. Right. Uh, some people explain like island fever as a feeling they have of being trapped and that the ocean is the source of that entrapment because most cultures feared the ocean. In Hawaii and throughout the Pacific, the ocean is something of leisure that we're watching today, mm -hmm. which is so amazing to have, like we just saw Kai Lenny, you know, get swallowed by this massive wave, and yet he popped back up and paddled back He's up. Right back out there. Now, when Captain Cook arrived in Hawaii in 1778 and then 1779, one of the first things he writes in his journal is he, he sees these children playing in surf in Kona. And... He was afraid that they were going to drown. <laughs> but they're, you know, body surfing, right? And you may see this sandy beach or pounders or somewhere where there's some heavy shore break. And he said these, these kids were getting pummeled by these waves and then they would pop back up just like we saw Kai Lenny and they were laughing in enjoyment. Mm. It was the first time, I mean, he couldn't, he couldn't really fathom that concept of the surf and the waves as something of pleasure. Uh -huh. But in our culture and in our history, it definitely was. And so, you know, I, I have a question um, about, you know, I guess my thinking of it, you know, I'm just so curious of who the first surfer might have been or how the first discovery of riding a wave. And I, I've kind of like can only think of like it was you have to go back to like what was before the surfboard, which what have always been was the canoe, mm. and that potentially the first feeling of riding a wave or or realizing that you could harness the the energy of that wave to propel yourself forward mm. could have possibly or or maybe did come from a, a canoe in, in that respect. Yeah, and actually something I, that's really cool is it. Just like today, so even in this event, I love about this event is we have all these different divisions. In one of them, we have a longboard division, we have a stand-up paddle division. So in, in surfing, there's a variety of different genres, I guess, mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. surfing, whether it's uh, riding, and today we have foiling, and there's a lot of different ways uh, and, and different equipment to ride. In old Hawaii, it was the same. Like, there was, there was a 
you know, canoe surfing was one of these mm. sort of avenues. I love the fact that uh, my friend Ikaika Kalama and his crew and, and even Mikey O'Shaughnessy yeah. and others have been canoe surfing at Waimea Bay. That's just like so next level, but still so roots. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> they say that King Kamehameha, one of his favorite things, one of his favorite ver uh, forms of surfing was the step off. So they would paddle a canoe into big swells and he'd step off with his surfboard. Speaking of that, let's take a look at this wave. It's Makua. Makua Kai going Trying back to Trying to figure out uh, if that's a helmet that he's wearing. Pretty fancy. Yeah, it's got, got like almost like the face guard too. Like a COVID helmet. Yeah, the face mask with the, the head covering and the face covering. Yeah, we have to try to get a close up on that. I'm, Definitely uh, not thinking that he dyed his hair that blonde. But some oh. head protection is definitely a good idea yeah, it is. when you're surfing pipeline. Especially when you have a family. Yep. And well, cool as a proud dad. You've got uh, these big waves breaking over shallow reef. I think it's safe to say that Pipeline is perhaps the deadliest wave. I mean, as yeah. far as numbers of people who have died here. Right. Sadly. Yeah. And it and it's all the same scenario, pretty much. Right. Hit your head on the reef. You go unconscious. And you drown. And you drown. Yeah. Um, and and the, you know, the, the range of... Uh, types of, of surfers from, you know, body boarders to a knee boarder passed away here. Um, you know, a photographer, John Mozo, passed away here from that same, you know, uh, consequence of getting pounded by some of these waves. And it's not very deep, as we've been mentioning. It's super shallow. And the force in which that you get driven into the reef with your most vulnerable body part which is your head uh that is the the ultimate killer right speaking of getting pounded there was a big set that just washed all of our competitors through there's yeah I think one guy somehow managed to one get one guy it. made it oh cool man what's it like when you're sitting out here and you see a second reef set break right in front of you. Uh, you, you definitely got a lot of uh, adrenaline flowing, and it's a little bit difficult to catch your breath to get that big, big deep inhale that you know you'll need. But Rocky Cannon, Isaiah Walker, we got Ezra Rodriguez joining us too. Um, you know, honestly. When you specifically talk about second and third reef, it's actually a little bit more comforting because you know that there's deeper water out right. there. It is even more scary when those size waves are cracking on the first reef right. because you literally, you go down and then you hit the bottom already and you're like, wow, I can't go any deeper. And, you know, I've laid on the bottom of the reef watching the incoming and just watching it hit the reef and there's nowhere deeper to go so that could probably be the more the scariest part is that first reef action where you dive down and uh, other places like sunset waimea you can swim well below right you know what you're going to get pounded by but here there's nowhere to go right and basically just you know see it coming laying on the reef and you just cringe and curl up and hope for the best and you know i uh, i for the number of years that I spent out here every single day from two feet to 20 feet onshore, offshore, learning the wave as best I could. Fortunately, it was only broken boards, you know, lots of scrapes and, and scratches everywhere, but nothing ever, you know, too serious on the head, right. um, which was, you know, when you're looking back on it, gosh, it's only a matter of luck. Like, right. You know, my mom begged me to wear a helmet, trying to chase me out the door and put it on me. I'm like, ah, get it away from me. It's not cool looking. It's, it's so dorky. But, man, you know, 
I have seen the helmets save so many people's lives. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I remember when Tom Carroll was one of the first to wear the helmet sure. in competition. They call him Max Headgear. Yeah. And, uh, but, I mean, it's a smart decision. And you think about it, it's oddly, most other sports wear helmets, especially right. when you're doing this kind of high impact. Uh, and, the, and the bottom out here, it's not flat. I mean, it's contoured. Really cool project my good friend, Dr. Cliff Copono has been working okay. on, is mapping the bottom of Pipeline. Oh, wow. And um, just to see all the caverns, the caves, the, um, it's, a, it's a minefield out there. One of the first indications I got to see the contours of the reef at Pipeline were from this very awesome movie called North Shore. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rick Kane, the character, got shoved into one of these caves. Right. And, you know, definitely uh, as a young lad watching that, it alerted me to the potential right. of the dangers here and just added to, you know, the, the heightened uh, adrenaline and, and, you know, but the weird, strange desire to try to get out here and catch some of these waves as we watch Makua and Kala Grace look at that one and look at that beautiful just curling pipeline wave right through the photographers that are sitting there so it looks like two out of the four surfers in this heat opting for the the headgear and protection right. yeah so this you know, that movie is funny. Uh, it's kind of a cult classic, it's even though it a, yeah. didn't win any Academy Awards. But I have to say, the if speaking of awards and acting ability, that rewatching it as an adult, our pidgin language is something that, like, if you don't speak it and you try to speak it, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Yes. It's a hard thing to wrap your language and your tongue around. Right. But... The, the character of Turtle, in my opinion, Turtle. did a pretty darn good job of being a non-pigeon speaker yep. to learn it and to get it how he got it. Uh, of course, you have some of the great one-liners by Uncle Jerry Lopez and the <laughs> other actors that were playing the local parts, yeah. which they, they were pigeon speakers. So yeah. that Easy. you know kind of came natural. But, man, I think uh, John Philbin deserves some kind of Pigeon Actors Award. <laughs> You took his stuff, you pound him. Yeah, that's the classic that's Jerry one. Lopez. Or Vince Moore always Loka. pulling bodies out of the caves. Yeah. Yeah, kind of kind of cool history in that, too, is there are a lot of the Hui guys who are in the movie. That, right? yeah. I've I mean, seen around here, um, David Stent, yep. and who's, uh, who was part of the original founding of the club, but his dad, Kavika Stant, had a had a quite the role. Uncle Kovika was a tough uncle, and um, his role in the movie wasn't as part of the hui, right, right, which right. was that uh, scene to you know, <clears throat> Gouda was the the <laughs> phrase the of the of the year. Pig farmer, yeah, gave Rick a ride to Lake <clears throat> to see uh, Kiani and family. But it was also that um, that. Uh, depiction of of the hui that really you know scared a lot of potential nor uh, surfers that were coming here even personal friends of mine from the mainland mm -hmm. were like terrified mm -hmm. because of what the movie you know in hollywood and what they do and right. you know obviously the the portrayers in the movie had had no problem putting that out there because you know it, a part of it was hey Come with respect. You know, right. a healthy fear is is called respect. <laughs> right. Uh, and so, that part of the movie, I believe, was uh, instrumental in you know putting it out there that you don't mess around when you come over here. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting that notion of respect in the surf is nothing new. It goes mm -hmm. way back into mm. some of the old Mo'olelo as well. And I think a lot of it is just there's a safety component to respecting, you know, people and respecting the ocean and having some sort of order in a dangerous lineup. It, 
you know, could could cost your life. You know yeah, I mean, in a, in a dangerous activity in the sport inherently is dangerous, you know, even when the waves are three feet. Right. It is that, that respect factor. And uh, I, I wish, you know, time travel was possible where you could go back right. into the ancient times and see that kind of dynamic. Right. And how... You know, and I know there were uh, certain spots or times that were for certain ali'i and, and, and different, you know, classes of folks right. uh, to surf. But just to uh, just to be be that, you know, yeah. fly yeah. on the wall. Well, one thing you would times. see, which is very cool, is right now in Hawaii, we, we're in uh, a season called Makahiki. Mm -hmm. So Lonoiko Makahiki. It's the celebration of this time of... Um, you know, winter season, which also coincides with different, you know, harvest and, and planting and, uh, and so forth. And up and riding, we have Billy going That's Billy back Camper. Oh, and he's coming out of that. Oh, yeah. He likes it. Gives the look back. And guarantee can hear the enthusiasm <laughs> of Kaido McGee because that backdoor wave stretched out so far down the line and there was only one way to get through that one and i was with a lot of speed right i love that because he you know he had to really he, he had to look down the line to see if that thing was going to line up for him and most of those waves are just closeouts but for him to read that and to hit the gas pedal and make it through all the way down toward off the wall uh Money. Here's the replay. The wave at first didn't form up to be that impressive. And then it hit that shelf and just started really opening up. And, you know, actually, in hindsight, looking at the replay, he wasn't really pumping or going that fast. He just set the perfect line. Right. So it, it wasn't actually all the speed required. It was just that perfect line to draw. And uh, he did the signature move we talked about, the backdoor shootout right there. Pulled in the back door and got shot out. And now he's getting towed out, right which on. is a nice I'm glad you said addition. that. Uh, explain what the shootout is. Going back door, <laughs> that's back door, that's shootout. Uh, shout out to my friend uh, uh, from Big Island, Shane Kuomo'o. Okay. He was telling me, hey. He texts me. You know, when you're on this, you get all kind of people texting yeah. you. He's like, hey, try to explain what is the shootout. So <laughs> right there, Shane, Allah. That was the case in point and the textbook definition. Yeah, so respect is important in a lineup and just having some sense of of structure. And uh, it is it goes back to old times. In fact, there's... Quite a few, we call them mo'olelo. Mo'olelo are uh, Hawaiian um, stories. We, in, in old Hawaii, there, there was no written language. I mean, you go back in everyone's history, and there's mm -hmm. a time where they were an oral culture rather mm -hmm. than a, a written one. And in, in Hawaii, they would memorize stories pretty extensively through chants. And so today, when you, when you hear, like, a, go to a hula show or something, there's usually a chanter, at least in the kahiko performances, you have a chanter who's usually on the floor with a big ipu, mm -hmm. uh, like a, a gourd drum. And they're chanting the story, and the dancer animates the story through the hula. So chanting was a big part of, of Hawaiian culture, and still is today. And, but that was the way that we preserved stories. And so there's many stories, chanting of surfers. And here we go, Billy oh, staying man. busy. Billy's about to get me chanting with my <laughs> ipu up here. <laughs> Exciting stuff. So in a lot of those chants, we do have stories or mo'olelo, a history of, of a lot of things that went on in old Hawaiian society. And surfing, here we go. Billy's replay, just a quick in and out, He's staying busy. Even does a little turn there, which we didn't see a lot of turns today. Yeah, it's one of those things where he knows it's not going to be for the benefit of his score. He just cannot help. Right. See a nice open face canvas, and you got to lay down a carve.
Right, so they're talking over there, explaining the judging criteria. Kainoa McGee is, we're getting word on what uh, scores we had recently from Billy. Yeah, that backdoor wave uh, possibly getting up there in into that double digit range. You know, we had uh, John come through, John Florence with a 10. We had uh, Balaram Stack. Did he get the final number on Balaram Stack's wave score? But they showed it, we showed it a couple times in succession with, with, with John's wave and, and uh, quite a bit deeper was Balaram. So I gotta think that that score could be over a 10. And then uh, we'll see, here's Kainoa with, with the top scores. So Balaram got an 11. And so the top three. There's John's 10.0. And then here's Balaram's 11. So that extra depth and quality of wave gets one point. Over uh, for John. This was one of uh, Kaimana's wave. This is not one of the, the top scores of the day. Just kind of mixed into our, our replay reel there. But um, and Billy sounds like you got a pretty good score for backdoor. So I think he said uh, and he Eli Olson. Eli Olson Eli also had nine five. that nine five. Which, in my opinion, that one could be pushed up even a little more too. But we'll see right. how these uh, tally up when all is said and done. There are. Um, different ways that they'll look at replays and make minor adjustments to scores uh, as the contest goes on. Um, and you're kind of always, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, what the next surfer does. So I like that feature of uh, adjusting the scores appropriately when you have better waves come in and, and, and more quality surfing happening. Here's Kai Lenny grabbing a rail, looking comfortable. And... Gets one on the board for right. his personal score and for the team. I want to thank everybody watching on Surfline, getting some, some messages of uh, folks that are watching. And it's really cool to be putting this event, you know, from this location basically out to the world. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, when I uh, take folks uh, for their experiences uh, surfing, mostly over at, at the Turtle Bay area, and, uh, and, and I try to begin each session with some sort of uh, historical context or somewhat of a, a short lesson, because, mm -hmm. you know, beforehand. And we have this great gallery where we show that classic picture of the Ahupua'a that we've all grown up with, oh, good, yeah. showing the... You know, the, the Mauka oh, and Mauka. the Kula and the Makai areas right. and everything, you know, coming off of that main waterway. And, um, but something I like to highlight are the uh, inventions or, or, you know, just in, in what we talked about earlier about surfing, how it takes so long to get pretty good as we watch Kala Grace take off on a nice, easy looking drop. And that one not going to provide too much for him. So he'll kick out early. But... I also kind of like to talk about the way that surfing came about is because Hawaiians had so much leisure time because they were so efficient in all their other main, you know, food and shelter practices that you needed. Right. The leisure time um, led to, you know, getting, having surfing. Right. And one thing that also is, makes them so efficient are the fish ponds. Right. And there's a really cool picture on that diagram of a fish pond. As we watch, uh, we'll stick to the action at hand with Makua Rothman. And on his, I love the airbrush that is attributing to Johnny Boy Gomes. Right. The last couple of years. I mean, I really miss seeing that board and the under-the-lip snaps that were <laughs> performed by JBG under the hood. back in the day. Under, under the, the hood. hood. Do something. Now, yeah. Now that Makua <laughs> is sporting those airbrushes it's like we're seeing a reincarnation of some sorts right yeah but the sure. importance of the fish ponds in my opinion you know especially down near the coast 
you know, just made it so you had a grab and go fish market. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong or maybe uh, set the record straight. But in my, I, I was always, so I see that helmet is really futuristic yeah, looking. Yeah, it is. That's like a Spartan helmet. Right. But were the fish ponds something that was unique to Hawaiian culture? Um, that's a great question. I mean, there there were there's evidence of uh, of some fish ponds elsewhere in the Pacific. Okay. A lot of them were natural. So, if you look at a, a lagoon of say, um, you know, at a the South Pacific island. Yeah, an atoll. Okay. So yeah. The nature of an island is that it sinks. Correct. And eventually, all that's left is the reef. And so you, you look at older islands, what they've all that's left is the reef. It, it, it usually there forms like a natural uh, a lagoon mm -hmm. in the middle. And those become kind of natural fish ponds. And so even in Hawaii, not all the fish ponds were man-made. Some of them were just natural mm. um, ponds that existed that, that you could kind of tweak to add a little bit here, kind of open it up to allow fish in and out. Uh, but Hawaii definitely had the, the, you know, the most elaborate man-made fish ponds. Mm -hmm. If you ever fly over the island of Moloka'i on the south side, you will just see fish pond after fish pond after fish mm. pond after fish pond mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and they're they're massive too they're not like small little ponds they're right you know a, like a few football fields yeah you know several football fields can fit into one of these and yes yeah, so it was really this ingenious system of 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 farming mm -hmm. and utilizing all the the resources of the aina and the river and and also the you know planting upstream and then diverting the streams into like these alwais are called these channels, but the, the alwais would then c come back into back to the main to flow, the main source yeah. that would help um, to foster this. Um, you know, the f the food source from above would come down and trickle down, and so the fish were interested the nutrients. in what was coming down the ah. river. So it appealed to the fish, and <laughs> and then uh, and it wasn't just in the fish ponds where the action was. But right on the outside of the fish pond, too, mm. you'd have bigger fish, like, wanting to come in and eat the smaller fish. Mm -hmm. And so it, it really was a really cool system of, of you know, aquaculture and farming. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you're right. Because of that, um, you know, abundance of food, it gave you, you know, leisure time. It also made Hawaii one of the more populated islands of all the Pacific mm. islands because they had... You know, they had figured out the system to, to feed the community so so much. And you look at any given society, that if they're doing well, like economically speaking, that's it allows for the arts to thrive. Arts, leisure, yeah. Right? We saw this in ancient Greece. Um, you know, it's the, especially in Athens, they had control of what was called the Delian League. Not all of the Greeks appreciated the fact that Athens had control of this uh, treasury basically on this island called Delos, hmm. but um, it enabled them to have. Ooh. Oh, that was Kai Lenny, and uh, just <clears throat> couldn't get his rail engaged. And it looked like there was a little bit of backwash maybe on the takeoff that affected the way he got to the bottom of that wave and, and uh, oh. let go of his board and uh, like did not uh, grab the rail. Yep broken board yeah, let's so see what, what what rocky's talking about here is this right rail there. couldn't engage and that little bump maybe a little backwash tossed him over yeah anytime you lose traction with your fins on these drops it's going to be a, a a recipe for something damaging to happen as we watch kala grace and oh, oh, oh wow what a shot into that barrel. Wow. Some carnage out there. Yeah. Fortunately, some, the helmet hopefully helping out there. Well, getting uh, some messages that the, the history and the entertainment, the combination is really uh put it making for a good show right so, on. i've been telling I, I think last time we did this i told our listeners 
Maybe if you watch the entire show, we'll give you some sort of uh, college credit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, getting a, you can send your donations into uh, <laughs> IsaiahWalker.com. No. And, um, you know, it's normally this costs how much it'd be what you want Honorary the semester. Hui degree. <laughs> Honorary the Hui backdoor shootout degree. There we go. Sorry, I don't know yeah, how I so got far, off on I'm hearing from uh, Sean, Connor, and Skip. You guys uh, hopefully doing well. Thank you for tuning in, checking it out. But, yeah, man, we've gone from uh, Hawaiian <laughs> fish ponds to Athens, Greece. <laughs> I love the connections. Well, I mean, it was just to, to accentuate the point that Athens is known as sort of this center of culture, right? Mm. Within, um, from s sculptures to architecture to paintings and just mosaics and so many different artistic expressions and that like golden age of the that greek period uh, is the result of this affluence that uh that particularly athens was able to to control um so in hawaii because of the ahupua system allowed for so much stability with with food and with that system that they had people had a lot of free time on their hands yeah and I, I think, you know, it's important to to note that oftentimes, you know, free time can be more valuable, I think, than wealth. Right. Yeah. The time versus money, uh, you know, thing where you you can't get, ever get that time back. You know, there might be another day to, to make another dollar. But, man, the time that you get to do a certain thing is is uh, never going to be the same. Um Oh. Makua on screen paddling for something. He's got his eye on this wave here. You can see the the amplification and the paddle strokes and looking at backdoor with oh. a huge late drop, but another one that he had to focus so hard on making the drop that there was no other time to really set the rail and do everything else you need to do to get in the barrel as we watch Billy Kemper. Billy's got it dialed right now. He's in the zone, as we say in sports. Yeah. He's also, you know, in rhythm. Uh, oftentimes we'll call it like wave magnet. Yeah. Sometimes if the ocean just gravitates towards you, and that's what we're seeing Billy right here. He's caught so many good waves, getting yet another barrel in this heat. See some of the technical operating uh, by Hawaiian Water Patrol using that reverse lever in the surf to control your breaks and forwards and backwards. But look how late that drop was and took all his focus and attention just to make the drop that the barrel kind of snuck away from him and ran on down the line. But it's hard to get at bottom turn in when you're on your tippy toes. You know, the guy that did it the best rode that same kind of color board. Yeah. You know, being able to airdrop and still bottom turn was uh, the forte of that surfer tributed by Makua's airbrush, Johnny Boy Gomes. But, man, it is hard to get your rail set yep. when your feet are either detached <laughs> or <laughs> barely touching the board. Ooh. That feeling of weightli weightlessness. Yeah, too. And, and, and you know, and that's it's just one that thing. moment of like, am I going to make this drop? It's, or am it's I such a vulnerable gonna... feeling, man. It, it gives you butterflies just thinking about yeah. it. There's the scene on the beach right there, and some of those fixed landmarks we've been talking about for positioning and lining up with a certain house or a porch. And here's Billy Kemper live action, oh. letting go, and then re grabbing, oh. Oh, and oh, then oh. coming out. <laughs> And almost tried to body surf back into it, but I'll consider that a make. You know, at the shootout, their definition of riding out, I think, is a little different. So I think we would call that a make, too. So what a great stall. And then the timing to let go and then to re-grab. I mean, all that happens in such fractions of seconds. Right. Here well, we are. We're at the, the small the small Volcom house. Normally, we in past years, we've been up on the balcony, which was great. Mm. for the view and everything mm. but we felt a little detached here i feel like more ground level right. and we bring the viewers like down to the you know 
where we get people so, walking by us right okay. here, and we can hear Kainoa We're nice courtside. and prominent. We're super courtside, and, and I like this view or this position, I think, a little better than being uh, detached up on the second or third floor because, uh, you know, it brings you a little more into the action here. Right. Yeah, so those are the two Volcom houses, A and B. Yep. And uh, Makua up in riding. See if he can come out of that. And he does. Wow. Maybe after his heat, we can get him into the, the rotation up here. Right. I know he did some. He's done some good work recently. Analyzing uh, during yeah. the Haleiwa contest. There's the replay. Backdooring that. And then gets shoot out right there. That was a good. I mean, it was a smaller wave, but it was a deep and a long barrel, so and it traveled. And had a couple of those chandeliers that are not easy to negotiate. Right. So being able to, to stick with it and, you know, kind of basically get your legs and feet set in the board to not knock you off, mm. those chandeliers can be sometimes tough to, to break through, but he did had no problem on that one. Right. Seems like the the action comes in waves of flurries, right? I right. Mean, of course, waves because that's what we're <laughs> riding today. But was that pun intended? Or not? <laughs> but, but it's it does. interesting. It Seems like all the heats, like there's a lot of, like maybe waves that aren't good, and then all of a sudden, within a period of like five minutes, like we've seen in the last five minutes, just a lot of waves being ridden. Yeah, Makua was uh, paddling out at back door, barely made it under that one and back out but the Kala Grace now kind of in the position for this one and Kala's going to look this one over and say no thank you wow. So I got a message here from Uncle Chuck Andres, a legendary surfer and shaper on oh, the man. North Shore over here. Really cool guy. He says, the only mainland I know is Moku Okiave, the big island. <laughs> says, so maybe use continent. <laughs> uh, but anyway, the, yeah. The well, United States continent. Yeah. Mahalo, Uncle Chuck. Stateside. Stateside. But, yeah, there, there's definitely uh, been a flurry of action in this last few minutes where Billy and Makua seem like they've just been, you know, on a little bit of a roll here. We'll see if Kai can get back out. Kai Lenny's on his backup board now. He broke his board uh, uh, earlier in the heat. And, uh, and Kala Grace has a couple of waves, but, you know, I think he's been really ultra selective in, in looking for that right pipeline wave. We'll see if he gets himself into the mix because there's only a few minutes remaining. I see Team Japan, who's coming up next uh, in the lineup right now, waiting their turn. And all of our surfers are quite far over towards that back door section. And these sets of waves right here are going to kind of all be straight handers and they're not going to even look twice at these waves knowing that it was that northwest combination that we're creating those long walls that are basically unmakeable in either direction but back to that uh feeling of the, the late drop you know and watching makua's wave and that's something that all surfers at any level at any surf break can relate to yeah. and you know, it's just one of those things that it's fun to point out. You know, of course, these are elite surfing, a, a very elite surf break. But, you know, and everything is amplified in as far as like the size of the waves, the feelings and everything. But as, you know, your everyday surfer that, you know, is uh, either, you know, at uh, in San Clemente somewhere or somewhere on the East Coast or, you know, what have you. You do get those moments of, and we talked about the vulnerability, and that there's nothing like being late on a wave <laughs> and having that airdrop feeling, no matter if it's two feet, you know, or, or bigger. But what a, 
yeah. a correlation to, you know, relate to. Right. And um, we've but all been there as surfers. Some, I mean, is this Billy going for this one? Oh, my goodness. And Billy almost got sucked over the falls in one of the most unfashionable ways possible. Not even riding a wave, but he was able to hold on. I guarantee he was scrapping to not get sucked over as Kai Lenny sets the rail nicely, lets go, and poses in the pit. And hacks one off the top right in front of our jet ski camera. Back to our, our beach cam. And just a couple minutes remaining, he's going to probably ride this one to the beach. I don't know if many have made this correlation with style, but Kyleni has a little Kelly Slater kind of flow to him. Just the arms. The and that's another thing we talked about how you could see. Here we go. Replay drops down, tries to stall. That's just his wave in. But just as a wave is has its own kind of identity, Surfers do, too. And if you're a surfer and you see someone on a wave, you recognize, oh, that's who this person is, or that person sort of resembles this person. It's your own right. stamp or mark. Well, that's the end of that heat. Man, there's a lot of backwash on that right there. You're just seeing the contour of, of that approaching wave being affected by all that reverb that's coming off the beach. But checking out this heat recap of the Hui Wax team Billy Kemper definitely felt like uh, he was in the, the right place more often of the time, but Makua Rothman was also getting his share of backdoor barrels. But Billy got this one that was probably the wave of the heat right there that enabled him to get a big reaction from the crowd and a good score. He made it work at Pipeline as well, also putting... Some good maneuvers on his backhand, but was in the zone, got back-to-back -back barrels, lefts, rights, complete heat for Billy Kemper. He did it all. Yeah, he ended up with 19 total points as far as their top two waves in that heat. Wow. A 9 and a 10. So we'll be right back with our next heat, Team Japan, coming up next. Don't go anywhere. More shootout coming your way.
Welcome back to the Hui Backdoor Shootout. I'm Isaiah Walker with Ed Ezra Rodriguez. Welcome We're here, back, gang. Right here at the Volcom House on the beach at Pipeline. We've seen some amazing surfing action so far throughout the morning and lots of cool scores, some 10 point rides, even one 11 point ride. So right now we have live action here on this pipe drainer from Team Japan. Team Hui Japan. Spit out right after the horn blew. Wakita, good stuff. You guys all know Wakita, Dahui Wax, uh, Japan rider, and this is Team Dahui Japan. Sinpei Horiguchi, Taichi Wakita, Gai Sato, Daiki, Matsunaga, and Ryu Itu. Ito, unreal. Amazing. That was a sick one. First wave of the heat and right off the bat what a know, way to start a heat i mean yeah how's that last heat you guys watched of dahui wax with billy and makua oh yeah and the others yep and kai lenny and they were like catching so many waves especially it seemed like uh billy was wave magna that he just did you see those getting waves barrels up? The ocean is forever changing, but right. uh, the way that A-frame came into Billy, I mean, that was just textbook bad Billy at backdoor. Yeah, yeah I love that was his, a good one. His style and his swag, real steezy, comes out of the barrel. Super steez. Flying yeah. out of that backside one, that was really admirable. I've seen a lot of competitors look at that like, wow, this heat just turned on. Yeah. It just takes a breath of wind and some action. <laughs> so that wave, I believe, was Taichi Wakita which is the son of the usual Wakita that oh, we Oh, that's about. right. And yeah. uh, a lot of pipe surfers talk about this guy's father. That guy surfs deep in a, in a bowl of its own, right. kind of like a lot of the, some of the pipe surfers, like, you know, I'll throw one out there. Randall Paulson sit, used to sit super deep over at pipe. Rocky knows him really good. And Wakita, the dad, used to sit super deep. And they're really hard waves to make. Right. And uh, we'll have to wait to confirm. I don't know if this is junior or senior, but the Wakita family is definitely represented well here on North Shore. Even uh, Sarah Wakita, one of the daughters, is yes. also a professional surfer. And we saw her a lot um, at Haleiwa this last event and so forth. So the Wakita family, it's kind of cool how here on the North Shore and, and even in other places in the surf community that you have these family of surfers, right? Yeah. That, that, that seem to all have uh, a, a talent within just yep. one particular yep. nuclear family. There's a bunch of different legacies, and we're all one big ohana, you know, the big surfers union. And we got action out the back. As you can see, our four surfers, Team Dahui Japan, paddling out um, from live visual action here at on the balcony. They're paddling out because there is another one in the back, so... They're trying to get in position. Thank you again, Pupakea Grill, one of our sponsors. That was unreal. You, right after this heat, Isaiah, you're ready to grind. Yeah. But thank you. Keiki Bungalows, Dahui Wax, Autumn Corporation, Sinaloa. Yep, Sinaloa. Actually, interesting, we got a bag of Sinaloa chips here. I didn't realize they're surfboard shaped. So you have a I dug that. They even, I don't know if this is uh, a bodyboard. Uh, Mike Stewart bodyboard or a bully board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they definitely look cool, made out right. of chips here. Oh, there's the chips. They're surfboard Thank you. Shape. One of our sponsors <laughs> this year. Along with Body Armor and Kona Brewing, Hawaii, Monster Energy, one of the best energy drinks around. Why drink something that gives you wings when you can smash like a monster? <laughs> Thank you, Keala Iwohi, and Defend Hawaii in collaboration with us this year. Chris and the crew, Oahu Golf Apparel. Thank you very much. We are styling today in our golf apparel these, hats these and shirts. shirts. Like I mean, these lightest shirts. Lightest shirt I've ever worn. Honestly, Isaiah, you're a full-on surfer. I would surf in this thing. It you know what I mean? Maybe like summertime, a, aloha shirt, yeah, catch that, a wave like into a, Duke's Waikiki. We're also, this is in memory of Duke Kahanamoku and uh, something that you're going to give us a lot of education about throughout the event. Isaiah, profession, pr Professor Isaiah Walker, always giving us insight and mana'o about our culture and our prestige I Hawaiian islands. 
And yeah. good job on that Duke, Duke film. That was uh, really good. Yeah, Waterman, check it out. It's a really good film. Uh, recently, has gone to different um, you know, film festivals. Good job so on that, guys. Yeah. A lot of stuff that, um, I'm a, you know, as a surfer, a lot of us are uh, fans of Duke Kahanamoku. But uh, some of the stuff you guys touched on, I had no idea. It was really heartfelt and uh, a tearjerker for sure. Right. For a man to hold everything in his heart is... I mean, right. very humbling. Ha ha ha, ha as, I would say, yeah. as you say. Yeah, Duke, amazing legacy. I mean, he's often referred to as the father of modern day surfing. Uh, also, some call him the Moho. Uh, Moho is like the champion and kind of cool. He teamed up with um, Cliff Capono and Daniel Kaika Ito and some others. Uh, they put together this short film called Moho. Oh, okay. And, and uh, we kind of showed, uh, it's, a, it's a short animated film clip. Yeah. And does a really good job of talking about Duke as our champion, as a Hawaiian moho, our champion. So check that out as well. It's available online. Wow, I just heard our uh, beach announcer, Kaino McGee, off the wall, absolutely blew its guts all over the place. And there goes Backdoor running off into off the wall left. Woo, we got some surf, Isaiah, today. Yeah. Yeah, so the father of modern-day surfing, we're celebrating him mm -hmm. today, Duke Hanamoku, uh, born in 1890, and he was named Duke after his father, so his dad was also named Duke Hanamoku, but um, actually his father was named after Princess uh, Queen Victoria's son, who is the Duke of Edinburgh. Oh, so okay. interestingly, when Duke's father, Duke Sr., was born, the Duke of Edinburgh came into Honolulu and Bernice Pawahi Bishop, who in Hawaii we know her as the founder of the Kamehameha Schools. So she had a relationship with them. It's interesting how the, uh, the British crown and the British monarchy had a really close relationship with, the, with Hawaii, starting with Hawaii's first monarch, King Kamehameha the first, or Paia. So, so, yeah, so it's interesting, this relationship between those and, and even that Duke Hanamoku himself, his namesake, comes from a British royal. Interesting, interesting. It, yeah, and so his, you know, his dad was named Stuff we're that. not taught or Look learned. Who's this, this Isaiah? Yeah. Whoa, oh. very dangerous straight now into the pipe depths. Team Japan going for it, Isaiah. Going for it. Look at that. Late drop. We talked earlier Just about Just missed your getting under the hood. Actually a smart decision. He might have been guillotined. We got the best Hawaiian water patrol out there. Here's a paddle. But surfers and their split second oh. decisions. Was that a Hanaho ride for the, fir the guy that went down? Because back-to-back -back waves oh. at pipe. guys are it definitely like reaching doing deep. the cockroach on the bottom of the wave there it's really frightening when you when he fell he's laying on his back and then you all you can see from there is just looking oh, up. oh scary on, place to be cockroaching on his back watching the that's wave. exactly what turtle tells you don't be down <laughs> uh, we're at the classic bonsai pipeline at the hui backdoor shootout starting off the new year in high fashion Beautiful pipeline is a little bit brackish today, but it is offering its thing. Um, before we go too far, where do I find that animation, Duke? The yeah, it's online, uh, okay. moho.com. I can't say that I've seen it, but that sounds yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's really cool, and it came out right um, when the Olympics was happening in Japan. And it was just a celebration of, of Duke as, a, as an Olympian and as a champion. And... Um, yeah, Cliff Capono is a doctor also. Oh, uh, very another, good surfer as well. PhD, yes. pretty cool, also from Hilo. Yeah. And so he worked together with a team of other folks that um, put together that, that film. Good thing, Cliff Capono, yes. Yeah, so Duke Hanamoku, born in 1890, named after his dad, Duke Sr. But most people called him Pao. Pao is his his middle name but it's also his family's his mom's side of his maternal side of his family their last name so the Paoa clan lived in Waikiki the Kahanamoku's lived in town that's where he was born his dad was a sheriff and other things but then after the overthrow and maybe 
I mean, I'm guessing maybe because of the, you know, what was going on in Honolulu was maybe a bit much to handle for yeah. the family. They all went and, and sp spent more time with the Pa'oa side of the family, living in the beach in Waikiki, and then the ocean became that respite for them. Um, you know, we know that Duke was an Olympian, a swimmer, but, he, you know, he wasn't the only Olympian uh, in his family, brothers that swam in the Olympics as well. So very talented, athletic uh, family. We're talking about families here today mm -hmm. and how you have a lot of them competing on the same level. And likewise, Duke's family was, uh, was also a group of surfers. The same and swimmers, thing, yeah. Same thing. Just different times. Yeah. Duke, such a humbling, awesome man. Yeah, so Waterman is a pretty cool film um, that really tells the story of Duke and his it does. life. And it does, a, it does a good job of explaining, like, how, you know, Duke and how he got some pushed struggles. out. Oh, big yeah. kind of struggles. I mean, you know, and uh, with all the struggles going on today, it's a great film to watch because, you know, things were happening back then, and then you can translate them to now and just, you know, everything piece it together the bigger story of what goes on here in the islands. Right. And the uh, aloha that he had was very profound, and he had a, had a way about him to, that uh, everyone really loved him, which is interesting because he's a very soft-spoken, yeah. uh, dare I say, shy person. And it's interesting, in, the, in a surf community, there's some people that we see as larger than life. Duke is one of them. Eddie Aikau is another one. Mm -hmm. But both Duke and Eddie were... You know, they, they were very soft-spoken people. I mentioned the word ha'a, mm -hmm. ha'a. They're very humble. Yeah. They're humble, respectful. Um, so they weren't boisterous at all, but their surfing did the talking. Yeah, but they also spectated a lot. Things would bother them in their, in their island, and they just held it deep right. within their heart, which is a very something we don't see nowadays. Um, yeah, so it's great to be Two very honored. interesting men, and that's, that's great. A uh, company like this, Dahui, celebrating Duke right. at a really high level Certainly. here at Pipeline. Yeah, it was really cool to see, too, you know, that with the Olympics having surfing in it and with Carissa winning gold for the, on the women's side and being from Hawaii, uh, kind of cool to revisit that history. I mean... It, it's interesting we we talk about duke as if we know him but yes in, in reality you know he he was gone before mm -hmm. most of us were born um you know he's born in 1890 uh and yet because he was such an influential person especially on the surfing world he's so relevant and relatable yeah that we still feel this kind of attachment to him and i and i appreciate like yeah. you're saying ezra that the hui backdoor shootout is continuing his name and his memory and his legacy you know by sharing stories about him yeah he's he's a god now a surf god now i knew and it's just you know as years go on we you know as students of surf and the culture and stuff we learn more from people like you i mean there's so much about duke Very you know, and, and interestingly, uh, you know, these guys, the early Beach Boys and stuff, uh, they didn't only surf in Waikiki. And I think that's an important point to make. Oftentimes people think that, you know, the Waikiki Beach Boys and guys like Duke Hanamoku only, you know, experienced surfing. In I Waikiki. heard the waves were better. They're right. Way outside. But they, they traveled. I mean, Duke would definitely come around to this side. They mm -hmm. surfed in uh, Ali'i Beach, Haleiwa quite a bit. Um, so... So for sure, Duke. Have ventured. you got to see any footage of that and stuff like There's, that, or is that I way seen too? Footage. These are just from um, the stories. What stories have told from the Beach Boys? Rabbit Kid Kai talked a lot about it. In fact, that how he would come out. Oh, I love to the me North some Shore. Rabbit. Go yeah. play on the freeway, kids. You guys are bothering me. <laughs> he would run all the contests when I was a kid. You remember Rabbit Rocky? Uncle Rabbit. <laughs> Uncle Rabbit. But he grew up with those guys with the Kahanamokus mm -hmm. and. He told a lot of stories about how they would surf on, you mm -hmm. know, all over, not just in one. I loved it. Uncle Rabbit was very competitive guy right. too. Even when he got to the, 
the senior grandmasters, him and um, Makalena would just be battling it out. I mean, serious kind. Right. And, you know, Rabbit had, um, you know, come in growing up around the Beach Boys of Waikiki because I am from town. Um, Rabbit's brother, Uncle Jamo, was a legend to right. me, man. Exactly. I mean, almost to where we would joke, hey, what, you're getting overshadowed by Rabbit. Rabbit's everywhere, but what about Uncle Jamma? Right. Uncle Jamma was the kind of guy, if you were out of high school and you were by the snack bar and it was a Monday morning, you better watch out for him. You know what I mean? Like, that was old school beach boy. You're going to get an open hand slap. You know what I mean? There was discipline still there. What you're not doing in school, he'd follow you, oh. you know? Which is interesting because most of those guys probably dropped out of school themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, like once they're adults, it's like, hey, right, they're not gotta, doing like me. Yeah, yeah, they're not yeah. going to do like me. Right. And, you know, it's, it's cool, you know, just seeing generations, you know, North Shore, South Shore, West Side, all grow up together. It's such a great collaboration. Right. East Side. You're from the East Side. You have some amazing spots, but. A lot no, of people no don't waves, mention out no there. It's all on, on the hush. Side. Yeah. No more, no more. <laughs> so we have Team Japan, Team Dahui Japan. Um, David Stan, who's one of the founders of Dahui. Yes. He and, remaining, you know, longtime water. pipeline surfer. Um, Did he make it over this year? I saw him the other day. I okay, know, good. I didn't see him today, but I saw him surfing the other day. And um, he's a legendary football player and a oh, football coach. Amazing. He's one of those guys you wouldn't want to get a slap oh, from and, either. Oh, and, and ran uh, one of those spots with your bro brother out on, I mean, with his brother out on the east side. One right, of those spots right. I will not mention. <laughs> These guys would surf there every day. Um, but he spent a lot of time in Japan. Yes. So he lives there coaching mm -hmm. professional football in Japan. And so I think a lot of these guys are maybe the result of under his relationships, wing, yeah, because they, they go Uncle surfing David. with Uncle when they're up there, right. yeah. And you can tell Team Japan's frothing at the bit. The ocean calmed down a little bit. It's not slabbing all over the place. They're also spread out, taking all four seating areas, as you can see on the screen. Mm. One out, three in. You know, I mentioned earlier in the uh, in the monarchy period, we had relationships with um, the British. We also had some interesting brief moment with relationship with Japan as well. So King okay. David Kalakaua was king of Hawaii in the 1880s and um, he had a very interesting approach to um, to the yep, monarchy good. and to, to preserving the sovereignty of, of the Hawaiian kingdom. And one of them was reaching out to the international community to try and forge these relationships because he, he saw that the United States was becoming a bit too influential in, in Hawaii's politics and in Hawaii's economy. Oh, interesting. Uh, particularly with the sugar industry. Okay. So he started, like, he was one of the first uh, monarchs to tour the entire world. So he went on this world tour uh, where he visited all these different countries, and one of those countries was Japan. And he was interested in, in uh, forging a relationship with, the, you know, the Japanese um, empire and with the uh, with the Hawaiian kingdom and one of his plans was actually that he wanted to marry one of his nephews to uh, a royal member of the the Japanese family and that person was uh, Prince Jonah Kuhio who oh. was a surfer and so he sent Kuhio to Japan for for a year in, in many ways with a, a, a hopes of first of all continuing that relationship between Japan and, and the Hawaiian kingdom. So interesting. And also he hoped that he would marry a Japanese uh, princess. Uh, Kuhio wow, didn't. Wow, stuff was, you don't even yeah. like, know. And yeah. Kuhio ended up not marrying a Japanese girl. He ended up marrying uh, a Hawaiian named Kahanu uh, hmm. later. And uh, But when that didn't work out, they, Kalakawa hoped, well, maybe my niece then, so Princess Kaiolani, he also hoped to arrange a marriage between like the prince of Japan and the hmm. princess of Hawaii, that marriage didn't happen either. Uh, this is the first king, too, right? Thi the this is King Kalakau. Okay. He's the last king of Hawaii, and um, so, so yeah, interesting relationships between Japan and Hawaii. And I, you know, oftentimes you only hear about the bad story of like you know Japan. Yeah, you bombing don't get Pearl to Harbor. hear this story. Yeah, but there's a lot of that other, was all after. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of other relationships. Here's a sick wave coming in, very wow. deep. Oh my goodness, let's see if he packs this one. 
Goes for wow. the closeout. And that was an early chandelier on top of him. I heard you and Rocky talking earlier. There was a heat that guys were busting out of clampers and chandeliers, but he ran straight into one. <laughs> Just a split second. Two behind. Uh, it takes a lot of courage too, oh, to pack a barrel that you know has no exit, but you're going to go oh, in anyway. Oh, man. Here's a I don't know. Paddling in, I don't even know if he knew there was no exit. He was just going to go for the gusto. Nice pump, and then that thing clamped a little way earlier than I thought. Yep, I believe we have one broken board so far. Um, that was this morning. I think Kai Lenny snapped the board also in this last heat. Oh, he did? Yeah. Although I've seen Kai Lenny's uh, surfboard collection, and oh. he has a lot of backups. I've seen that nice wave he didn't come out of, and uh, he was flying. Uh, he made a good slowdown. Right. To almost getting spit out. Also, Japan, after World War II, um, there's a, there's a lot of, I think, respect and appreciation for Hawaiian culture in Japan. You see a lot of hula Yes, halo. I wanted to ask that, yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't know if some of that is just a, a sense of kind of restitution, maybe, of, of Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. or if it's just there's a lot of similarity and commonality between some of the cultures of, of respect and right. um, some of those traditions of family and a variety of things that are, are, are similar in in Hawaii and Japan, but Japan definitely has this appreciation for Hawaiian culture. We see, I do, with, and I see that hula too. Uh, uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I mean, there's even some hula halals that come to Hawaii. For I mean, the premier hula competition is in Hilo, and it's called the Merry Monarch mm -hmm. Festival, dedicated to um, King David Kalakaua, and it's in the Edith Kanaka Ole um, Auditorium there, and You'll have groups from uh, Halal from Japan that will come and, and participate in there as well. So it's cool to have Japan in this event, Team Japan, uh, the Hui Japan, and that there is a branch of the Hui in Japan. Yep. And as mentioning earlier, David Stant certainly has a, I think, has a hand in that. Yep, the Hui Japan got their style and swagger going on up there. And so awesome to see them in. And at the last backdoor shootout, our top scoring wave went to a Japanese national, Keito Matsuoka. Got a 12 oh, point gotcha. ride. That was an amazing wave. I, I, I still am blown away by the, the way that the, he was spit out of that thing. The, the spit on that barrel was just, I mean, the kind so of spit memorable. to knock just you like, off. I swear the spit flew all the way down the beach to Pupukea or something. It was so heavy. Wow. Yeah, in this uh, Dahui Japan heat, I definitely recognize all these names. They've definitely been putting in their time, making their mark. You know, to be in Dahui backdoor shootout, definitely got to be a pipeline specialist. There isn't no like, oh, can I get in? <laughs> it's all real guys, right. real time. And uh, in this heat, Dahui Japan got off to... You know, first wave, blown out of the first wave, right. good stuff. So, again, we have on the list here Shinpei Horiguchi, Taichi Wakita, Gai Sato, Daiki Matsunaga, and Rai, Rairu Ito. You know, but even though this heat is slow, Kaino Megi just said 3660 on the clock. That's like a whole nother heat, and here we go. Oh, Taichi. Taichi going to pull up underneath the hood. Oh. As he grabs and slows down. Oh, great water angle that was, huh, Isaiah? Yeah. Good in job and out for Tai Chi. Larry Haynes getting that shot in the barrel. There's the Spartan helmet. Yep, he's got a little yellow there on his wetsuit, but this is a jersey list contest, and you are watching Team Dahui Japan. You can see how he's really trying to slow down in that barrel. Uh, he did get under the cover, but not for, uh, you know, an extended amount of time. So I don't know if that'll be up in the top four waves, but it was still a really good ride and a good wave that they'll chalk up into their team yeah, score. But definitely he wasn't about to let that ride go. I mean, they've been sitting for a little bit. 
And that is uh, nerve-wracking, even though you are in a team event. Everybody wants to get on the scoreboard. These guys are all heavy competitors, do it all year long. Because if you're a pipeline surfer, I mean, if you guys know the pipeline pecking order, <laughs> it's right. like uh, you got to be on it. You got to want it. You got to wake up wanting it. And you got to be ready. Right. So we're commemorating Duke Hanamoku at this event. Uh, we talked earlier, Ezra, about yes. how um, they formed the Hui Nalu Club. Yes. Which is different from the Hui Ohe'e Nalu, even though they have some similarities. And that was, you know, 1906, 1907, they were kind of just grouped together, but they officially were a formed club in 1911. And as I mentioned earlier, they needed that uh, official club in order to get Duke qualified for the Olympics. And which was in 1912. So in 1911, Duke actually shatters the world record of the 100-meter freestyle in Honolulu Harbor. Huh. So then there's somebody that's there that's, um, you know, th that's a, a swimmer, and he's familiar with, with swim racing and so forth, and he clocked, he timed Duke and was just couldn't believe that this, you know, this Hawaiian guy who had no formal training in swimming had broken the world record of swimming. Here's a wave rider. What a beautiful angle takeoff into this pipe pit. Ooh, I almost thought he was going to come out, Isaiah. He was going that fast. You get these clamps on the end that make it a little more challenging. But to the way get he through. took off to get to that point, if he did a drawn out bottom turn, no go. That was a good splice into the tube. Right. Just too bad he didn't get out of that pincher. There's that angle you're talking about where yeah. you really lean heavy on the toes. He went off of that right peak almost. It, it was going right, and yep, he just hooded it. Chip shotted him in there, but Good stuff. unfortunately clamped. So when this guy discovered Duke with his stopwatch in Honolulu Harbor, baffled out of his mind that this giant Hawaiian could swim so well, mm. um, Duke had the club at the time, but what? After, you know, just in, in human nature, when you see something like that, it's just like he deserves it. Did right. something like that give way for Duke? Yeah, so at first, well, they formed the club after he, you know, that, uh, this guy timed him because he said, look, you got you to gotta compete on, the, on this larger level to try yeah. and get to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that easy. You know, for Duke, there are a lot of hurdles. Like I said, there wasn't a club that would allow him to swim for them, mm -hmm. so they made their own. They were making a long face thing for him not to compete, huh? Right. And then, well, and then they also, um, you know, they didn't, the AAU didn't really believe that this was authentic, right? They were like, how could this guy s swim that fast? But eventually, you know, there were a lot of people who did support Duke and that were encouraging. And when he did finally get up, uh, to the mainland and uh, excuse me to the continent the mm -hmm. state side he ended up um you know qualifying and proving himself and that's when you know everybody realized like wow this is the real deal you know like this um this guy's amazing and what really helped is everywhere he went to go and swim uh he he surfed right and so in I many ways yeah. he became like this poster child for hawaii and for surfing and he took surfing to you know, the East Coast, to, to New Jersey, to um, Australia, to New Zealand. And, and right that was the, the introduction, yeah? Like the biggest introduction. Right. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Some backdoor. Ooh. Always admire a goofy footer at backdoor. <laughs> it's now, not easy. Now, in California, there, there were uh, other Hawaiians that went surfing there previous. So in 1885, 1886, Prince Jonah Kuhio and his brother David and Edward Kawananakoa were at school in that area and they surfed uh, in Santa Cruz. Here's that wave that we just saw of Tai Chi. This is what's called the pencil dive. Now, some people may think, why yes, did he just penetrate, fall? penetrate so you don't, you don't really want to skip and skate. Right. I, I still remember that wipeout a few years back of Cole Christensen coming in from uh, second, third reef. He fell down and skipped and slid and the foam ball took him. And when you don't penetrate, whew, I mean. Right. Very that, scary. That pencil dive allows you to, like you say, penetrate the wave and get deeper underwater so the wave goes over yes. you rather than but through But I've you. seen the late pencil dive, too, where it's like, right. yeah, we're, we're dealing with, uh, there, there's some moments where there's just a foot of, white, um, foot of water, like, uh, 
uh, Volcom's heat earlier, Ballarm stacks, right. Wave, that thing had no water on the reef. Yeah, so Duke Hanamoku, um, he wasn't the first to surf in California. That goes to those three Hawaiians that were living in Santa Cruz, 1885, went surfing in- uh, 1885, you say? 1885, okay. um, surfing in Santa Cruz. Um, we also had some others that were, um, you know, that were, that were surfing in, in California, but when Duke went around the world, he took surfing with him to places like Australia, um, really cool story, and you can see it in the film as well, where he, where he took this young woman uh, tandem surfing in Australia, and she becomes kind of the, the, f the first to, um, to kind of carry on Duke's legacy. And is that when the way? world first seen tandem surfing as well? Yeah. Wow. Well, at least in Australia, because uh, tandem surfing was a, a thing in Hawaii, especially in Waikiki. Oh yeah, it's yeah. it's big too when we're at Uncle Buffalo's. You know, right. you got some of the best tandem surfers up west. So yeah, so. So Duke, you know, went to New Zealand, went to Australia, went all over and, and took surfing with him. And because of that, kind of the mystique of this man who could walk on water, there was this kind of aura about him that was so mysterious yeah. and so different and you so You think cool. Uncle Duke surfed Raglan left? Uh, I, possibly. Possibly. Yeah. I know he was in New Zealand, and it was kind of cool, the stories of him in New Zealand, because the Maori pr people of the, of, of New Zealand are Love basically them. cousins to the Hawaiians. Yes. Right? So, I mean, they're called Tanata Maori. Hawaiians are called Kanaka Maori. Mm -hmm. So essentially the same, you know, Very close, words. Yeah. And um, anyway, so there was a kind of a kinship between the, the indigenous Maori people and Duke as a native Hawaiian. They're getting it on the head, Isaiah. Clean up set. Oh, no. Wow. I didn't think that they were that far inside looking at the screen, looking off, off the balcony. And oh. now look at that little bit missed opportunities for Team Dahui Japan. But mind you, we're probably in 28 minutes. You still have a full heat of competition. I'm you always baffled when, we, when I come and watch the pipeline, on, on, especially when I'm you know, here at the backdoor shootout because we spend all day watching the waves. Mm -hmm. And I, one of the things that I, that I take from being here on the beach and especially when it's like this size 10 12 foot there really isn't much of a channel no. or or an exit uh, or even a defined peak and no. you know if you're if you're thinking oh, i'll just go sit on the shoulder at pipe when it's yeah. 10 12 feet good luck you're gonna I get watch caught inside. all my favorite surfers and they all do something a little bit similar but they're all different in their preparation you know i mean i see people paddling out over there but it's weird to watch the florence brothers when they're playing in some heavy surf, it's like, how did he get a football field past that whole rip section? I mean, there there is definite little secret hidden spots about pipeline and the way it circulates. Look at this beautiful shot. You can see. Um, because like I was telling Rock earlier, you know, an average Joe could get right there and boom, you're going to Rockies. I'm sorry, you're going to Rockies. Right. And it's good that you have some of the best watermen over here because, you know, you don't just got the lifeguards looking at you. You got a hundred frothy surfer eyes also watching you. You know right. what I mean? And everybody watches out for everyone. Oh, it is cool. You talk about uh, ocean safety. and um, mm -hmm. Duke Onomoku was one of the pioneers in ocean lifeguard rescues. Yep. And taught people how to, to do ocean rescues. He was the first person to use a surfboard. Well... I don't mean to say the first person, but Ooh, this is rich history. There's right stories here. of him in Newport Beach saving many lives of individuals who their their boat capsized off the coast, and the and waves he's were just massive. Happens to be there, and he saved all these people's lives. And in, in the film Waterman, it does a, one of my favorite parts of the film. It, it it talks about that part of the story where he nobody else could have uh, saved that many lives and fortunately he was on the beach and was able to do that here's a wave coming up nice drop oh. in Comes beautiful the bottom curtain. turn oh. into that washing machine barrel oh no wow props to him Isaiah it looked like he almost got the rail in the face oh you got Kaino McGee frothed that was a hard pipe barrel to get out of nice and milky see the replay here team japan 
Nope, and he made it happen. Look at that, stand up tall, love that part, then crouches down low, and oh, the board just oh, flips on him. That doggy door, though, that he came out of. His live action. Taichi. Beautiful wave, just a second or two right behind that curtain. Apologies, it's hard um, because there's no jerseys. We don't know exactly every whose name is what, and it's yeah, just so called don't that mind Taichi. Us. We just kind of wait. So earlier, I was calling um, our athlete with the yellow on Taichi, but Kainoa corrected. I think this is Taichi Wakita. So okay, my gotcha. apologies to to our athletes here, but <laughs> I think uh, we might have a broken board, so someone's getting an exchange. Team Dahui Japan getting up on the board. Guys are going to definitely have to elevate after Team Florence and Team um, Dahui Wax put some definite scores on the board today. Also setting the bar this morning, our Peruvian Tubos team. Good job to them. It's always nervous being the first heat. I right. think they they weren't all here as a team this morning. Right. And I heard Uncle, where's the team? Where are they where's at? the team? And they went out there in high fashion and, and right. got the job done. Yeah, it was, and it was tricky this morning because still had a little morning sickness to it. It was. And there was a lot of big rollers from the outer reefs. Because the morning. All right, the judges are asking for a replay of the last wave. Let's get a replay of that beauty. Thanks to Sultan Air, always on it. Something about the Dahui backdoor shootout is we'll just keep replaying it. These guys aren't going to, they're going to give these athletes the exact score. They're going to go over and over, wave comparison, how slabby was it, how deep was it, technique. You know, of course, speed, power, and flow comes into it, too. But this is an all-barrel ride contest. Now, what I'm, I'm thinking is that the judges are trying to determine if that was a make, right? Because he came gotcha. out of the barrel, but just as he was coming out, I believe out, it's a few clipped. seconds as you ride out. But, I mean, that, that lip, that white water coming towards him almost gave him his rail in his mouth. So... We'll see if that's a minute. And it's make. tricky because that camera angle is pointed into the barrel. Mm -hmm. So from that angle, it's hard to tell if the surfer was already out of the barrel or still exiting as he fell. Yep, and I'm glad they take the time to go over it a few times. Like comparing John John's 10 to... Balaram stacks uh, slabby wave. They went over it and over it. You know, they want to make sure each pipeline surfer gets their score that they deserve. And we come up with the right outcome at the end of the day. Right. And that's where having those extra two points above a 10 can come oh, yeah. handy, right? So that's where Balaram got the 11, our highest score for the day so far. I believe we have two tens. John John has one of those tens. An eleven. Billy a nine Kemper five. has one right. of those tens, and a nine five was from Eli Olson. And yes. That same heat with John John. Yes, yeah, so our water patrol. And those punchy ones, those punchy ones from Eli. Those ones are a little bit harder to slow down. You're traveling so fast backside, so. Right. A lot of technique and so much that the judges have. Their so work cut out for them. Our water patrol out here called the Hawaiian Water Patrol. Uh, run Uncle Terry Aihui, an amazing Ahui. waterman. Right. Interesting story there, too, the way that um, you know, a lot of our Hawaiian surfers. And Terry Ahui is also one of the founders of the Hui Ohe the surf yes. club. And... Um, he doesn't get enough props sometimes. I've just seen some uh, guy that used to run some of the industry reading. You know, he wrote a long thing on Facebook. This guy, Terry Aihui, he puts him up there. And, I mean, yeah, he's, you know, he's Terry, part of that Duke legacy. Right, and Terry's, uh, you know, partner, uh, Keolana, mm -hmm. 
Uh, Uncle Brian. Uncle Brian, oh. Carolina. They, the Waterman's Guild, those two. They really kind of changed uh, rescue with the with the jet ski. Yes, they did. They really brought jet ski into the rescue mm -hmm. uh, saving, and particularly that sled that's now just a you know, part of the equipment for, for rescue and ocean safety. Big time. Those guys basically invented it. Yeah. Yep. They did invent it. Some guys try to beg to differ, but they actually invented it for water rescue. And they're forever innovating and creating water safety. You know, it's not a day goes by that Uncle Brian and Uncle Terry aren't communicating with them and their men. Right. When I'm up announcing at Makaha, I really like to talk about, you know, how much people uh, that the jet ski has has rescued out there and right. they've made it a fundamental piece of equipment here in professional surfing. Yeah, so life-saving is also part of our culture. Oh. It goes from Dupont And the guy Oku we're celebrating to today, exactly. Our watermen, our Hawaiian Water Patrol. It's cool because there's a legacy there even with the Hui family, uh, the you know, Terry's boy, mm -hmm. Kamale, is also yep. part of the Hawaiian Water Patrol. And so kind of passing down that legacy. He's a good boss. He's a good leader, too. I like his crew. <laughs> right. I know every single one of them. So they're a wild bunch, and they're very smart. Yeah, they've and they're very good at what they do. They train a lot of other, you know, folks around the world of how to do it. And uh, so really pioneers it. Saving. So I guess if you're a competitor today, you'd feel an extra sense of security paddling into there, the big I bomb. mean, imagine if they weren't here. Right. You know what I mean? Like I was asking Rocky earlier, when the water's brackish, I know pipeline's usually crystal clear and you can see those big ruts inside. Mm -hmm. And he was saying as a pipe surfer, yeah, we all use those ruts and channels, but when they're gone, they're, there's a different element of safety gone right there. Right. And I think about today sitting here with you guys, I've seen the jet skis maybe three times run away outside of gums. We've had that kind of surf. Right. Oh, here we three go. Three outer. A bomb on the outside. Oh, Mr. McGee's excited. This guy's on a bomb. Oh, takes the high line, double hand drag, gets Beautiful. deep behind the curtain, comes out. Real nice, elegant, patient pivot to stall underneath the hood on that one. And then he went for the double grab. Team to Hui Japan. I'm not sure the time, but I'm. I reckon we're looking at maybe 20 minutes, a little less. There's the replay. And you can see him drop down. Nice right. little patient drift into the into that open face. Dragging both hands. I like that style. Perfect heel movement, fit the contour of the pipe wall, yeah, to drop down. Right. So much uh, elements to absolutely getting shacked here at Pipeline. It ain't easy. Right. Half the battle's getting out past the, <laughs> the inside whitewater and not getting sucked to Rocky. So, oh, these guys are frothing. We got a guy turning around on the inside There's here. There's a bomb here. A little too far out. Watch how that just explodes on that first reef definitely some barrel opportunity but the kind of scores we're seeing today these guys got to go look for the biggest kind of slabs so if you're just joining us this is the hui backdoor shootout 2022 here at pipeline in the volcom house here on the beach beautiful sunny day in hawaii We've got the Hui Japan team in the water right now. Oh, we got guys paddling. They're, they're, they're definitely in a bit of their they want to go right now situation. They must be watching the clock. Looks like there's some real makeable pipe waves coming in here. But only a few seconds will tell. That big drone landing right in front of us. So there's six minutes remaining in this heat. And then after this heat, I just saw Zeke Lau catch a wave over How's here. How's this? Ooh. Inside, so there must be Quicksilver team Almost that's up uh, in the lineup next. 
So our next heat will be uh, the Quicksilver team. Oh, nice. Oh, here we go. Here's another She's rider. Oh! oh! That was the kind of step off maybe you didn't want to step off right, right. there. Caught an edge there. Oh, yeah, Team off. Quick got some uh, pipe specialists coming up next. Cole Rothman, Reef McIntosh, the Cody Young, and Zeke Lau. Let's see what happened here. I, number, I think he hit a chop, and then also he slips Ooh. off his board. Was a little cartwheel. Wow, that slow mo, re he really went into the face of that wave. Oh, he's okay. I don't think I would take an eat it that great, Isaiah. He's, he's back out, right. paddling on his own. Looks Hawaiian like Water Patrol just asked him, What, you good? You good? He's yeah. good. Looks back like out to the lineup. Cliff Botello on that ski. Always something you don't want to do at Pipeline, but it happens every day to the best of. Anybody that surfs out here. <laughs> oh. oh. One thing about being here in person that really the, the camera doesn't capture quite well is just the rumbling of everything that's happening. When the waves yeah. come, that you feel the energy, what we call mana, and it just, it's roaring, right? So... In many ways, I think sometimes the camera makes it look a little easier than it actually is because when you're here in person, uh, there's just a oh lot yeah, of Oh, yeah, it's easy moving. to judge from the TV. <laughs> but when you're here in person, you can feel all the elements. Right. And uh, what, um, the 55-minute heat earlier, it almost looked like we were getting some sea breezes, but nope, yep. that went away. Right. So there's our heat in the, in the water, Team Quicksilver. You can see Koa, Zeke, Reef, and team Cody Quick. Young. Team Quick, always putting together a team since I was young at Dahui Backdoor Shootout. These guys are going to get ready to get spit out in the 2022 in high fashion. Thank yeah. you to all our sponsors. Keiki Bungalows, Dahui Wax, Autumn Corporation, Sinaloa, Aloha Salads, Body Armor. Kona Brewing. Right. We also have Monster Energy, Defend Hawaii, Oahu Golf Apparel. It's made me this, I'm wearing this killer shirt. It's super comfortable. Super nice. I think you could even surf in it. Lightweight. Right. Himiko Organic, uh, Kenui Kitchen, Kono's Hawaii, Pupukea Grill, Two Thumbs, Tattoo Hawaii. And thank you for lunch, Pupukea Grill. Isaiah, right after this heat, you got your whoo, yeah. thing is so tasty. Looking forward oh, to it. You, you see everybody over here at the that house. They've been curry. grinding down. It's one of uh, Kaimana Henry's go-to spots. I always see him over there. Over at Pupukea Grill. Very right. popular place here on the North Shore. Got some colorful spectators on the beach. The Fen Hawaii. Good having you guys here supporting us. Super stoked. Yeah, and looking forward to lunch. Two minutes, two minutes remaining in Team Dahui Japan. We got a paddler, and he wants it. He's got it. He's going to knife into it, and the thing just implodes. Good decision. Oh. Good decision, but it's worth a try. I've seen these guys make some impossible ones. Right. So you never know until you go. So we have a, another wave Ooh. here. We'll see if the surfer's going to get this. You can see it sucking up off Beautiful the Beautiful drone footage. How, yeah, how was that epic uh, vertical kind of soul arch into it? Right. Almost survival steezed out and a that. little bit sketchy, but he made it out of that one. Pipeline is home of the barrel. So this event, you know, you're less likely to see turns or aerials or those other types of maneuvers, but we're mm -hmm. really looking for the big barrel rides. And Pipeline is, of course, known for that. 
So up in our next heat, for Team Quicksilver. So we have eight teams today. And so at the backdoor shootout, we have an interesting format where we have a combination of a team uh, competition and also individual. Here at the end of the heat on a deep one, deep. Beautiful. Beautiful ride. Definitely needed in their scorecard. Right at the Guy end of the Sato. heat, we have one more. Seeing his buddies looking for him. Oh, another one. Come on. Oh, 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 and he does it. out the doggy door. What right. a sneaky little one, one at the more. end, Isaiah. Well, Team Japan, they came here to play. Team Dahui Japan. Sinpei, Taichi, Guy, Daiki, and Ryaru. Hey, good job, you guys. Way to get it done. That's the end Counting of that down. The start of the next heat, our team Quicksilver. We're going to replay this recap here. We had some bombs that came in coming out of that one. With yeah, the that spin. was my favorite one from this heat. Pulling into the barrel, staying high, he was keeping himself busy. We'll also have Ryder up here. This is Team yeah. Dahui Japan. Standing up tall, out of the barrel, gets clipped at the end. Woo! Another bomb set. Big I still wonder line. if that was a make. Nice one. Double hand drag. Awesome heat with heat. Yeah, these guys definitely threaded the needle with the conditions that they had on offer. Wasn't easy, Piper. And we're going to take a break. We'll be back with more action at the Hui Backdoor Shootout. Aloha. Aloha.
Hey, come on, my hey, ho, e, my. Welcome back to the 2022 the Hui Backdoor Shootout. Rocky Cannon, Ezra Rodriguez, Isaiah Walker here as well. Kainoa McGee on the beach mic, giving everybody the play by play live and direct. You're watching on surfline.com. We thank you for joining us. Mahalo. We've got some bombs to start this next heat. It is Team Quicksilver. Team Quick. In the water. You know a lot about Team Quicksilver. Oh, yes. You've been with Quicksilver for years decades. Of that team. These guys, wow, you got them. Cole Rotman, pipe specialist, Reef McIntosh, Cody Young, and Easy Kill Lau. This is yeah. an exciting one, most definitely. Companies are battling it out for the covenant title of Dalhui Backdoor Shootout Champion. Well, just a quick replay of. What happened in uh, the previous round? Yeah, they didn't have it easy, Rock. They really needed to thread the needle, and they had some difficult barrels thrown at them, and they did great with them. Yeah, Team Hu uh, Team Hui Japan. That's, oh, Chargers, uh, aren't they? A great team that has been assembled here, and uh, their first round is all pow. We're down to a couple teams left. We got Team Quicksilver right now. Then next will be Team Snapped 4. That'll be Mason Ho, Benji Brandt, Baron Mamiya, Parker Coffin, Eitan Osborne. And we'll cap it off with our very courageous and brave Wahine. Yes, That'll be the final ever, heat Rock. of the day, which is uh, incredible to see. Excited for that. But right now, we're going to check out Team Quicksilver. There's the drone shot of their position in the lineup. See a little bit of that movement on the water surface there, a little backwash and cross waves. It's, you know, for sure a, a challenging day. Um, and, you know, there's not many days out here that are over 8 to 10 feet that aren't challenging. Yeah. But it still has, uh, you know. The new crowds are challenging on its own. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, like, excited <laughs> for this. Team yeah, event. Quite different when you're surfing with just four of your friends. Oh, yes. I mean, mind you, these guys are very competitive amongst each other. It doesn't matter what company they're surfing for. But these guys want to win as a team, and they're going to make it happen. And uh, Yeah, there's the still, the, is, still the individual prize. Yeah. So just to recap on the format, it is a team format with uh, multiple team members but four surfers in the water. Some of our teams have up to six competitors, Alternate but they set. will sub in and out. But only four surfers in the water. Your team will be amassing those scores as a team score. Mm -hmm. But you also have an individual potential for winning and champion. So your scores are kept for you individually. Mm -hmm. And they are kept for your team as a whole. So at the end of the entire event, we have an award ceremony where we award the winning teams. The teams. And then we have an awards portion where we award the individuals first that through six. Pretty much took the whole show. And and um, so, like you said, there is some individual competition at yeah. stake. Uh, yeah. But in a but sense, everybody's cheering each other on. Yeah, it's, it's designed to where they're not going to, you know, go for the greed right away. You know, yeah, and someone's right. hogging the basketball. So... But uh, these guys always have, you know, surfing is an individual sport at times, and it can be very selfish. People see us traveling all over the place just to fulfill that fix. But it's more than that sometimes. It's also a job for some. And the, and the and scores that can be attained uh, surpass the, the conventional 0 to 10 point scale. Yes. We operate on a 12 point scale, which I think... You know, for this spot at Pipeline, that is justified. Mm -hmm. um, also, the scores can be uh, bumped up if there are replays that are watched and an initial score comes in, let's say, at a 9.5, mm -hmm. but it actually was a lot heavier when you watch it over yep. and over again. I so watched the scores that with you. They went over and over, and that is very rare in competition to where – they're going to give the athlete, they don't want to make a mistake, yeah? Yeah, and so the scores can be moved up. Uh, from what I've heard uh, in the uh, breakdown of the format from 
Kainua McGee is that the scores won't be moved down. There won't be any adjustments downward, but there could be adjustments upward. They will reassess. So yes. that is another thing mm -hmm. that is unique with this format here. Um, another unique aspect is the uh, advantage of having Hawaiian Water Patrol oh. do the assisting back to the lineup, which definitely uh, all surfers will gladly take a ride. The best of the best. No matter how tough you are or mm -hmm. how uh, in shape you are, you're never going to yeah. turn down the Hawaiian Water Patrol assistance. Oh, no. When they want to give you a ride, available. you will. Yeah. And, you know, some other guys, they'll be amazing pipe surfers, but they don't paddle as hard as the other guy. To get jet ski assist and save your energy and save your arms, that just gives you more performance. Yeah, right? we'll take that all day long. So just giving you some of the uh, the format and uh, uniqueness of this Tahui backdoor shootout. Good stuff. So these guys are just sitting out there. There's a bit of a lull, but pipeline has been providing, and we did see some backdoor. And there are there is an 11, a 10, and a 9.5 on the board. Yeah, and we've seen some great rides. No 12s yet. Who got a 12 in 2019? So it was um, our, our Japanese surfer, Keito Matsuoka, okay. got a 12. You know, in years past, uh, one of the more memorable 12s uh, I've seen was uh, Koa Rothman. Oh, Koa with, Rothman. Uh, with an epic yes. pipe wave a few years ago. And uh, Rocky Cannon, Ezra Rodriguez, bringing Aloha, you the man. action uh, right here at the Volcom House. Volcom House. Ground level. It's kind of nice. We got Sister Mahina right there. Mahina Chillingworth, thank you so much for everything that you're doing uh, for thank this you, great Dahui. event. And uh, all the Hui team and club members putting together uh, a great year once again for 2022. Thank you to Volcom for uh, the hospitality right Always. here. Can't beat it. Always. I mean, they've, they've uh, you know, been the pioneers of home ownership at Pipeline. Oh, yes. Corporate or company home ownership at Pipeline for uh, some decades now. And Long time now. Man, they really kind of set off a trend. You know, they then did. Other, other companies started following suit. And it's yeah. a very unique uh, type of uh, investment. Yeah. They came. They started their company in 1992. They planted a seed, and everybody kind of took off from there. Like, oh, the pipe houses, the right. pipe houses. But yeah. this is the original. The original. This is uh, We're it, the yeah, place. This was pretty quite nostalgic to be in oh, the yeah. very first one. As we we watch was young replay. over here in this yard, Rocky. Oh, a my lot gosh. has happened in this yard. Man, you know, I remember uh, the um, – Okay. Previous occupant or occupiers of this house, uh, the Weatherly family, and you know, Weatherly's, yes. there was the trampoline in the front yard here, and you know, it was just the that momentum generation hangout. Yeah, so we got much Ross Williams history. hanging out to the right side over here with us. He's uh, just cruising on the porch. I'm sure he remembers so many days being in this yard, going back to those momentum days and prior to but yeah a lot of a lot of surfing history in this particular house itself oh yeah you know and this property right here that we're mm -hmm. on uh we're not in the big volcom house like we've been in last year of course that jerry lopez house yeah, a lot jerry. of history there uh but uh, quite the unique history right here at the uh the weatherly slash original Volcom house yes. as we watch Reef I Macintosh. Forgot, I, I forgot that it was the Weatherly house. <laughs> so much rich history over here. Um, so you see a little bit of that current running through the lineup. And yeah. that's, that's uh, concerning to see. Yeah, and Reef, you know, rarely Big will you see Reef. Reef going for those kinds oh, of maneuvers. And going for a hit. That guy, like, catches absolute – that guy's a wave of the winner kind of guy. Yeah. And check it out, a right-hander back door navigating the Beautiful. chandeliers. I believe that was Cody That's Young. young Cody Young. Wearing his helmet today, being safe, being smart. Team quick. Out the back, you got Easy Kill Lau, Koa Rothman waiting to get their feet in the wax. 
always good with some of this brownish brackish water can this stuff make your wax slippery over here rock is there some river dust out here you know with the color not, or not as not bad on, t on a day like today not as much you know it's it's that just that little hint of uh greenish brown it's not the full like you said not the full willy wonka yeah the thing the that pure can chocolate, make you slippery you can blame it on bug the willy wonka hole, man you can <laughs> step on that like a banana peel Slip well, right off your board. I've seen a set like this come in. I can't really say it's like a really good angle because last time I thought it was, it just closed out <laughs> all the way across gums. But it does look like these this surfers might, are going to get something choice. Might have potential. But and I, you would I know, am, Rock. Uh, I am a little concerned with the texture on the you surface see, of Reef, the wave. It's interesting that he's taking a look on this inside. I think he knows that he's going to grab a, a detonator on the way inside. Okay, Kainoa McGee is warning the photographers. As you can see, them all dive under that one slab bowl on the inside. Definitely. Uh, look at Reef. Doing the, the he's taking a look. Of safety. Wow, he's so late. Wow, yep. so smooth. Right off the bottom. Oh, big boy Reef in a coming out. That was so Reef McIntosh, Rock. Huh? That was so Reef. No joke. So Reef. You know, I forget how big Reef is. So and nice for him. Oh, too. that was beautiful. Look Watch at how the, mellow he paddled into that one. Yeah, super I thought he was casual. too much on the top. Drop really down. did well drawing the perfect line. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, blows us a kiss. Sacre blanc, Reef McIntosh. I like the blow Good kiss. Good stuff, buddy. Got Mr. McGee excited up there. Reef yeah. putting his team quickie on the scoreboard. And Reef's about, yeah, he's like 6'2", six 6'3". Six yep. He's a big boy. No joke. And for him to squeeze himself into a, a tube like that, I mean, it was you a know, pretty big wave, but definitely not the, you know. the biggest wave we've seen Reef yeah. on. But, man, like just athletic ability, mm -hmm. uh, flexibility to get in that wave and then hold that position to come out. And you know the Kauai boys, Reef and Bruce, they don't grovel. They don't paddle in anything they don't need. That's why it was yeah. a little bit untraditional of Reef to go on that foamy one, do a little snap, but look at that. He just wanted to feel his blade, I believe. Yeah. Get the hips warmed up. Sheesh. All the other three Quicksilver team riders right now, they, they heard the cheers from the beach. They know team captain, yeah, Reef McIntosh, He's just got it done. For, uh, Quicksilver daddy for so many years. Good stuff. You're watching the Hui Backdoor Shootout. We're blowing it out into 2022 in high fashion with Rocky Cannon and Isaiah Walker. Bethany Hamilton slabs. cruising on by yeah. with Junior Boy right there. How's mom life, Bethany? <laughs> it's fun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our uh, Wahine are getting ready, coming up in heat number eight. But... Um, Yes, I got to spend some time with Bethany's brother over at the Waterman Challenge of Mills at Makaha. Okay. Her, she has a brother named Noah. He's a waterman. Comes yep. over with uh, Scooter, Kawila Boy. And yeah. these guys canoe surf, sub squatch, do whatever they can, and they love playing in heavy water. So yeah. Bethany so Hamilton coming from a talented family. Well, you see that wave sneaking through. All the Quicksilver boys pass it up. I know. Yes, yeah, uh, so I believe the old Quicksilver house, did it move or is it no more? You know, I'm not on the super end on the quick logistics. Yeah, I dropped into the yard and noticed a couple things have changed. I've okay. seen Reef right away, but I'm yeah. forever changing industry. But the Quickie Boys have been here for some years. Jake trying to talk story with Reef, get the lowdown on yeah. what was going on on that wave. So what was your individual <clears throat> score? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. Oh, no, that's no Zeke. joke. That's, this that's guy Zeke right there talking stuff. with Reef, and then Koa's uh, over to the left right there. But 
what a strong team. With, yeah, that uh, is a strong team. You know, Cody Young's been <clears throat> making some big strides as a young guy. How long has he been on scene? I've been watching this kid. This guy is strong you know, young man, <clears throat> isn't he? He's still, you know, just fresh into his 20s, I think. And From here, know, Oahu? Uh, Maui. 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 Maui side. Oh, Maui, always producing. And, um, you know, with Koa and Zeke, you figure, you oh, know, the right? goofy foot and regular foot kind of got that nailed. And then Reef can go either way or all those guys go either way but it's oh you know you're definitely one of the strong teams when the quicksilver team invites you on to the <clears> backdoor <throat> shootout you know you're doing something right yeah now. yeah here's Koa. oh he's oh going for it guy for a goofy foot no joke huge backside barrels and yeah. he's good at it yeah. yeah yeah he's got skills that's for sure and uh, check out the replay. He thought he was going to kind of get that, that yeah. high, high line entry, but the wave just denied him. And, you know, if it's denying a guy like Cole Rothman, you know, know. it and probably wasn't how doable. Far, how many yards to ride that whitewater so he gets, you know, less resistance. Because right now, even though you're in a team, you want to play it smart, yeah? Yeah, you know, and he's... Yeah, charges off his brain but seems like a guy who doesn't usually like take too many unnecessary risks no yeah yeah he's yeah, calculated yeah. with it yeah he's calculated yeah that's uh but man the the, back, the pipe wave that he got a couple years ago man was just one of those ones that it looked like there was nobody even on the wave when he pulled in it was he was so deep wow and it went for so long and then where the the point at which he came out and exited that wave i thought that he must have went through some kind of like time travel wormhole or something to yeah. get there there was no i was like there's no way he got from there to right there but it, we watched it tons and tons of times over and over one of those waves that never got old i don't know how they slow down on the front side sometimes <laughs> i mean it's just like you know you don't have that backside. You don't have your butt, your knee in it, or your or your hand gripper. But then you're taking off goofy foot. Right. Shoves their hand in. But these guys somehow just seem to slow it down. Another one I've been watching over the last few years making a mark is Kala Grace. Yeah. Flying through the barrel, but then slowing down in these parts of the wave. Like, right. how did he just disappear? Yeah. To somehow, like, stay in it longer, kind of. But that's you guys that also time. taking it easy. I mean, not taking it easy on your paddling, but timing everything from bottom to knifing it in there to letting the, you know, backdooring pipeline. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. It is that that great flow of timing from pre takeoff, you know, and sizing it up and paddling and being in the right spot to then put yourself in the position on the wave to to be in the right spot. It, and it does go even before you get to your feet. Yeah. Uh, from, from, you know, the, at least your, to, to your best calculation, that's what you're trying yeah. to do. Oh, I love surfing so much. And, and right here, right here at this place, it can be so difficult. There's so much technique. Our professional surfers make it look so easy. But you know what? I look at other sports and, you know, you look at the risk of this one. Yeah. You can drown. Yeah, you th these can easily hit your head, rip your arm out, right. rip your leg out of your socket. Yeah, and, and we've seen you know some of the heaviest stuff go down. You know, not and only you're riding during Pacific this event, Ocean, but, yeah. grinding on the reef live. You know, and it's always different. It never feeds you something the same. Yeah, I guess there's, that's there's why no we're such frothy that are, that are like over the here, same. rock. <laughs> Out the back, I hear Kainoa McGee getting excited. Oh, they let this one go, Rock. Deep, oh, beautiful. Man. Look at that pipe. shot. Wow. Looking from the jet ski into that huge oh, that barrel. Was an uncle wave does this went I mean, that's almost <laughs> like if you're watching somewhere in your office or your home uh, somewhere and you looked at that wave, it almost felt like you were going to get a spray in oh, your face. Oh, that was, that was <laughs> Through great the camera screen. work. Yeah feeling that what one. a great transition from the drone down low boom yeah Oof. 
because that's what we're doing. We're getting spit out into 2022 high fashion. The Hui shootout. Well, there's uh, all four nice guys to watch hanging out. out. Uncle Eddie. And uh, on the move now, they might see something that could be potential opportunity. As you can see, boss man frothing watching his son's heats. Yep. I love watching that. It's it's never gotten old since we were little kids. Yeah. He was there every day. I even remember when we were stuck in Oceanside. He came with buttons, Johnny Boy Gomes, <laughs> everybody to come watch Makua's heat at the Oceanside Jetty. The whole Pretty team classic. was like this. Shroop. Everybody's here. Yeah. <laughs> Always good times at Pipeline. Team Quick, you are currently watching Cole Rothman, Reef McIntosh with an amazing blowout earlier, Cody Young, one of the younger guys on the Quicksilver team, and our Easy Kill Lau. I believe Zeke's back on that tour. He is back on the tour. Gotcha. Good yeah, stuff. He That's did, where I uh, want him. You know, had a good good finish to the, to the year and uh, during the Challenger Series. Of course, he won the Ultimate Surfer, that TV show, which also yep. would give you a But that wasn't enough. He went Challenger Series but, just to, you know what I mean? But he, he qualified yeah. the conventional way. Yeah. Yep, the Lao family. You know, they're a sports family. You know, yeah. you, you, you're not going to get an easy one onto the tour. His dad, his family going to make him work for it, and he's a workhorse. Here we go. That's Koa. Koa. With the arm drag. Watch this guy. This guy's going to backdoor pipeline in the heftiest of ways. Well, you know what I like uh, about Koa? First, like we talked about, you know, his calculated risk and everything, mm -hmm. but that guy is so humble, too. Mm -hmm. he, he's uh, just a. Uh, Quiet, humble, classic. Everything that went. Let's your surfing do the talking kind of guy. Yeah, ha ha ha! -ha it is. Yeah. yeah, he's always been like that. And there was Zeke Lau. First glimpse we get of Brother Zeke, Zeke and Lau he just on a foamy uh, one. just right under the hood, right there, yeah. checking the washer fluid, just making sure. Yep, these guys are exactly know what to do. They're not going to let any missed barrel opportunities go, yeah? Even if it's not the one they want. I mean, you're going to get a barrel, you're going to get a barrel. But these guys all know what they're looking for. And, you know, it happens to be not all luck, but what comes in on that 55-minute 50, heat. Don't forget, we got 55-minute 50, heats. Earlier it was 50, and right. then Uncle added another five. He's kicked it up a notch. Yep, before we did the math to see where we end the day, <laughs> but it's all good. This is a prestige local cultural event, the Hui Backdoor Shootout, one of its kind team event. I put this event up there with the Eddie Aikau, prestige local. And yeah. We're also celebrating. A unique format, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and really neat, neat format. Celebrating uh, Eddie Aikau at the Eddie event at Waimea and celebrating Duke Kahanamoku yeah. here at the backdoor shootout, and here it is. Koa Rothman oh, Koa. on a driver and Textbook weaving through Koa. that one. So pretty good pipe wave right there for Koa Rothman. Series of waves approaching, but... Yeah, what is he, just Here right back go. around? Zeke. Oh. Zeke, right yeah. on the inside. Oh, you see that little foot oh. adjustment that he did. Beautiful. So technical. Yeah. His feet were really close together, too. So finesse for a big guy. Yeah, he kind of did a little foot, yeah. a foot scoot. Right there, that's barrel enthusiasm, yeah? Like, yeah. I got yep. this, guys. Love it. He even had a hand jibe. I, I almost want to see the re Did he drop his other hand down on his rail, like double rail? Right so here. he grabbed it, and then it looked like he put his foot a little, or his knee a little further down. He definitely did a lot of yeah, it's like little his hand subtle body yeah. adjustments in that barrel. 
And, you know, that's when you have achieved that, that level of, you know, comfort, but also technical ability in a situation that as, is as fast and fluid as being in a barrel. There's so many little things going on. Yes, well said. That's a good score, actually. Every team's lucky he didn't go for the double. Double. Yeah. <laughs> Cole is no stranger in getting into gums on some some winter swells. Oh, yeah, yeah. He'll he'll ride those westerly extensions to their bitter end um, in front of I the know. lifeguard tower over there. Uh, the John John Florence, uh, the team Florence first round heat. John John flew out of the sky so hard that he did something funny with his hand for the first time I seen. It was actually his hand that goes into the wall that does his grab was actually free frolling with him and he actually <laughs> like rainbowed over and then stuck it in and that's just like oh that's just skill that's next level yeah i mean you know he was almost surprised whoa i'm air dropping <laughs> okay i'm gonna stick it doom he stuck it i think that was his 10. well here's some sets approaching see the waves on your screen coming in outside of our, our surfers beyond them and Zeke kind of looked at that first one and thought about pulling the trigger but he decides to wait for a better one no yeah, he um, just got a pretty decent score right there so he'll cruise on the side and, and let his teammates figure out who's going to go next yeah I think Zeke and Cole were on the same text thread huh what are they wearing red boardies yeah or no <laughs> one red oh, one black Zeke paddling hard not to get caught inside this thing. It pays to hang on the inside, but you got to make sure you get out of the way, huh? Yeah, that's uh, that's where you're kind of playing a little bit of cat and mouse when you're sitting inside to get those ledgy ones, but mm -hmm. then you got to watch out for the the big mackers on the outside that can force you to bail off your board. I want to say thank you to our sponsors. Mahalo to Keiki Bungalows right down the road. The Hui Wax and Odom Corporation. Sinaloa. They make yeah. tortillas and tortilla chips. Great stuff. We got Aloha Salads. Brother Chris Lufrano. These are thank the Sinaloa you. chips. Yeah. Oh, shaped like surfboards body and Body armor. Thank you for and, keeping uh, us Body hydrated. armor. Awesome. Refreshments. Kona Brewing. Hawaii Monster Energy. Defend Hawaii. Oahu Golf Apparel. Thank you for the well gear. As well uh, as Himiko Organic, Kenui Kitchen, Konos Hawaii, Pupukea Grill, and Two Thumbs Tattoo. Good stuff. Tahui Backdoor Shootout, live and direct. You are watching Team Quicksilver, Cole Rothman in the Water, Reef McIntosh, Cody Young, and Easy Kill Lau. They've all had a take. Reef with one of the better waves out of the heat. Yeah, Captain Reef uh, started off really well with that. Koa got a good one on the board. Barrel. Zeke looking for a bigger one, but got a really good. Well, and we've seen the conditions, you know, for uh, all intents and purposes compared to what we saw earlier in the day. I want to say it mellowed. It mellowed a little bit, and we see the wind become a little bit more of a factor as Zeke floats over that backdoor section. But... You know, we've seen the current come into play a little bit. So just yep. a little more texture on the wave. Not as silky smooth as it was, you know, first yeah. couple heats of the morning. So definitely the conditions playing a factor. Yeah. Uh, but it's all done with the draw of a number out of a hat of when you're going to surf throughout the day. i seen that this so, morning. Nathan had the tickets in his hand. So, there, you know, that is... Uh, part of the format here as we watch Cody Young. Cody Young. Up and he's ready. Wave just didn't have much on offer. Zeke's wave earlier, a small backdoor wave. Not too bad. Not too bad. But I mean, you know, from what you've seen in the scores, the 11s, the 9 fives, that's right. not going to factor in on his leaderboard. So No. I just love watching all the approaches too. Like one that wasn't a big score uh, on John John's one. It was just a really nice layback. He didn't get pitted, but just you know, everybody's doing something different. Even 
Um, Eli slowed down with a nice layback earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, Reefs in this heat was a great one for how big of a thatcher that guy is. It's yeah. like, boom, here's my bomb. Guy's definitely been spit out of some beasts. Yeah. Along with I, these other guys. But, I mean, Reef, you, you know, I've, I've seen some. Some of the waves that Reef catches from the outside and pulls into just these gaping caverns and standing straight up at how straight big up, he yeah. is, you know that wave is huge to yeah. to be able to house a guy like Reef McIntosh. Oh. And I think that was Koa looking oh, over yeah. the ledge. You could hear Mr. McGee as a, oh. <laughs> And Reef on the outside, he's gonna let that Whoa. one go. But they let it go, huh? I don't. I don't think he could quite get into that one. The you know, he paddles hard. He's got strong arms, but yeah. But there's just a certain lid, point where you get, can't yeah. do it, and the more you force it, you're gonna put yourself in a, a bad spot. So you kind of gotta know a few strokes in whether you can or cannot, and. If you can't, it's best to pull the rip cord early. Wow. Here we go again. Whoa, there he goes. That's Threading a beautiful it. shot. That was beautiful. Just not much happening, you know, for the, the, the quality of the score on that one, but mm -hmm. what a great image of Reef just casually cruising you down that see, pipe you wave. You can see his knowledge though, he totally skipped by that grab part and he's like, nah, yeah, he's like I'm uh, gonna, nah. no, it's not gonna happen. The second half and might happen. Maybe. Uh, maybe not. He knows. I'm surprised he didn't float that thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> he can. Zeke, Ge Zeke floated his backdoor one. The thing almost grew into six foot. So yeah. he knew to kick that thing away. Season's just starting. So we want all these guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, we're going to get through this. do the best they can in the backdoor shootout, but also right. represent Hawaii totally 100%. Yeah. We're going to start the, that year here yep. pretty soon. Your season's coming venue, up. You and Rock, right here. Rock, you guys are on. Busy, busy. Definitely going to be watching you, cool. Kaipo, and the gang when I'm stuck in the wood shop sometimes. I, I think that's pretty <laughs> cool that, uh, you know, at least starting, you know, the year with mm -hmm. two events in Hawaii, Pipeline and Sunset mm -hmm. for the WSL, uh, you know, just gives an advantage to the Hawaii guys to get off to a great yep, start. Just glad to be back. Uh, and get that momentum. You see our Uncle you know? Wendell's back running the Hawaii Amateur Surfing yep. Association. That's great. I got to go see some of the boys down at Kiwalos a couple weeks ago. I'm glad yeah. that our amateurs are back competing. Well, and then, you know, there is a little bit of a um, bummer that, you know, we won't be, like, ending the year right. at the Pipe Masters. But, you know, I guess yeah, for, so for whatever it's worth yeah. having either the beginning or the end, you know, it's... Yeah. It'll, it'll happen here in Hawaii. We're so set in, in, in you know, since we are kids, how, how it would go. And right. now that you're working these things, it must be a little bit different, you know. F yeah. Um, it's going to be a different crowd in February, huh? Yeah, right. Yeah. When we always usually joke at Good Soundbar, hey, it's local time. It's the season. Right. But all good. I'm excited for the rest of the winter. Yeah, should and be interesting. Events. And um, we'll uh, look forward to bringing you guys all that action, too, when it happens Hopefully uh, these guys. down the road. But right now we're focused on the Hui Backdoor Shootout with great day number one. We've had uh, some 11-point. We had an 11-point ride. We had a 10. We had a, 10. Had a pretty good yep. collection of 9-point rides. I know yep. Jack Robinson, Billy Kemper, Jack Eli Robinson. Olsen. You Mr. Know, Stack all in that, is the in one that with the range, 11. But yep. ball around Stack with that 11-point ride. John John with the 10. Yeah. And, and then we had uh, the Peruvian surf team get us kicked off with uh, a good score into the 8-point hey, range. That last 15 minutes. Team that Japan guy, yeah. had some pretty good scores, too. Team Tubos, though, in that last 15 minutes of the morning, they got uh, some pipe shacks. Yeah. You know? Team Florence, that was very exciting. Dahui, Japan some rough barrels but they threaded it for what they had on offer that showed their talent right 
Kaimana Henry and them and, and Team Volcom. That was amazing. And uh, we got Snap 4 coming up. And you are currently watching Team Quicksilver with Cole Rotman, Reef McIntosh, Cody Young, and Easy Kill Lau. And if you're just joining us, not knowing what's going on, this is a non-Jersey competition. You are seeing a team in the lineup competing for um, to get on a bigger leaderboard. Correct, Rob? Yeah, and uh, we got team scores that we'll be calculating and totaling together before the event is done. We've got individual scores and Love individual that. awards to hand out. We're going to have some longboarding coming up later in our event. Not today, but on other days. We have stand-up paddle surfing think, yeah. at Pipeline. Yes. That'll be coming up. So uh, but think about entertaining that. ways to ride pipe. You're surfing in a team, but you also can win the event all the way around. What? Go I mean, wh where do you get that anywhere? That's pretty much the best of both worlds when it comes to surf competition. You know, the, the threat of elimination mm -hmm. is non-present. Yep. It is all about surfing your rounds and getting your waves, your team getting their waves. Yep. But to win as a team already, that's big. But then yeah. for them to accumulate your points and go, hey, by the way, you won the whole overall. Cha-ching. That's amazing. Well, they're on to something right now. You yeah, see they the are. scramble. And I've been it using looks Cody like, Young's uh, helmet as a beacon. Yeah, Zeke Lau. <laughs> That's is Zika? the guy in position, but Ooh. he's going to back out. He's almost smart. It's not that open, is it? Oh, yeah, right there. I mean, th there's there was an opening, but, you know, f the, from the viewpoint of where he was looking down that angle, that probably it's really hard, to, that one. really hard to tell. It is hard to tell. And, you know. Nobody really knows watching it. Well, you know, people that surf, but on the TV screen, I mean, every time these guys stick their arms in the water, they're not just, <laughs> you know, they're pulling some current. They're, that's the Pacific Ocean moving around on the pipeline reef. It ain't easy. Yeah. As Zeke is just pulling some yardage into this one, just taking a look. one of our Hawaiian Water Patrol team members cruising down on the ATV. Got to say mahalo to our city and county lifeguards, too. Oh, of too. course. Some of the best out here. Guys in just uh, putting themselves uh, in precarious positions to save and rescue all of our mm -hmm. surfers and beachgoers. Mm -hmm. And uh, got to give a shout out to my, my boss at Hawaii Seaside Realty. Oh, hell yeah. Mrs. Cheney Padaka. And... If you guys are looking for stuff to purchase yes. or to sell, please give us a call. She related to famous surfer Miles Padaka? That is uh, her husband. Oh, yeah. What? He is, um, you know, of course, a longtime Hui team rider. Oh, amazing and, surfer. Uh, has been doing great things in the ocean here for many years. And uh, they got linked up. And, Good stuff. You know, she started her own company. And uh, we get to work with her and alongside oh, that's her. Good. Yeah, Hawaii Seaside Realty. Check out our website, hawaiiseasiderealty.com. Nice. And uh, you know who else is joining the team? Cliff Botello oh, is getting what? a real Cliff estate Botello? license. Cliff Botello, that's one of my favorites. So I love all Hawaiian Water Patrol, but then you can yeah. see that guy <laughs> tries to hypnotize you with his eyes. Yeah, huh? <laughs> right. It's like right, uh, uh, right know, before we're, Luke for it no, turns a, into we're, the We're Hulk. such a community of multitaskers <laughs> and, uh, and achievers know. around here that we got to get our, uh, our hands into everything. Oh, everybody's so. connected. So much rich history between everyone all. And oh, it looks like a crowded sets. pipe right there. There's waves coming in that are really huge on the outside. Oh, and wow. Yeah, what you can't we'll see, see on the webcast, there's some lines, giant lines coming in out, off the wall, or I believe that might be rock piles from where we're sitting. Way, Way down the there left. is rock piles. Yep, on your screen, at the top of the screen right there, that's the rock pile area. And then focusing more in where our surfers are at Pipeline, we'll have someone spin, and that is Big Reef. And Captain Reef just on a Captain frothy Reef. one bails Boys out the there. Backside reel. Um, 
So this angle coming in, Rock, what, what would you call this angle? It's, it's northwest for sure. But this one's just going to probably not detonate on the reef the way you would like it to, right? You know, it, it'll, it'll, it'll blow up. It'll detonate for sure, but just not with the angle yeah. that you're looking for. And now I um, see the treadmill. I mean, the current just ripped through it and changed the whole outlook of it. Yeah, and, and there's... Um, you know, a little bit of texture on the water from the wind, and then that little bit of, you know, the current kind of just randomly pops up sometimes in different places in the lineup. And thankfully right now it's kind of staying more over towards the off-the-wall section. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are times it will sneak over and kind of tail in and creep into pipe, and that's when we don't want, you know, that, that current affecting the wave is when it comes into the pipe lineup and you'll see the surfers start having to paddle like yep. what am i at Haleiwa? like where's yeah. this current coming from but right now the current seems to be sparing the pipe lineup for the most part at the moment but we did see little hints of it sneak in there in the last couple heats you exactly. know so obviously everybody's eyes are on the conditions here i mean we want nothing but the best for these competitors yep. but there's also something to be said for when you get this far into a round you know i've seen this event start in the morning okay it's it's epic mm -hmm. it's pumping send them out and then two heats in the onshore wind comes yep. you know something happens it turns to crap and then it just gets shut down yeah. So we're we're into it now where we're this is heat number six. Yes. No turning back. No turning back. <laughs> nope. We're there. There's past still the point of no return. Walking in in the gate this morning at seven, the peanut gallery, all the banter, talking to Dwayne DeSoto. He's like, well, I, see, I haven't seen anybody get barreled out there yet. Right. But it's big, and then, you know, it happens. And then a couple guys out there practicing. There was some ho 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 hos, yeah. the rumble of the beach. You know how that goes. It's yeah. your home. But yeah, very exciting. And uh, next up um, is. Uh, It'll be snapped. Yeah, snap four. That's a very enjoyable surf video. Yeah, you know, I'll have to watch it. I, Isaiah was talking about it earlier, too, and I haven't seen it yet, so Good I'll have to check I, it out. I think, too, yeah. Oh, that was something. Uh, the you know, when we grew up on the surf VHS movies of surf old, yeah. movies, and, you know, they're so good. And then, you know, you got to pick and choose. Um, but there is some good ones out there. Like uh, Vans' Pentecostal is a very enjoyable, mm -hmm. dark, ominous, but very good. Um, you know, actually, uh, after watching that movie, a fan of all those guys, but uh, I never knew Wade Goodale had that kind of uh, action in his bag. Oh, yeah. Almost like being local, you know, um, yeah. a lot of our favorites are Scotty Fountain. He rips. Yeah. That guy has a little esky creature style about him that I yeah. fancied. So that was also a good flick. But at my old age, I like watching really good flicks like Snap 4. It gets me <laughs> totally pumped. I don't make excuses. I'm Here we go. Cody Young in the barrel, wave. grabbing it, traveling, coming out. And nice, strong backside pipe wave. Yeah. Yeah. Not as big as he would want it, but that was a perfect textbook pipe backside wave. Yeah, and I think for this first round, you know, if you can get out there and get something under your belt like this, especially in a, in a guy like Cody Young's position where yeah. you're the young buck, you're, you're the, the new guy on the squad, mm -hmm. basically, and you don't want to get in those guys' way. No. And they're going to give you waves when, you know, when your time is there. But... Just mm -hmm. to come away with something in this first round that, that yep. gets you some confidence exactly, and some points on the board, but, you got to feel satisfied. But also in a team, if all you guys get, you know, two consistent in-and-out barrels, yeah. your whole team kind of scores. You right. know what I mean? Right. So that there, is a, a, there is that aspect of, you know, so I believe, I'm also getting barreled for myself, but I'm also helping my team. Right. So, <laughs> like, um, we've watched all the teams. So let's talk about team quick. All four of them got in and out barrels. Yeah. And two each a piece. Maybe Reef needs one more, but his one was probably the banger out of the whole heat. Right. But uh, that's great. So to see them go 
into the next days, we'll see where everything lands. But yeah. talking about team criteria, I think if all four guys catch two amazing pipe waves, in and outs, here we go. Mr. Zeke Lau, rock. Oh, he right lets go, pumps it, and comes out. He definitely wove into the chamber. Yeah, it's so great how we're able to switch views and watch his entry yeah. straight on and then watch his exit yeah. from the water cam. It's just cam. what you did right there. It's like a cock I'm, the shotgun and just ch -ch -ch bah, yeah. out. Good Easy stuff from out. Zeke. And that's kind of what he was looking for. But, you know, these guys all wanted big and girthy, but that was a good score. Yeah, and, and the, the technical approach, you know, coming in, no grab. Weave on the lid. Weave to a that. pump and then grab for the exit just to be sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, I don't know. I don't know how those uh, decisions are being made, you know, if they're just on the fly mm -hmm. or if, like, you're going into it, planning it that way. But, man, it is just being so in tune with your body and so in tune with your equipment and then doubly in tuned with the wave. And I don't know if there's any other sport where you have so many different variables and factors coming in to be aware of and be in tune oh, with. Oh, don't even get me started, <laughs> you know, when I take uh, NFL football players surfing, you know what I mean? Yeah. They are amazing athletes, but when they touch the ocean, you know what I mean, at 30 million, I was like, brah, yeah. come on, brah, <laughs> let's keep going. Yeah, you know, I you give a surf and then, then I think you I said, appreciate uh, you as a surfer how much things you know and can do in the ocean. Yeah. That I, goes, you know, unnoticed to yourself. Zeke again, getting busy. Yeah. The conditions just turn beautiful with some patina. Look at the camera. Yeah. Oh, and he, that was the first cutback rebound I seen all day <laughs> by Zeke. Good job. Complete wave. I'm, no, I'm always a fan of getting spit out of the barrel and just do something. Uh, white water rebound. With all that speed, it's kind of admirable. You know, sometimes they lose the tail and fall back. I uh, just, you know, but I love it all. Yeah, back to uh, the replay right here from the drone. Just nice. looking into the eye of that little barrel. That was uh, further on the inside, but... Yep. Beautiful gaffing roundhouse off the top and then finish with the little layback into the white water. And Beautiful. Feeling good. Zeke's inner Grom just seen that thing on the way back out. He just caught one. Yeah. So, but the, the athletic ability of these surfers mm -hmm. and, and the talent, you know, and like you said earlier, you can drown. You're, you have to hold your breath. You got to work with your body under mm -hmm. duress. Not much other sports like that. And, yep. and uh, during the HIC Pipe Pro, I think I commented one time of, you know, just the amazing athletic ability of these mm -hmm. guys. And I was talking to the beach crowd, and I was like, you know what? I, I, I like watching football, you know, but, like, the best athlete on the football field, you got to – he'll show up to the beach today, and he won't even – you can't even get him in the water. You no, can't I even – you, you got to stay on the beach. I said, LeBron, sorry, bro. Stay on the beach. <laughs> it's not for you. And it's just so unique. Yep, and, and it uh, is. Uh, but it's beast. Like, nobody knows when you're in the water, when you alleviate the oxygen out of your legs, you are in trouble. Yeah. And then you turn around because you're in a heat and go, oh, man, I'm going to go get this other pipe wave. Like, just say that Zeke turned around on the inside with a couple, you know, panting and panting. He made it happen. You know yeah. what I mean? These guys know where to get extra oxygen from. So but we're just getting you, indication that yeah. uh, this heat is almost done. So we'll okay. see if they can get something in the final moments there is a set on the way Did he give us the minutes because this set looks beautiful zeke looks way inside <laughs> his team is out the back you and got there's big reef the wingspan you see the windmill oh, paddling into that one and setting it up grabbing the rails stalling and coming out 28 miles per hour stall and he actually got <laughs> the lid over him i was totally just watching zeke thinking they were going to get cleaned out but you got cody young out the back team quicksilver
Here's Koa. And Koa. cannot get into the barrel wisely. Not really the wave he wanted at the end out. of the heat. He's got three good completions. But Koa's a beast. Yeah, look at Reef's wave. Just stalls it right in the perfect position and gets Such a little. a tube rider, man. Yeah, gets a little lip on the head, but doesn't phase him at all. No. Kind of With a guy it. that big, when he gets lipped in the head, it doesn't look like yeah. as much as, you know, when you're a smaller guy. Oh, he got lipped in the head. Right. And he just got any, a little. Any other person probably would have got thrown off their board. <laughs> but, you know, he, he I think he wanted that little head hair whip on the end so he could yep. fling his hair back and look all modelish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, perfect side comb on the yeah. way back out. See some photographers right there now. Really so 15 seconds. Inside. 15 seconds. Counting it down for this uh, Quicksilver team. There's Mason Nail doing biter. some uh, doing some body antics huh? out there. Oh, he's like a Doug Silva. They talk with Ma their hands. Yeah, Mason was showing Reef's uh, Quicksilver shaking hands with Team Snapped. Next up. Mason Ho, Benji Brand, Baron Mamiya, Parker Coffin, and alternate Ethan Osborne, I believe. And checking out Cody Young. Had a backdoor wave for Team Quicksilver. Reef McIntosh. That was one of his incomplete rides. But he had this one. Yes. That really put some big numbers on the board for Team Quicksilver and for himself. And he blows a kiss to the crowd. He usually and never claims it, but he knew that that was his wave right there. And uh, Zeke Lau had some great rides along with this guy, Cole Rothman, who was Cole doing Rothman. some work at Pipe. And uh, Cody Young, that's his second barrel. So he had the backdoor wave and the pipe wave. And then Zeke had this beauty launched out right there. And another little inside sneaker for Zeke. And put some great numbers on the board. We'll be right back with Team Snap at the Backdoor Shootout right here at Pipeline. Team Snap. All right. Good job, gang. Good job.
Aloha, and welcome back to the Hui Backdoor Shootout. Isaiah Walker, Rocky Cannon, Bethany D. Hamilton strolling by. Yes, we're <laughs> surrounded by greatness. And uh, we're chilling here at the Volcom House, watching the live action. You guys are watching on Surfline.com. Thank you so much to Salt and Air Studios and Surfline for putting this on and uh, having a great show for all of you that can't be right here with us in person, but maybe someday you will. But we're trying to bring you the action as best we can. And right now we got Team Snapped 4 in the water. Ah. Mason Ho, Benji Brandt, Baron Mamiya. Oh, my gosh. Parker Coffin and Aton Osborne. Not sure which exactly of the four are out there Holy right cow. now. I believe that's Mason Ho. Oh, oh Baron Mamiya. We're getting the call from our amazing beach announcer, Kainoa McGee. So that was Baron Mamiya. Oh, my Here's God. Mason Ho. Oh. And it just seems oh. to be turning on right now. I mean, that last heat we were talking about <laughs> oh, with the chop hop on the, the 710 hop. or whatever that board is. <laughs> just entertainment to a T. Entertainment. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we've just got that heat off with a bang with those bombs. Baron Mamiya had a mean one. And then right behind him, Mason Hall. This is like... This is real entertainment heat right here, and I love. I mean, I think everyone loves watching Mason Holt. Yeah, he's such a showman. I think they We're like him. Wa they like watching here. him doing anything. There's, there's that late one. This is Baron, who's traveling deep in the barrel, covered by the hair and the lip, comes out <laughs> clean, and right behind him on this bomb, Mason drops in on a longer board, stands up straight, classic Mason style. Give it a little aloha to the barrel. Then the chop hop, <laughs> spin around, make it, hand jive, master. Just such a master. You know what's interesting? I mean, I think showmanship runs in his blood. Uh, he's related to the great um, Don Ho. Wow. Yeah. And I, I know there's been probably a lot of folks wondering. You know, you see the last name. It's quite unique and so prevalent here in Hawaii, uh, you know, because of uh, the great Don Ho. But right. there is uh, some relation. Right. That's why I asked him myself personally. I said, bro, what? You related to Don Ho or what? He goes, <laughs> yes, my uncle. <laughs> so for sure, uh, entertainment. If you don't know who Don Ho is, he's a classic entertainer here in Hawaii for many, many years. In fact, he used to. Some connections here. He used to... Uh, for a little while, you'd perform at Duke's restaurant. So okay. there, this was different than the Duke's restaurant. It was a nightclub that Kimo McVeigh had put on. Here's another rider up. This looks, is that Benji, Benji Brand? That is Benji. Right. The Snap 4. So Snapped, if you're not aware, is a, is a film series. So Snapped 1 and 2, those were like pretty OG, like the Bruce and Andy kind of yep. days. And then... But Snap 4 is bringing back that that old film genre, and uh, these guys are some of the top performers in that film. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's pretty amazing. A lot of good surfers mm. in it. It's S-N-A-P-T. T. Snapped. Yeah, I like not, that. Not like snapped your board like S-N-A-P-P-E-D right. proper, but it's abbreviated with yep, the T. the T. <laughs> Abbreviated to a T. <laughs> there you go. But, man, some big waves approaching again. You see the surfers looking towards that horizon to eye up these waves and see if there's anything uh, of potential. Meanwhile, our wahine are getting ready for their heat. They'll be the final heat of the day. And uh, we got Bethany getting ready right here. Moana Wong has been hanging out on the deck with us all day. As we watch uh, Baron Mamiya, just a little too deep. And uh, I'm wondering who else is on the Wahine team. Let's uh, maybe find out from Bethany right here. Hey, Bethany, who, who else is surfing with you guys? It's Moana, Bianca, and Kiala. Bianca and Kiala. Thank you. 
So that'll be exciting and historic, right? So we're first uh, yeah. women's team in the Hui backdoor shootout. And you know, it's I'd, not oh, small. I almost, after watching the girls perform at this recent HIC Pipe Pro and coming into this Hui backdoor shootout, I wasn't part of the, the format, you know, administration or anything like that. But in my head, I was thinking, now... Since the girls are getting so good at pipe and they're coming into, you know, this new year and this new season, having all the same events as the men, I was thinking in my head, should the requirement be for the shootout for every team to also have at least have one wahine? Lo and behold, I did not know this was happening, but now we have a team of all wahine, which is totally amazing and awesome. Right. Because, uh, you know, they've obviously proven they belong out here, especially with the performances we've seen from Bethany, from Moana, from right. Carissa, and uh, Coco, and, and all the girls in Keala. Yeah. Um, so it'll be Bianca and Keala joining Moana and Bethany for the historic right. heat coming up next. But right now, we're going to get through this one with uh, Mason and Baron already getting a couple of good waves off the bat. And we were talking in the last heat just about the overall team performance of that last heat of Quicksilver. And it might be one of the more better Dominant. spread around oh, right. <coughs> quality Rounded. team Correct. performances. Look at Mason here grabbing the rail with his front arm, putting some old school steez, still traveling over the foam ball, comes out. Whoa! He switched arms while in the barrel from the front arm <laughs> to the regular arm. That was crazy. Oh he basically kicked out at Ehukai Beach Park. Bruh. Look at that replay. Are you here. kidding me? Look at the front grab. And then switches to the conventional grab. In the barrel. In the, the barrel. Oh, I thought he was going to get sucked up the face and go right. over. It looked like it. And the camera work of getting that shot from the drone down to the jet ski cam, looking inside at Mason, just captured one of the most amazing transitions you'll ever see inside of a barrel. Right. Holy I, moly. I love that too, because the, the water angle really shows you how he had to climb up over that foam ball, whereas most normal human surfers would have fell at that point because you would have fell really or got sucked no, up you know, over the falls and to be able to ride through that tricky section was really impressive. And the showmanship again, right, with the different grabs. Amazing. I mean, I thought pretty soon there was going to be like a rabbit coming out of his back pocket or something. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Mason. I mean, for technical skill and technical approach, that's got to be one of the more impressive things I've seen in a long time here. Right. Something I've come to learn about Mason. Um, I was able to work a little bit. Make, they're making this film about um, through the doggy door. And just in kind of interacting with them on, on that film project a little bit, I got to realize that he, he, he comes across as very kind of carefree, just his surf style mm -hmm. and like just kind of like maybe, you know, kind of casual, laid yep. back, cool, nonchalant. Brother is very intelligent, mm. and he's also very methodical with his edits in particular. He wins all these awards with these edits, but what I don't know if most people realize that he's personally involved with these mm. things, like from selecting the music to doing the edits and everything. He's very hands-on, so uh, showman, but also very intelligent guy too. Look at this one. Yeah, so I, I, I think he. Uh, uh, oh, that was um, that was. Maybe A Town Osborne or Parker Coffin? Uh, Parker is regular foot, I'm pretty sure. Mm. No, I think oh, wait, no. Parker's maybe, goofy foot is Park brother's regular foot. Connor, Connor Coffin's is regular, is regular foot. foot. Parker is goofy foot. So that could have been Parker. So Another yeah, cool uh, little adjunct or, or feature about this contest nobody's wearing jerseys, nobody's got colors on. It right. is all about. You know, style and stance identification. Right. <laughs> and even though, you know, if you watch a lot of surfing, you get to figure out who people are by their style, of course. 
But when you have a split second, they just drop in into a closeout. Kind of hard to figure right. out who that guy is. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> Aton Osborne kind of coming onto the scene as, you know, of lately, a, a younger guy. So uh, still kind of starting, you know, trying to get a feel for his style. Mm -hmm. And we can tell you that is Mason Ho on the right of your screen right there. <laughs> that for sure. And Baron and Benji. And then Baron and Benji also out there with uh, with Mason. Boy, and that snap uh, for film, Benji Brandt is packing some massive pipe barrels mm. in that um, in that film. Just incredible. And Mason, of course, I mean, he's his usual amazing self in that film. Really enjoyed watching that film. Everyone really performed really well. Here we go. So it is Parker. They're just confirming from Kaido McGee. Right. And uh, nice little in and out tube ride right there at Pipeline. And for guys like Parker, you know, and, and other young competitors in this event, I mean, how blessed and lucky do they right. got to feel to be able to surf pipe with just a few guys and Parker making his time as worth it as he can. Yep, for sure. And that's how it often is. Like I have, I have five kids. Five kids? Five kids. Have Choke. you? Uh, do they play basketball? So you got a <laughs> team right there, bro. And uh, but all of them surf. You know, since okay. they're little, we don't take them to. Macaw, for example, mm. an anti-rail sons event that they would have mm. them in, uh, over there at Macaw. Uh, just real cool vibes, you know what I mean? And, and I'd always tell it, and the kids would be stoked too to be able to surf someplace with just, you know, their friends in the water, catching whatever waves they want at a place like Macaw. And, you know, that, that is kind of the, the perk of signing up <laughs> for a contest. You know, same with Queens when they have the TNC Grom event, yeah. and these different events where it's like, oh, your kids get to surf by themselves. Uh, likewise, when you're in the pro events or any event, you have the privilege of getting the lineup to yourself. But And having 55 minutes, not too bad 55 either. 55 minutes at Pipeline. Right. I mean, whew, that, that is a treat. I mean, that's and one of and a stress-free situation. You look at the normal contest. Yeah, you get it with a couple friends, but a little bit pressure. You know, you got to advance. You got to catch your waves. You know, even at spots like this, uh, you know, at Pipe, Sunset, you think, oh, well, I, I would pay that, you know. But actually, you know, that situation in a heat, or, or in a conventional heat, is, is a, a little bit stressful. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of pressure. So this... 55 minutes plus your friends mm. plus you don't need to worry about losing right <laughs> it's like wow and you get These the water patrol watching and you. and you get water patrol watching and giving you ride <laughs> Bruh. oh here comes some Study. waves now it's, i gotta stop because i'm getting jealous <laughs> here's benji oh He's got that benji. low center of gravity that helps keep him stable on the board unfortunately that wave just Closed out on him. Looks like Baron paddling for this next one. Holy oh. smokes, there's a gaper. Let's go of the rail over the foam ball. Gets swallowed. He got pounded. And this is Mason Ho. Mason on a screamer in the position. Oh. Yeah. And he is coming out. I think he was on the upper two thirds of the board. Right. Like full on old school style. <laughs> <laughs> Kainoa likes it. Amazing. What a great ride again for Mason Ho. So he's got three in this heat. The first one, he was kind of just looking back, posing in the pit, nothing too radical. The second one did that crazy front hand grab to conventional grab transition. And then this one, man, we'll watch it again. He was just in the perfect position. I love the water camera angle from that one too. You just see him yeah. let go of the rail, stand up, pump down the line, in the big tube. Right there, then he like moves his back foot forward a little bit and is like kind of more in the middle of the board, like 
making that board, I mean, it's what, I don't know, like a 7-2 yeah. maybe or 7-4, but he just rides it like it's a 6-6. Six, six. That's what's so cool about Mason, too, is that he can ride a, a 5-0 or an 8-0 in <laughs> 10-foot pipe and still make it look awesome and easy right. regardless of the board. Well, nobody, I, I, if, if the classic old adage of the winner is the one having the most fun, he's hands down the champion. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's having so much fun. In many ways, it was a smart decision, I think, for him to ride a bigger board because today it seemed kind of difficult to get into those bigger ones. And so, uh, you know, on the smaller boards today, be because you had a lot of those second reef ones and it's kind of tricky to get into them by having the longer board, it gives them that advantage of getting in early, able to then make that drop early and drag and, and, in the and barrel. And he's, he's so comfortable in the sense that it won't hinder his maneuverability or, or if he needs to do something on the board to make it feel smaller he's got that that you know level of comfort with those bigger boards right that it won't hinder him if he needs to stall if he needs to you know have it perform like a smaller board he knows how to adjust his feet that well but you know definitely uh, agree with with the little bit bigger board concept for today right Okay, 9.5 right there dropped by Mason. That joins uh, the likes of Eli Olsen, right. Billy Kemper, Jack Robinson, all in that nine-point range. Uh, maybe one of our Japanese surfers might have been able to, to snag one of those nines, but we've got now a pretty good amount of guys in that mix of... Right. Those nine-point rides. And I think in the Quicksilver heat, there had to have been some big scores in that. I'm not too sure what Reef or Zeke had in those, but there were some <laughs> yeah, I think, comparable uh, rides. I, I, I didn't hear those specific scores, but there, there was um, you know, uh, some waves that were looking like that they could be in that, in that range, range too. Uh, but consistency of that Quicksilver team, everybody had a couple of barrels. Right. And so I think uh, for a team effort, they might have been the most complete looking team. Right. Uh, when you look at, at their scores and, and the waves that they caught, uh, the others have had, you know, the one or two standouts um, going big. Obviously, uh, Balaram stack with the big 11 point right. ride, the, the wave of the day so far uh, and John John's 10. But man, you think that when all said and done, this is a great day of surfing. It, it would be kind of challenging, I think, as a judge, because usually when you're when you're so you're setting a scale it, as a judge, it's for that heat. Mm. But it's kind of tricky. They're setting the scale for the day, right? So, so that's kind of a tough job for the you know judges to. They have to remember, okay, how good was Balaram's wave and how good was Mason's wave, right? Because uh, usually judges are accustomed to you know comparing to the wave in in the heat so so i would say that's a little adds to the difficulty of, of making those scores but we have great judges up there uh bart lynch apparently is one of the judges up okay, there okay well he's qualified right <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's a now a, a north shore resident see him that's hanging kind of out down uh down at shores with his grom and we take our groms down there to go swim and hang out and mm. in the neighborhood some big waves kind of feathering hard to see on your screen you can see the ones that are approaching the surfers right in that immediate view but even out towards the horizon there's there's quite a bit more action that's feathering up out there so we'll see if this snapped four team can spread the love, will it be Mason getting another big shack or will he allow Baron Mamiya or Parker Coffin or Baron, uh, sorry, uh, Benji Brandt Benji to Brand. share in the wealth? We'll see. So I was recently um, on a podcast with some group in Australia that was doing something for Netflix on surfing and history in Australia 
and uh, it was it was a good time. But then something that I want to bring up today, in fact, we were looking at Mason Ho. Uh, one of the points one of the guys made was like, well, you know, going back to 1976, we we're talking about that earlier this morning. What happened in 1976 in Hawaii? The formation of the Huiohe and Nalu, and some tensions between a group called the Bronze the Aussies and some of the local surfers and. I was like, well, they were upset because the bronze Aussies were basically surfing better than them on short boards, whereas the Hawaiians were kind of more old schools. Here's a sick one. That's Parker Coffin in the barrel, oh, in and wow. out. <clears throat> However, that's also a misnomer. I mean, I talked earlier about some of these misconceptions as we watch the replay here real quick with Parker Coffin. Uh, I thought uh, one misconception I mentioned earlier was how there's this idea that Hawaiians stopped surfing at the turn of the 20th century. Not true. The other one is this idea that Hawaiians were kind of old school in mm. their surfing and not progressive. Uh, that the traditional meant, you know, kind of an old school style. Right. And so, uh, so one of the explanations this Australian said was that they weren't kind of up to date. Here we go, Benji Brand pulling oh. in deep on this one. He's gone behind the curtain, flies out. So casual. Super In smooth. control. However, we're talking about Mason here. Look at his his dad and his uncle, for example. Um, others, Larry Bertelman, Buttons Kaluhi Okalani, Dane Kealoha. Here we see Benji Brand. Basically, we're they were part of that same generation that was very uh, innovative, mm. even in design. Uh, ben Ipa, for example, uh, was very innovative with shortboard design shaping from the Stinger board to a um, variety of different shortboards. And so the shortboard revolution was not something that was exclusive to the outside and, and not a part of ho the Hawaiian surf mm. experience. In fact, it very much so was. And if you go back and look at like the annals of surfing history and competition and so forth, even in the 70s, Hawaiians were winning most of the events. Right. Um, but for some reason, we have this idea that they weren't, huh. right? Uh, but from Reno Abolera to, you know, so many others Barry, in that time period, Kanaipuni, yeah. time period, Barry Kanayapuni, and then eventually guys like Dane Kealoha, and then into, of course, the most prolific of the pr Triple Crown winners, Sonny Garcia. Yeah. And just the, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, uh, Michael and Derek Ho, and the, there's this generation, there's just a, you know, this legacy of winning in in Hawaii for our, our Hawaii surfers. So <clears throat> that's just something I want to I, I want to put to, you know, kind of bring out there and just kind of explain that those tensions weren't necessarily about like, oh, these guys were progressive and right. these guys weren't. These guys yeah. were better. These guys weren't. You, one of my favorite surf films is called um, Style Masters, and it's just raw footage of 1977. And just watching guys like Larry Bertelman, Buttons, uh, Dane Kilo, and that whole crew during that time period, I mean, they were doing really innovative stuff. From right. 360s to yeah. switch stance in the barrel to you know real arcing turns uh switch stance, aerials cut even into, yeah. yeah just um so progression and oftentimes that's unfortunate sometimes indigenous peoples are are made static in history so in other words like oh yeah the the native is stuck in the past right right so being innovative is, is con counterintuitive to being native but mm. that's not necessary so that's what i love about this event is that we are celebrating contemporary he'enalu culture but it's still valuable it's still tradition but it's just today's version of right, it right right contemporary tradition right and having people like uh you know having mason ho for example who's who's literally connected to that legacy and he's yep. Also, what I love about his surfing, what pe a lot of people like about his surfing, is his style pays homage to history. That's so true. It, it does have this classic look to it, or this classic feel, but he's doing amazingly modern contemporary maneuvers, right. you know, with everybody else. But there are these moments where you look, and it's like, if you took this silhouette picture of Basin surfing, you know, this particular wave in this moment, and put it 
against something from the past, right. you wouldn't know the difference, and right. that's what's really special. And just his little hand jives <laughs> and, and his stance, I think, you know, he's honoring his his dad and his uncle doing some, you know, similar things that they would have done back in the day. It's really there is Dave Wassel coming into awesome. our area here. D Dubs in the area. Okay, looks like uh, we are kicking it up a notch with the the beverage selection over here. That's the advantage of being ground level over oh, here. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. You know, with the 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 nice big deck that we have here, but. Having, you know, Bethany Hamilton cross our path a couple times, having Moana Wong hang out and right. Ross Williams over there and getting to uh, check in with all the, the peeps down here. You know, prior years were up in the, the balcony and right. it's a little disconnected. So right. being uh, kind of immersed in it here is, I, in my opinion, a much funner way to bring the action to the folks on Surfline, right into their living room or office or home office, right, wherever right. you might be watching from. Yeah, we should have this place mic'd up. You can see Ross over there talking <laughs> to Bethany and yep. giving her Doing some, some pointers. coaching. And uh, what a, uh, you know, I really like the mornings at Pipe, you know, when it's, everything's lit up. But then you get this afternoon kind of mm. silhouette shot right. that makes it look just so aesthetically pleasing. I, I like the afternoons here at Pipe and, and the way the light hits it at the time. And uh, you see... This team, some teams are, you know, doing their own thing. Mm. Others, you know, they're, they're, they're gathering together. This, they're almost sitting in a circle, like talking story, <laughs> like facing each other, right. which is, uh, you know, totally the Ohana community vibe right. that we feel. So... Of course, this is the Hui Backdoor Shootout 2022. Fortunate to have really good surf. Seems like the Backdoor Shootout is pretty fortunate compared to, you know, a lot of other events. Sometimes they, you know, have to run in less favorable conditions. And I don't know if it's because it's timed a little that's, better. That's part of the, the format is that always this event knows that we don't, have to run it mm -hmm. there's no mandatory and i remember years when it was you know similar to the eddy when it didn't happen right you know so over the the course of this event you know going back to 1997 so man this is what like yeah. i don't i'm not that good at math <laughs> to, but that's uh 25 20 almost, years, almost yeah. 25 years you right. know 24 years into it but you know, I think it does lend itself to be able to cherry pick the quality a lot more than other regular events. And that what may be the perception of mm. it always gets excellent surf. Right. There's uh, a shot of the from the water looking up at the beach is what the competitors see when they're out there in the water. Yep, so you see the big Volcom house right there, the right. old Jerry Lopez property with lots of surfing history and if we were talking walls about could talk yeah yeah <laughs> and then we talk about this property uh you know and the more contemporary history of it being the the old weatherly compound right and then you know then getting uh morphed into the original volcom house mm -hmm. and the first uh company to invest in real estate right here literally on, on the beach at pipeline and you know, several other companies following suit after, but mm. you know, what a what a great spot to be watching from. Right. So we are up to our last team that's paddling out, right? Yeah, so it'll be our final heat uh, for this shortboard team competition. I haven't gotten any word if we're sending out any long borders or any stand-up paddle borders, but there is a potential for us to carry this Surfline broadcast into the free surf session, oh. which is a potential. Uh, 
you, you, don't, you don't have to stay. You can go home if you like. <laughs> but I, I know you got five kids <laughs> to look after, or at least uh, the ones that are still, uh, you know, yeah, in the, the caring for age. Right, I, I right. know you, you got started a while ago, so you got a couple <laughs> that are, you know. Older, yeah, my oldest little is, bit what, older. 23? Oh, 23? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. 23. Nah. You're not grandpa yet, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Could be, though. That's, you know, well within the realms of possibilities, right? right? But um, so there is potential of that. We'll, we'll stand by and, and we'll let you guys know. But uh, I, I live really close by. And uh, everybody's taken care of in my holly. With uh, we've got some grandparents that are visiting and nice. staying here for a while, and and uh, my mom helping to take care. So that's uh, all, especially I, in Hawaii. I, everybody's if it's on, together. I'll be here to carry you guys into the free surf session. But that's not confirmed yet. We still got to get through just our regular competition, mm. which involves this heat right here, the snapped four heat, and then our historic Wahine girls heat coming up next. And then uh, and we'll be letting you know if we're going to be carrying you through the, the sunset hour. But um, based on what Dave Wassel just brought in, we could be hanging here for a little bit. <laughs> oh. Right, so we have Keala Kennelly. Bianca Valenti. Bianca Valenti, Keala Kennelly, Bethany Moana. Hamilton, and Moana Wong, formerly uh, Jones. AKA Morna, formerly Jones. She went from the Mojo to the Mowo. <laughs> and uh, regardless of what any of her names are, she is a pipe specialist, first right. and foremost. And it's interesting because she's been standing next to us the whole day. Yeah, they've been here watching. Watching the waves, yep. studying the waves. A real student, you know, and that's what it takes, especially to be out here. You got to study the waves, watch it, and know what you're getting into. Right, yeah. It's, it's serious business when, you, when you're taking on Pipeline. As so I mentioned earlier, uh, Rocky, that women's surfing is also an ancient thing. It's a, it's a traditional form that surf, women surfing in old Hawaii was was a very big deal, mm. right? So we women surfing kind of did, you know, have a downturn uh, at the at the turn of the 20th century in the early 1900s. You still had some women who were surfing. Most notable among them was Princess Victoria Kaiulani. Okay. So Kaiulani was uh, the next in line to be the monarch of Hawaii. Uh, her her mom was sister to uh, Lili'u Okolani, the queen okay. at the time. And so she she would have been next in line had the monarchy not been overthrown. And um, But she was well-educated, uh, well-traveled, but she was also, she, she had this really cool balance of tradition and modern living. Right. And Which I feel like had to be important for Hawaiians at that time. Yes, and especially you know, in the late 1800s, uh, David Kalakaua, who was um, the brother to the Queen of Hawaii, he was very keen to doing this, of, of modernizing Hawaii, but in a way that still was Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. So, for example, he built the Iolani Palace. It's still there. You can go tour it. I highly recommend anyone to go and do that. Uh, but in that palace, he, he, ins he had an electrical lighting system installed from Thomas Edison. <laughs> wow. And they, there was electricity in the palace in Honolulu before there was electricity in the White House. Oh, wow. Right? And so he was very modern. Mm. Uh, and, but at the same time, when you come into the palace, he also was known as the guy who brought hula publicly again. Right? There are different phases of bringing Hawaiian traditions, culture, language, dance, in and out. Um, yep. But his era was known as one of these kind of revitalization periods too, where, you know, in years prior, hula was kind of frowned upon, uh, but he was known to bring it back. So I guess what I'm saying is, you know, you can be native and modern at mm -hmm. the same time. I was talking about that with the 70s with guys like Ben Ipa and many others who were leading the charge into the shortboard revolution and 
still being, you know, a tradition of sport, of, of surfing. And then, of course, today we're still celebrating that. But Princess Kayulani was uh, a, a woman who surfed, even though she was also raised to be pretty proper in her right. behavior. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, we, we did see fewer women surfing than in years prior. Most of the Hawaiian mo'olelo, or traditions mm. that we, of the chants that we preserved, are about women surfing. Wow. And they said that women just had a grace and a style to them that was unique and that was, you know, famous. Probably, uh, and probably, you know, if you're, it's probably pretty attractive right? to see, uh, you know, women surfing and, and, and stuff like that. I would say especially to even today when you watch women, you know, in any of the surfing uh, genres, but longboarding in particular, mm -hmm. if you watch a, a, a woman cross step on a longboard, it just has a little something that most of our men longboarders don't have. Just that little bit of finesse and grace. Right. Uh, and I think women uh, in surfing do have something different that they offer that provides that um, that he'e or that sliding on the wave in their own unique form. So it's awesome to see our next heat coming up with an all-women's heat and... Uh, Happy that w WSL supported on this, uh, right. allowing their athletes to participate in, in this event with the backdoor shootout. Yeah, that, that's always uh, been one of those things uh, we've kind of toiled with in the last uh, few years of this event. And it was, um, I think, to everybody's benefit that it was allowed. And we have them here today. And, and even there, you know, they're bearing the the name, the WSL right. Wahine, you know, for their team name as we watch oh Baron Mamiya. And just so stylish. I think he's probably on like a 5'11". His board is tiny. <laughs> oh, here's a rider. That's Parker. He's going to look for a parking spot in the barrel and see if this one opens up, but just a little bit too shouldery on that one. And not much happening there for Parker Coffin. I read somewhere doing a report or I wrote about it or I, um, there's a, a, there was some sort of ancient either courtship or potential that you could have if you rode a wave with a wahine you know during those times right I, I it was almost i kind of when i read it or remember it it almost likened it to like some kind of like you know at a dance club or something <laughs> or you, you know you buy a girl a drink and then you get to go dance or whatever but there was a kind of aquatic courtship if you will with surfing certainly yeah there's a lot of that one most famous stories of laie kawai so she was interested in this one chief who wanted to, to you know, connect with her. And, yeah. And uh, the way that they solidified their courtship was they went surfing together. Oh, wow. And so they had to catch five waves together. Hmm. There's an interesting twist to that story, though, because on the fifth wave when they were catching the wave together, there was some kind of scrappy little guy who dropped in on it. He grabbed Laie Kovai's foot as she was catching the last wave with her her man oh man and he basically decided no 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 you come surf with me and then he ended up getting like a in the end oh my goodness did you see those people get mowed down somebody just got wow mowed. everybody is getting pounded at least uh, the guys on screen have made it through but there are some folks on the inside section namely our photographers that are in the water that are working yeah. really hard for those shots that was Parker Coffin, he stood up on his board, bailed <laughs> out under that bomb, and somehow made it under. He got spit out the back, back on his board, and he rejoins his friends. So wait now, on that fifth wave. Oh, fifth wave. Some some guy came up and literally snaked her. Yeah, his name was <laughs> Hala Aniani, oh. and he came in, and he didn't want the chief to steal her and marry her, so he decided to drop in on the whole courtship grabbed her foot pulled her on the side said oh let's go surf over here and uh, it's unclear to me in the story 
what was going through Laie Kavai's mind. Mm. I don't know if she was kind of confused or yeah. if she was not interested in the first guy, but she ends up going along with this Hala Aniani guy and ends up, they catch the wave together and then that courtship is solidified. So you're right, Rocky, there is that tradition of, hmm. of sharing waves together and, um, and courting. Yeah. I mean, in, in a lot of these uh, chants and mo'olelos and, and songs and so forth, uh, we have kauna. Kauna is essentially like a, the kind of a double meaning. Yeah. And in poetry, we have that, right? And right. No matter what culture, and if there's poetry in your culture, what it does is it, you know, it, it's talking about other sort of hidden messages. Mm -hmm. And Hawaiian culture was very famous for having these deeper meanings to stories. So oftentimes these stories of surfing would have a deeper message to them. And, and sometimes they had this kind of intimacy of... Uh, yeah. Adult uh, themes. Adult <laughs> themes. <laughs> I mean, Beyonce sings a song about a surfboard, doesn't she? Uh, I, that one... <laughs> I, I could tell you about, uh, you know, Disney characters and stuff like that, but my yeah. kids are, are still quite young. Right, right. <laughs> you've, you've got the ones that are listening to the modern pop music and, and uh, those types with the teenagers and stuff, but, man, this is, uh, this is grown adult surfing that's going on here today. I tell you what, <laughs> these are for grown-ups. And uh, there are some kids out here that are surfing like grown-ups. Yeah. But it is real pipeline. Look at and that. Oh, my goodness. Just the, the feathering of that wave and breaking over it. on screen, you know, it looks a certain size. But, man, when you're here in person, it is oh doubly boy. huge. This Mason As trying we watch for Mason. It. If oh. He oh. Goodness. I think that was Benji looking over the ledge on that one after Mason. And with that bigger board and that, you know, scrambling paddle style, if Mason couldn't catch it, you know, that wave was moving fast. Right. You know, that's where earlier I was thinking having the longer board would have allowed him to get in early, and it almost did, but he was still just a little further. Yeah, little he might out. have been just a tad far out for that one. I remember as a kid, one of my um, favorite contests to watch was when Mason's dad, Michael Ho, won the Pipe Masters with a cast on his arm. Yeah. Grabbing rail in the barrel uh, with a broken arm. Yeah, I, I always kind of wondered, like, was it really broken? Like, <laughs> was that just to throw everybody off? <laughs> like, talk about methodical and showmanship uh, and getting in your competitor's head but turns out it was actually was a broken right. arm that he was recovering from but decided to surf anyway well the reason why i like that story too is because when I, at the, I was like maybe 10 years old at the time or something and i was you know surfing at that age but i had broken my my wrist too oh wow and so he inspired me to like oh, okay if he can surf i can surf still too. can do him right <laughs> Even though your mom was probably like, hey, you're not going surfing <laughs> with that cast on? You crazy or what? But Michael Ho did him. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> then I was pretty fortunate, though. I was born and raised in Hilo on the Big Island. I grew right. up in a Hawaiian home area called Keoka. We lived at the end of that stretch. At, yep. At That's the, the, like the Beach Park. southern part? It's like, yeah, it's the east eastern end of okay. uh, Hilo there's a Hilo's big bay and it's so to it's the right the side yeah? right side yeah. yeah yeah past the airport and um, <coughs> you know my mom is Hawaiian she's uh, from Hawaii my dad is from Ohio and Kentucky wow and he ended up coming to Hawaii and um, he was a physician so he was a doctor and he picked Hilo as a place because it was a high need area with a lot of you know Hawaiians in need mm. and so I was lucky my my dad as a doctor, when I broke my arm, he was able to, every time I go surfing, it get kind of rotten because the bug will get stink, yeah? And yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I was kind of spoiled in that, that we would just cut it off and he'd put, put a new one, one on. on. But yeah, we had plenty of like fish and fruit and poi and 
people mowing the lawn for us and that's why you know aloha my pops for doing that we didn't have lots of mm. money yeah uh but we had lots of aloha and lots of help um, yeah Yeah, it's a beautiful area. Uh, I have uh, a couple of brothers that have migrated from Oahu to to the upper slopes of, right, of Hilo, right. just above Keokaha. But man, I, I as a goofy foot, I got a chance to go a few times to Honolii and surf. Bro, you're blasting on my spots. On some fun, <laughs> some fun waves over there. You mean Shmono Shui? Yeah. Oh, like, you know, can see them from the road, right? <laughs> Looking down right there. It's like the only spot for miles, <laughs> at least that I know about. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, uh, you know what? I tell the you. Guardrail boys. Or <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're holding it down yeah. over there. Guardrail boys. That's hilarious. Um, something that is a trip, though, I, you know, growing up on the big island, the, the island is still alive, right? Yeah. So Pele uh, is very active down there. And, you know, just recently there were several surf spots, decent ones, that were taken by Pele. Like mm -hmm. there was a bay, Pohoiki mm -hmm. Bay, mm -hmm. and um, a bunch of, there was a break called Shacks and Bowls and Secrets and a bunch of spots that no longer exist. Uh, it's all now like lava rock. It's lava where, rock. Where the waves were, you know what I mean? So it's it's, it, the, the lava went into the ocean and then just kept going. It kept going. And went out and the island got bigger. Yep. And the waves got smaller. And there's now no surf spot. That's pretty crazy. But, you know, you respect the Aina and Pele is part of that Aina and, um, you know, she gives and she, she takes. Take, yeah. <laughs> yes. Giveth and taketh away. Well, we're going to see if any of these guys in the snapped four team can taketh away a big score before the end of this heat. Because I see our Wahine, they are out there. So they're waiting on deck, which tells us there's only a few minutes left. There they are. There's Keala. There's Bianca and Moana and Bethany. And, I mean, you know, of that group right there, the veteran, the OG, is Keala Kennelly. Right. And she has been charging, you know, since we were kids. Uh, she's about the same age as I am. And, you know, I remember her and the Irons boys, you know, coming over from, from Kauai to compete here and surf here and I mean it was pretty mind-blowing what they were doing back then mm -hmm. and to see her still getting after it and doing it is so inspiring and um, right I mean well her, done her accomplishments in in Peahi and Maui Jaws mm -hmm. to massive Chopo and Tahiti um, she's definitely made a uh, made a mark on women's surfing for big wave surfing. I mean, she's a yeah. big wave world champ. Yep. So she's definitely qualified to be here today. Yeah, and, and it's good to see her still, still doing it. Right. And 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 you know she's inspiring the younger generation like Bethany, like Moana, mm. and, and Bianca. So you know I'm sure that uh, it's. A really cool experience for all of them to be out there together and in this particular event making history together right somebody paddling deep Parker yeah that's Parker Bottom turns Get out of there <laughs> The replay here of Parker's last one. Kicks out. Yeah, pretty good idea to kick out of that one. It was a nice, beautiful drop. The wave, for the most part, was beautiful until a certain point. And then that huge section just came kind of from out of nowhere and shut it down. 
mountain's a wide one. One and a half minutes remaining, one and a half minutes. So just about 90 seconds remaining in this heat for snapped four. Saw Benji Brandt get a couple and uh, Mason. Aaron Mamiya got some, Parker got a few, but Mason definitely uh, was the star of this show. Yeah, we're and talking. we'll see that in the recap here coming up soon, but we'll count this heat down in just uh, about a minute or so. It's interesting. We were talking earlier how you know, it seems like even though you have a 55-minute heat, most of the action takes place in these pockets of five-minute windows. Right. And we haven't seen one of those windows in a little while, but the beginning of this heat, there was a flurry and got to see all of the competitors catch some really good waves. Well, they might get one more chance. It's 30 seconds, and there's another set, kind of a mid-range size set approaching as uh, we pull wide and kind of show you the whole expanse of the lineup from the back door section and off the wall kind of to your left of your screen and then over to the right where the surfers are at the pipeline lineup. And... Don't think we'll have any more rides from this snapped four team at the moment. They're going to look at this one and pass it up. It kind of has that straight hander look to it where it just all breaks down at one time. So no rides to end the heat as the horn blows and ends this heat. We had some pretty good waves from Baron Mamiya, looking really nice and relaxed, casual, on a small board. Right, right behind him, this was Mason stalling on his longer board, stands up straight, let's go to the reel, a little peace sign and then a chop up. Yeah, somehow getting that huge board out of the water, completely dry, and then you saw the front hand grab and switch to the conventional grab. Super deep, gets over the foam ball and makes a right turn, left turn. <laughs> Parker Coffin had a couple of nice rides too. We'll be right back with history right here at the Hui Backdoor Shootout. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to the Hui Backdoor Shootout in 2022. We're excited to be here. We've got some good waves. We've had a long day, Ezra. Long day. Long, uh, awesome day. Long, Thanks awesome for day. Me. Uh, we've had our team divisions today. We had a total of eight teams, and our final and eighth team is in the water right now. And this is our WSL Wahine. So we're excited about this one because something new. Something new. Brand first, new. First time in the you know, at the backdoor shootout to have a team that's exclusively uh, women. And we've got some accomplished surfers in this in this particular heat. We've got Kiala Kennelly. We've got Bethany Hamilton, Moana Wong, formerly yep. Jones, and uh, Bianca. Bianca, yes. I seen Bianca make her way into the lineup after the girls and that rip tried to take her around gums and then Hawaiian Water Patrol quickly grabbed her. I mean, it's all timing out here, folks. There's a lot of heavy water moving around. How was that snap four heat, Isaiah? Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, that, especially the, the first half of that heat, we saw just wave after wave from, you know, Mason Ho putting on a show and uh, Benji Brandt and um, Parker, Parker Coffin. And it was really, you know. That video um, is very awesome. Um, have you seen it? Yeah, right I off did. the bat, Benji uh, Brand. Benji, that's a really good segment. And he's pulling into some monsters that's out here at Pipe. That's a humble kid that met him from the Moniz family. He's been putting in his time here on the North Shore. Good stuff. Yeah, for sure. I think he's originally from South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Those guys don't mess around. I've tra tra traveled with uh, Justin Ribbink and some South Africans in the longboard tour, and those guys don't play around. They charge. They know their layout of the land. They love to wrestle in the sand. They're burly, man. They do it good. <laughs> I love my sounds South like, African brothers, man. Sounds like an adventure you had. Oh, with those them. guys are very adventurous. It's good going into other third world cu countries when you have your brothers from South Africa with you, too. Right. Well, yeah, we're excited about this Wahine heat. And Wahine is the Hawaiian word for woman, female. And uh, a lot of Wahine in our surfing mo'olelo traditions. I mentioned yes. a couple of those today. I talked about Kelea a little bit, mm -hmm. Laie Kavai, quite a few. There's, there's another one named uh, Kapo Ula Kina'u. And she was known as a, a woman you didn't want to mess with. First oh, of all, really? she was really I good. I haven't heard you talk about her. Right, yet. yeah. Yes. So she was a really good surfer. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, she was also, she had these kind of magical powers, right? Gotcha. So she could summon, one of her powers was she could summon massive waves. Like, Ooh. You know, what a like great trait. Man killer waves, you know? Oh, gotcha. And, and this is a true, actually, on, on most of our beaches here on the North Shore, we have this vine called the Pohue Hue, and it's a, a green leaf vine with a beautiful uh, purple flower when it's in blossom. But, that vine in these stories, these traditions, uh, they would take that vine and uh, have this certain prayer and whip the water with it and summon waves. Does it, it grow near the ocean? It does. It grows okay. right on the sand. Okay, it's, gotcha. If you ever on the beach in Hawaii, uh, it's the vine that grows right on the oh, sand. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anyway, she was, you know, she was in this surfing competition with some men, <coughs> and here we go. Wow. Kelly Kennelly. On this one, stalling in the barrel behind the curtain. Her second wave trying to break out of that doggy door. Kiala Kenley, an absolute Kauai charger. Almost made that. Once I seen her this morning, I, uh, boom, had a flashback of her performance at Jaws. Oh. Just hell woman, mono so wahine. Crazy. Other wahine that come to mind and I, and I was raised around is um, Auntie Rel. Right. And uh, Auntie Pua. I always think of them. I just seen a, a hui picture. I know oh. you've seen it. They're all yeah, on the flexing. beach with their paddles. Right. I mean, gives me chicken skin because those uh, wahine have taught me things in my life when they come visit in right. town and stuff. Ezra, come out here. Learn how to surf here. Let's do this. Uh. Took all the kids to France when we were young. You oh, know? wow. Yeah. Fully paid. Awesome. Yeah, she yeah, did a lot for Rail the definitely had a lot of aloha and had a huge impact on, on the kids of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So to um, see all these wahine out right. here, it's, you know, whew. So, so back proud. to our story of this one yes. from ancient times. So she had the surfing competition with these men, <coughs> and uh, she was a gambling person. In fact, in a lot of surfing competitions in old Hawaii, they would, they would bet on them, right? So they'd gamble okay. uh, for 
different things. Sometimes it was, you know, for land or for uh, jewelry. Hawaiian jewelry was, you know, from whale tooth to different kind of bones to feather, feather stuff. Wow. Uh, but she was pretty upset with these guys because they were supposed to take care and, and marry these uh, these friends of hers. But all of these men ended up not living up to their bargain of the deal and they they left these women and so she purposefully identified these men for the surfing of competition and then when they asked hey what are we betting for and mm -hmm. she said your lives really uh, the way oh. they says your bones right okay. so in, in ancient hawaii and even today um mana is like a spiritual energy kind of like uh you know the force in star wars or oh, something right mm -hmm. and uh you know, the belief is that, that that mana resides in your bones. So if, if you had something uh, of someone else, um, their bones in particular, but also their hair or something from their body, uh, you could kind of have a, possess a little bit of their yeah, mana. I, yeah, you just gave me chickens because I've heard some of my aunties and uncles talk about this, right. the possession of something, and yeah. Ooh. And so she, when she said, you know, what we're gambling for is your bones, well, now what they would use... Um, you know, human bones for and other, you know, animal bones and so forth was to sharpen as tools, mm -hmm. uh, spears, sometimes jewelry. If you go to the Bishop Museum, you'll see these beautiful wood bowls. And there's one in particular that has, it's lined with human teeth in the bone. Oh, in the I'm going to look for that yeah. next visit. Uh, there's also one of my favorites is this, uh, this sash of Umi Aliloa, who was a great chief of old Hawaii and it was passed down through Kamehameha the first and passed down until it got to the Bishop Museum through Bernice Pauahi Bishop and this sash it's all feather feather work sash mm -hmm. but then if you look closely there's all these teeth and bones in the and what is that um, letting the people know of that day it's basically that you usually conquered someone else gotcha right and that gotcha. you, you kind and of have a is it a bit of um, um, arrogance like look at these or or yeah. I don't know if it's necessarily arrogance but it's like mana like mana like I'm showing yes this. yes and you're you're somebody when you have something right. like that yes so that's the the bet that's on the table Wow. And uh, then she summon, uses her powers to and the pohuehue vine to whip the water and summon these massive waves. waves. And she ends up riding the wave that all the other men are drowned on. Oh, wow. And uh, so then, you know, of course, this is a story that goes back to Kauai on the island of Kauai in a place called uh, Makaiva. And, and underwater, there's apparently these coral heads, like eight of them. And so it's interesting how, you know, the landscape kind of helps to preserve these stories where right. they tell the story of, see those eight rocks over there? Here's the story. But then really the message is, take care of your kuleana. I love Don't that. abandon your wahine or wh whatever your kuleana is. Mm -hmm. Don't abandon it. Stay true to your... To your Was the you know, eight rocks the drowned men? Right. Woo, that's heavy. Yeah, pretty heavy. And say they have caught that big wave. <laughs> The boat and trading, right. well, they would have, you know, that was something then, you know, if you give some other people the bones that you've had, or she meant methodically your actual bones. Yeah, right? that she, yes. yeah, that she would take their gotcha. bones. Gotcha. Yeah, and that's, whew, that's heavy. Right. Yeah. Wow. I love all this culture and history. I did not. I never heard that story yeah, before. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And Wow, so and women the are warriors in Hawaii. Yes, when there she, were, were. It, when you know, Captain Cook in 1778, 1779 was in Hawaii. Um, you know, they had a lot of festivities and uh, exhibitions for him. He came during this season called Makahiki. Mm -hmm. Makahiki is a time I think it's very fitting we're having a surfing competition because this was the same time that Hawaiians would have this season of competition games right. of. Sports from surfing to fighting to mm -hmm. wrestling to all, all kind of cool games. Are we still in Canoe the Makahiki racing? season? We are. Oh, okay. Yeah. When does it end? Uh, yeah, it's really marked with, like, you know, the Pleiades. So when mm -hmm. the Pleiades or the uh, Makali'i rises and you can see it. And so that's usually, like, in November-ish. November. Uh, and it starts. And then usually, f you know, the Makahiki usually ends in the spring, late oh, yeah. winter. Um, okay. So and that comes with our shark season in October that is now gone. Right. I think. I think. Well, hopefully. Oh, I mean, I'm not getting they're my education there, from. They're <laughs> always there, but 
Right, but the times when the they're... The nursing yeah, season yeah, yeah. is... I know it starts in the beginning of the Makahiki, right, so I right. had to ask. Right. So much education from you, Isaiah Walker. We got some serious waves coming. Oh I see Kiala Kenley scratching. Scratching. She's also wearing her vest. her flotation vest. Right. I heard the girls discuss a little bit before they went out. Moani mm -hmm. wanted to know. Bethany Hamilton's out there. She wasn't gonna wear her, so you know. Oh, somebody. Ooh, they're just Almost. a bit far out for that one. How beautiful does that look on the drone footage? Right. It also looks awesome live. Pipeline has toned down just a little bit, but it doesn't stop. Right. It's forever changing. I did notice in the snap four heat, there was a bit of a crease coming through that mm. midsection. So it is changing it. Right. But there is definitely scoring capability. Wow. Moani, Moana Wong out there, along with Kiala Kenley. Yeah, Moana's been quite accomplished in, you know, surfing pipeline. She's put a lot of time out here. Um, really cool. Rise for Volcom, where we're sitting right here. Right. She also, you know, put out a video for the, the Triple Crown entries, right? So yeah. Go check that out. She got a really sick barrel that she posted that's her entry into the, you know, the competition. Wow, we'll check that out. I was just catching up with her husband. And, yeah, they are out there and... They are ready. These girls are really excited to have the opportunity. First ever backdoor shootout with Wahine. And they are competing against the men. So right. the men teams are definitely watching. Keala already got two under her belt. So she's waiting. Yeah. Who are the other two Wahine? Too. I don't have them here on the list. Uh, yeah. So we have uh, Bianca. Bianca. And uh, Bethany Hamilton. That's right. Bethany. Wow. I just seen Bethany made it over that one. Wow, yeah. spit on the inside. Bethany's uh, the one wearing the helmet. Yep. Bianca and Kiala are sitting deep. Remember, this is a team event now. First women team ever competing against the men. Oh, I love that story, Isaiah. Yeah. I never heard that thing. Wow. There's lots. So have you, you know? ever surfed that spot where you're talking to me with the I've been there heads? before. Is it I was on a field break? trip with uh, my kids, went on a field so trip much and history. checked it out. Pretty cool. Wow, the way the ocean looks live, it just looks like it's just ready to A-frame and send <laughs> these girls some beautiful pipe waves. Yeah, Rocky was pointing out how cool when the, the sun is headed more towards Kaena Point that you get that silhouette from this angle looking into the oceans. Picturesque. You know, it's still big and dangerous, but I'm sure some guys are going <laughs> to um, go out for that. Oh, you right. know, that uh, with their photographer, they're going to go out and get that backlit pipe barrel. Right something that people strive for for a lifetime to get a picture like that and then you know there's just going to be the local diehards that are just going to go out there to have fun to earn themselves some dinner they've been watching all day <laughs> for sure yeah it does i mean there's still like you said there's still some some sets but it has it has tamed, tamed a little itself, yeah And, you know, in some of these heats, you know, there isn't much mind surfing. These guys aren't letting a lot of opportunities go because, you know, you need to take these opportunities real quick. Right. Because there's few. Yeah, the girls are just sitting. They're lined up in their position, and now they just got to wait for the right wave to hit the reef. So this stretch of beach here, known as Ehukai, back, uh, the, the whole North Shore in many ways was nicknamed Ehukai. And that's uh, this misty, Ehu is like a, a reddish color. You know, somebody mm -hmm. says they have Ehu hair. Right. You don't call so a local with blonde hair, right? right so if right. you're a local person who's 
you know, you grew up in mm -hmm. town in Waikiki, you get some of these kids that, yep. you know, Hawaiians with really light hair from being in the sun all yep. the time. Um, so ehu is that reddish color, and the ehu kai is like a mist, right? Gotcha. So it's misty air in the North Shore, because of the pounding surf, just always has that the mist mi in the yeah. air. And then you get the, the light that hits a certain time, especially in the, in the evening, it gives it like a, a misty reddish color. Oh, yes. Sky. Yes, there's so much when the sun's setting over here, all those different levels of light that everybody looks for. Right. That mystic North Shore light. Yep, my kids definitely got Ehu hair, kissed by the sun. I can't seem to get my hair like that anymore, and you know what that means, Isaiah, I'm not surfing enough. Oh. <laughs> Takes three times a day to get oh. surfer hair. Nah. Lucky we get three times a week now. Oh, huh? yeah, no, I know. I hear you. I hear you. I know when I do surf three times a day, I feel spent. I feel great. <laughs> I am in a positive kind of sore. Oh, we got a paddle there, KK. Keala Kennedy. Wow, Keala. Full chandelier wave. Chandelier. She's going in it anyways. Sometimes the safest place to be is in the barrel. Right. Unfortunately, it's just kind of crumbly on that one. But you know, Isaiah, as a surfer, you can just surf your heart out, get sun-kissed, you feel great, you're sore, too sore to go to work, but enough to surf again the next day. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of it's like... that kind. Kind of like there's always room for ice cream after oh, yeah. dinner, no matter Honey, what. I'm super sore. I shouldn't go to work, <laughs> but I could go surf again. My wife would always make fun of me, like, getting me up in the morning, you know, like, uh -huh. on a normal day is like... Pulling teeth, unless the surf's good, it's oh. like, don't need an alarm well, clock. Mines are laughing at home. This guy's a Monday guy, anytime. Right. I give my girls and my wahine the eyebrows, like, can daddy stay home? Nope. Right on. But yeah, you know, all you surfers out there watching, we all have different techniques of surfing, and also we have different techniques of getting ourselves to the beach with our family you know when you're a frothy surfer and student of the surf man you do whatever it takes well it's been an awesome day of surf and cool thing too is looking at the surf line forecast there's more coming so what do you reckon we're on tomorrow i'm i'm not the expert in that. i know so i'm the history guy and i can look i was at gonna a, let you start that rumor look <laughs> at a forecast but that's not <laughs> my call isaiah walker said it's on <laughs> tomorrow no 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 and i mean we still have some some other cool divisions too like we have the longboard and sup the longboard yeah, you're gonna see guys like in the sup zane switzer Pomai opili one of the hawaiian water patrol's right. finest tehotu wong Bullet Obra from Hilo. Big Island, Kainoa McGee, our beach oh, marshal. Wow. That guy oh, is like moonlighting. You know, he's been posting so much of um, his bodyboard career, and I'm like, have you seen that stuff? No, I just got it. I mean, it's amazing Bro, I stuff. Grew, I grew he up has, with him when he was a drop knee master. Oh man, but uh, you you look at that, it's just like, oh, I miss that. His era with those, they were on that generation. No, no, for sure. Like when I was a kid, so I grew up in Hilo, but, um, you know, I knew Kainoa from back when I was a mm -hmm. kid. I'd fly up here to surf some of the, okay. you know, Hasa events and stuff like that. But also, um, you know, my good friend who was uh, dating my sister at the time, Kalani Kahali yeah. Oumi, who's oh. doing some amazing things for the kids in Hilo right now. Anyway, he was a pro bodyboarder, and so I would, you know, get to know Kainoa when I was a small kid, and these guys charge pipe that was of course in the era of mike stewart the king oh yeah but that whole gang i mean they were classic I right mean. and i see bodyboarding coming back and it stuff, is but this guy's like short board long board sup and you know when we think of st stand up paddling at pipeline the first two names that come into my head is boogie sunny kaiku kalama and kaino right. mcgee just right off the bat right. you know what i mean and guys like paul Mai, i've seen him on some massive waves we also have a guy that i'm interesting to watch i've seen him on videos and stuff like that and he's got a great game and he's uh north shore lifeguard association mo freitas oh yeah 
Uh, I believe he's from Maui, but um, he has a great stand-up paddle Ooh. game. Riggs Napoleon. Right. Nappy Napoleon's grandson. That's awesome. Kolaya Campbell. David Calvan. Wow. Okay. Oh. Also, we got some longboard hammers, too. Right. Um, it's going to be a semifinal and a final. Bunga Perkins, oh. Lance O'Connell, Dino Miranda, Kai Salas, Makamai DeSoto, Micah DeSoto, Scotty Fong, Rusty Kelana. The Kaniala Stewart, Ned Snow, Nelson Ahina, Ahina, Kanoa Dolan, Keegan Edwards, and Dwayne DeSoto. Right. Got some world champions in there and some definite pipe longboard surfers. Actually, I was, we were talking earlier about uh, Duke Hanamoku and yes. uh, Moho, that uh, animated film. Mm -hmm. And they actually used... Uh, Nelson Ahina was kind of a stand-in for Duke in that Oh, in okay, that because he like my friend Dwayne embodies that look when he was a young right. boy I was like damn you look like dude man. <laughs> he's a tall guy too tall, uh, Nelson great sir what's cool about him is uh, his whole family is amazing oh surfers. I love them like mom dad mm -hmm. everybody they were just cheering he just won Makaha about three weeks ago right. Melvin's Waterman Challenge won it in 12 foot Makaha sir Holy cow. kid is a giant killer oh here wow. we go wow Kiala Kennelly on a KK. bomb third wave oh. absolute charger out the back do we have any takers another Whoa. big one Whoa. she definitely took a look Bethany Hamilton oh. she took a look and this girl she ain't scared but oh. she is smart and they're going to use the best one. of their Let's knowledge to get covered it. up here there's a replay. We see Kiala Kennelly taking that drop. The wave ran in front of her and just exploded. She got out. Oh. Then that other one just blew its guts out all by itself. You're watching the backdoor shootout. We're shooting it out into 2022. Thanks for making it happen. Kiki Bungalows, Dahui Wax, Autumn Corporation, Sinaloa, Aloha Salads. Body Armor, Kona Brewing Hawaii, Monster Energy, Defend Hawaii, Oahu Golf Apparel, Himiku Organic, Kainui Kitchen, and Kono's Hawaii. And Pupakea Grill, thank you so much for lunch. That was amazing. And Two Thumbs Tattoo. The girls got a little bit of a lull, but KK is just putting it on a right. show today. Yeah, at the beginning of the heat, she got a couple right. barrels. She's been frothing to surf, this girl. Right. 30 minutes remaining, I hear. Minutes. These are long heats, 55-minute heats. Yeah, it's like it just started, I think. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> now we're into a, a regular 30-minute heat. heat. Right. So you're, you're uh, extra overachieving. Now we're into the regular 30-minute heat. So well, awesome. I, I know at this event, in some ways, we're a little biased, right? Because mm -hmm. this, this event celebrates, um, you know, it's put on by the Hui Ohe oh, and Alu. Yeah. Uh, we celebrate, you know, a lot of local surfers. A lot surfers, of us were raised by the Hui. Right, you know? a lot of, you know, Hawaiians, yep. history and stuff that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, recognize that bias. But there's something that does stand out to me. Hawaii is, uh, you know, a relatively small place compared to some place like Brazil or uh, the United States. Or Yes, you're right. The number of, look at this, Bethany Hamilton Bethany. taking that drop. Beautiful drop. Wicked bottom turn. She almost did the Tommy Carroll under the lip snap in the hood of the lip. She kicks oh, out. Goodness, the horizon is lighting up right now. It is lighting up. Bianca. Bianca. Packs a barrel. Wow. Oh, my Beautiful goodness. grab, Bianca. Oh, my god. Definite goodness. throater. Now she's getting one on the head. Oh, Bianca. There's a replay on this one of Kelly Kelly. That was the one earlier. Then we had the other two girls finally getting their feet in the wax. This is live action. Oh, boy. We got a second reef bomb rolling in. Wow, this is pipe. You see that, that wave? Was big. I know um, you folks at home are seeing that thing wind off on itself. If you could see it live, you can hear it and feel it. There's one also in the back of that. Wow. Wow, uh, luckily those Moana. kind of waves. How much do you want to cut back into the whitewater, see what you can find <laughs> on the inside? 
look at replay here on this one. This is Bethany. Bethany. Takes that drop, comes around yeah. the section, does that I turn love, the yeah. reminiscent of Tom Carroll. Oh, yeah, I just, you know, that under the hood snap, she was wanting more. But great ride from Bethany. I have to say, one thing, I, I do love the drone footage, mm -hmm. but one downside to it is because it's up in the air, mm -hmm. the vantage is, it doesn't, you know, show you how big the wave is. So in many ways, it just, because you can't see, yeah. like, how tall the wave uh -huh. is because you're looking down on it. But that wave was much taller than, than what the it looked like. Yeah, and looked then because like. we're at the balcony eye level, and right. that's what this house was designed for. So when you see it live and then look at the screen, yes. I know Rocky was talking about that earlier. I mean, just seeing it from live. And earlier, I really liked how they went from drone into the pit right. as a water photographer. That was really neat, too. So KK, three waves up on the board, absolutely charging. Bethany Hamilton got her feet in the wax, and Bianca never got to see her surf. Right. Just got caught up um, talking to you about right. her, and she's got st mad she style. She packed that one. Hopefully she we can get a it. replay of that yeah. one that she pulled into. That was a proper pipe wave. That, that she was a proper pipe wave. She handled that with class, you know what I mean? Good show. The whole beach is clapping for these girls. It is big. It is 8 to 12 feet. And here come some more waves out in the horizon. So I said earlier that the waves yeah. have slowed down, and it, here comes the big wow, ones. Wow, Mr. Walker, is this one going to light up the reef? Because uh, that last set was very exciting. And uh, Kainoa McGee is trying to tell you, ladies, it is on the outside. Paddle out. As we're looking here on our screen, though, the two girls are just frothing. They're just waiting for this one in the back. Just kind of waiting for him to start taking a harder paddle. That's, uh, I believe that is Kiala and Moani out the back. Moana, yeah. Moana, sorry. And you got Bethany sneaking up in the back. And now this is an all-team event. So these girls are competing against the men on a bigger leaderboard. Right. And it's not a regular contest where you're scored one, the rate from 1 to 10. It's 1 to 12. And we got an 11 today by, right. I uh, believe. That was Ballaram Stack. Oh, that guy is good. So if he didn't make that wave, he would have got detonated <laughs> too. I mean, that was one of the better waves I've seen one. today. It was a well-deserved 11. So the point I was trying to make earlier about the kind of my – uh, bias point, but it's still oh, yes. nonetheless a good point, mm -hmm. is that Hawaii is a small place, relatively speaking, mm -hmm. and um, and yet it produces so many accomplished surfers, right? And and not only in, you know, the sh shortboard division. Here we go. Here's a rider up. Moana. Just sliding through one, feeling out her chili surfboard. Tons more but, time. But also, uh, you yes. know, longboarding. Uh, there's a replay of Moana just, like you said, just getting her feet in the board and feeling it, getting maybe maybe She won on that position. board, uh, the last one, so she's All right. She's probably just trying to get a slide and then back out there. I mean, we have, especially with our women, for example, Carissa mm -hmm. Moore, um, yes. multi-world champion and gold Amazing. medalist. But then also, you know, women like... Um, uh, Honolulu Bloomfield, who's yes. a three-time yes. WSL champion on yeah, the women's side. three times. And then you have big wave tour surfers, um, mm -hmm. you know, guys like um, Kai Rothman and yep. um, Billy, uh, Kemper. Billy Kemper and so many others. And and then once you get into other you divisions John John like body surfing, Eddie, bodyboarding, yeah. and, um, there's, so, uh, there's so many different genres within our sport. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at every one of those genres there you have different athletes from hawaii that yep. make their mark so it's pretty impressive and it is interesting you know to get our schools and everything aboard it's it's it, it's hard to get surfing going in hawaii i know right. when i would travel with quicksilver i would go down to huntington beach at lunchtime 
the whole team is out. I said, what are you guys doing? Oh, this is our lunch break. And I said, whoa, we got to get back to Hawaii and get on this. But then you need signatures. Here's Moana paddling into a double up. Takes the drop. Yes. Finds her line. Stalls. Beautiful wave. She just wanted to get under the hood, but nice pocket ride from Moana Wong. I love how she was working to slow yeah. down. Great and, style. Uh, you can see from the drone angle here, slowing down. Beautiful wave. Trying to get behind the curtain. She gets a little covered. Not as deep as she was hoping, but nonetheless, but good Nonetheless, ride. you are out there right. with three wahine, and you are surfing pipeline. And here we have Bethany <laughs> Hamilton on a oh, late one. Oh, Bethany over the handlebars. I'm just glad she wore her helmet. She is no stranger to charging. She's trying to backdoor the pipeline and get that thing on the board. These girls want to eat up the men. <laughs> it's a replay of Bethany's last one. Just her technique is my incredible. My. Incredible. Outside, baby. Outside. Unfortunately, it goes down on that one. It looked like it had a little incredible. warble to it. Maybe a little backwash influencing water. it. Water Patrol's Cliff Batella. What's up, brother Cliff? Have some more waves approaching. Let's see if our ladies get in the right spot for this next set. Yeah, but you know, like you're saying, like being Hawaii being a little biased. I mean, you're gonna come to the island. There's so much athletes and 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 awesomeness here you're going to get a little bit of that competitive vibe. You know what I mean? Right, it's, right. There's so much that has been happening. And the ocean is going off. Four girls in the lineup. You're watching the Hui Backdoor Here Shootout. Here we First go. First time Paddler. ever. It's Kiara Kennelly. Takes a late drop. T takes her line in the barrel. Wow. Almost comes she out. She was so in that cavern. I thought she was coming out, Isaiah. I know Looks Keala. Like she, she had it. She had the line, herself up about that one. She had the dive. That was such a textbook, nice hollow tube. See a replay. See what happens here. So she's leaning forward, she's putting a lot of her weight forward, oh. but ends up going over on the toe edge of the board great angle i almost right. thought she was almost out so you're watching the wsl wahine heat first time ever keala kenley putting on a show moana wong as well bianca's out there and bethany hamilton So again, we're running team events uh, today. So we have a total of eight teams. We started off with the Peruvian team and then into the Florence team. And in that heat, we saw a couple of the top scores of the day. Yes. No surprise Most definitely. There. But we also talked like, watch how busy the Florence boys are going to be because right. they surf out here when nobody's out here just to better their game, but they're also just having fun. <laughs> right. And so. then we had the Volcom, Team Volcom, and the Hui Wax was our fourth team. Yeah, that, that was also today. a good show, yes. The Hui Japan, uh, there were some awesome waves ridden in that heat as well. Then the Quicksilver, I think the Quicksilver, you guys were commentating on that one. They, they seemed to have a lot of action in that heat. Yeah, they... They didn't have massive waves, but what they had is all four guys got spit out of tubes, right. you know? And whether they may have been big or small, they were classy, and they all, as a team, got waves. So I think that might right. change a couple things up, and you know? Then we had the snap four, mm -hmm. and that just wrapped up before this last heat on our, our wahine from, from the WSL. I know in that Dehui Wax uh, team that you're we talking about, I know Billy Kemper put up some scores, yeah? Right. And I think Kyleni broke a board in there. Yeah, it was action-packed. I know the uh, 
Peruvian Tubos team bright and early this morning at 8.45. They had to round up their team and get out there, and they definitely, you know, yeah, the opened up the Hui backdoor shootout for us. And the Hui Wax team, uh, Jamie O'Brien was replaced by um, Ballarum Stack. And so oh, okay. I think that was the that was a smoker heat because, there, you know, Billy was getting barreled and Ballarum had that 11-point ride. Oh, we got more waves approaching, as you can just see on our screen. Girls are just sitting. Kiel is knocking some of the water out of her ear. She already knows what's coming in. She's going to make a paddle for it, depending on if she needs to paddle up to it or more into it. But pipeline provided all day. It has tamed itself just a touch. And very exciting. They still got plenty of time on the board, I believe. Right? Maybe 20 minutes. He's winding down with these 55 minute heats, give him plenty of time to be selective. You know, and that's why you got only pipe specialists over here at the backdoor shootout because, you know, with 55 minutes. And you don't want to surf pipe, really? I mean, that's a scary thing, you <laughs> know what I mean? In 55 minutes, you can get caught out there by yourself, 12-foot perfect wave. All the houses are like, go! And then you let it go because you didn't want it. I'm sure that adds some fear into some people uh, that, you know, right. choose but not to I mean, come. I think... All of our athletes today are on a different level. Oh, yes. They're, they are definitely level makers right. setting the bar. All charging. Mm -hmm. And it's good. Um, where's Bianca from? That was an awesome wave that she packed up, up right. in this heat, too. She's definitely a charger. I'm, I'm not familiar with Bianca. Yeah, but, but oh, she got some some pull in style that right. I just noticed on that last set wave. Yeah, thank you to Salt and Air Studios for the great live broadcasts. Mike Prickett and his crew always taking care of special North Shore events and just you know surf events, you know surf culture, surfing life, you know. And when you think about it, Dahui, it's a big part of that. I want to say they protect our Pacific Rim. Mm. Dahui, backdoor shootout. Well, you see them paddling out. Yep. That means they see something coming out on the horizon. And it's way out there on the horizon, Isaiah. Here comes the... Wave. This is just the first waves Kiala's. on the inside. Oh, Ooh, Kiala wanted that thing, but there's also three or four in the back. Oh, well, here comes a big one. This is a big one. No, unfortunately, the women are out of place for that one. That thing looked way bigger than the drone footage. <laughs> but here we go. This Moana Come on, let's let one, one line up oh. for them. Yep, they're definitely shopping for the right wave. Something kind of snuck on the reef a little bit wrong, yeah? Right. And you know, because this is a team event, these you're going to see these girls again. Right. You know, and yep. you're going to see all these teams you watch today. You're going to see Peruvian Tubos, Team Florence, Dahui Japan, Volcom, Snap Four, Quicksilver, WSL Wahine, and Dahui Wax. They're all going to surf throughout the next four days, rounds, as a team to get on this leaderboard. And uh, what I was talking with you and Rock earlier, there's also going to be an individual winner. So that's Correct. awesome. I mean, you know, 
only contest of its kind that does it like this. Yeah. Cool format. Love the format. I'm saying a little more, you know, team friendly and oh yeah, a lot of camaraderie. But how's that? You get more progression, elevation of running a team event, and they're trying to put work as a team. There's a little bit more comfortable. They can be a little bit more comfortable and you know less aggressive with each other. They can surf, get their waves, cherry pick, get the scores they need, and then win individually overall. So. Well, beautiful afternoon yeah i'm excited you know, for these women i want this perfect apex pipe waves to come straight to them because the ocean i think of all day it has toned down for our wahine just a bit right but there still is some large waves Well, we're lucky to have some uh, beautiful weather. We had a lot of rain the last couple of weeks. Yeah, were we expecting rain today? Or no? Mm, I don't. Not that I know okay, of. Okay, this. Not. I mean, this was a th this was a beautiful day. Because that whole hol holiday was pretty soggy. Right. Awesome, but soggy. I didn't surf much. I wanted to. Well, nine minutes left in this heat. Out nine of the minutes, and what we minutes. got out the back there. And hopefully in this last nine minutes, our women will have opportunity to get some more barrels. So far, we've had Kiala Kentley at the beginning of the heat. Of course, a couple good barrels. and Charging. Bianca got a good barrel. Moana got a couple. And um, she got two, and Bethany, Bethany got, got, got two, but one over the handlebars, and she went right back. Ooh, what do you think about this one, Isaiah? Yeah, they're this definitely one's looking up. at it. They're a little far out. Hopefully, not it's bending. too far out. Ooh. See Moana paddling hard here on the screen. Oh. Oh, Bianca takes a look. Don't worry, ladies. There's about five, six more lines out the back. Now there's also a lot of waves coming into uh, Pupakea area. Right. Here comes some sets. Oh. Here we go, ladies. Let's go. Oh, and they look like good ones, too. Feathering we'll out see. the second reef, standing up on the first reef. Hopefully, someone's in position. Keala. Oh. The girls make it under safely, but there's more in the back. One, two, three. Keala yeah. taking a look. Taking a look. Paddling oh hard. My Bethany. Goodness. Oh. Oh, goes down. Gravity drop with the lip. Why Water Patrol races in. Hope she's, she's okay. okay. She's up and the water patrol is, is there. Wow, that was one heavy. of the heaviest wipeouts we've seen all day. She is one of a kind. She came up quick. Her board is broken. No, she's not. Oh, here we go. Moana. Oh, Moana on a bomb. Bottom Moana. turns. Pipe bomb. Stalls under the pocket. Stalls. Beautiful. Oh, she went to crack the section or something. Moana Wong's been waiting. She got two under her belt, but sh this girl wants to get Shaq because Dahui backdoor shootout, that's what it's all about. Bethany Hamilton wow, here's blowing a replay. minds. 
This is Moana Jones on the last one. Her long bottom turning. Trying to get in the pocket. But man, that wave that Bethany went on. Holy oh smokes. Oh man. That thing would have broke a brother like me. <laughs> huh? I think uh, Hawaiian Water Patrol would, would get me up the beach wow. after that one. She came down with the lip, but right. her paddling capability is next level. Like, she was going. You know, all day we've been watching the men out there. Yeah. They've been selective, and yeah. I saw a lot of waves like that that no yeah. one wanted. Yes. No one wanted. Thank you for touching on that. She looked at it. She, she says, this is I'm a good one. It. I'm it going like for it. The bottom dropped out, and that oh. thing was just... yeah. Unmakeable. And she knows how to play. I mean, I'm glad she wore a helmet because that <laughs> lip was racing her to the bottom. And she didn't even pin drop. She said, I'm going to get Lickens. And she popped right back out of that thing. You know, I might have still been pressed on the bottom, pulling my. Bethany, hats off to you. Five minutes, five minutes, 30 seconds remaining in this WSL Wahine heat. Yep, you got Bianca Valenti, Bethany Hamilton, Keala Kenley, and Moana Wong in this WSL Wahine heat. They are going up against the men's leaderboard. Let's go, gang. In this next five minutes, let's send them some beautiful pipe waves. And my hat's off to them. Mana Wahine. And we're all here remembering the Duke. Thank you for all your education today about that. I can't wait to talk to you more Right. in the next coming days. Oh, it looks like Bethany might be looking yep. at this one. I know who's searching for a wave after a wipeout like that. <laughs> like she's like, you know what I mean? I love this sport. And I just love surfing here. in this general. Moana going for this one. Yes. Pulls it underneath the hood. Gets deep. My screen out. froze, but she just came out. Beautiful. She's going to go for the hit. Oh. Makes the turn. With the bonus hit on the inside. She kicks out at gums right. Nice. Great ride. That's what she's been waiting for. Took her her fourth go to get what she wanted. 354 left in the heat. 354 in the water. 350 left in the heat. 350 left in the heat. All right, three minutes, 50 seconds left in this heat. Yeah. Um, With the jet ski assist, they can get out quicker. That's so good, the jet ski assist. You'll also get to see Moana's husband coming up in the stand-up when they do run it. Tehotu Wong. I just met him today. Good brother. And, yeah. More waves at hand. All right. There comes On some hand. more sets up out on the horizon. They come. I love it. Keala heard Kainoa's <laughs> voice and she just put her arms in. She, she loves to cliffhang. Yeah, Ever since we were kids and she was in the Wahine one. circuit, she's always she's always put on a show. The girls are a little bit too far out for this one. All right, just two minutes left. Yeah, two minutes. Kiala paddling for this. Kiala calling Moana, Moana in. Turns around. Team, team. Woo. Just drops in and kicks out. Just missed that little under the hood snap, but Moana Wong puts in a lot of time over here and she knows exactly what she's looking for. And 
the Swahine are doing a great job with what they have on offer. You know, first time ever that the Wahine will be competing right. against the men. Okay, Keala's paddling hard. Here we go. Is this Moana? Moana. Oh. Stalling for the barrel. Unfortunately, it's not going to cooperate, but whew, nice wave. A nice wave, nonetheless. Keala Kennelly behind the peak. In the pit. Oh. Come up high. Ooh, she Almost just got made pinched. It. Great ride for Keala. What a show she's putting on. Like you were touching on, she was, you know, also born with like what the guys are born. Um, I'm going. You know what I mean? Not that. Oh, no. Nah. Not today. She doesn't have that. She doesn't have that not today attitude. <laughs> it's today. Yeah, and she's going. Keala Kenley. Always an entertainer. Definitely a charger. All right, well, that's it. Pauhana with the contest for today. And aloha, thank you for joining us. And it was a long day, Ezra. We had eight different teams out eight surfing. We just teams. finished off with the Wahine in this division. Beautiful yeah. surf all day long. The you guys all did amazing. And um, join us tomorrow, hopefully. We'll see what's right. in store, huh? Well, we're going to check out some of the highlights from today. Here we had, uh, I believe this was. Peru Tubos team right, early this morning. morning. Then John John. Team Florence, they came out with a bang. And uh, John John scored Thank a 10 point ride. Unreal. A lot of good waves. That was Eli. Eli's 9.5. Uh, 9.5. This is the wave of the day. Balaram stack, 11 points for that oh. ride. I love that wave. Makulkai Rothman on a backdoor cool. trainer. We'll also have this is Team Japan. Yes, they threaded the needle in some difficult barrels today. Team Japan, the Hui. Oh, this oh, was Mason. a snap four heat. Mason Ho is putting on a show. All of his antics. Wow, that was beautiful. I didn't see that one. I must have missed right. that one on break. And then our last heat of the day was Bethany Hamilton and the women's heat. Thank you for joining us. Mahalo to all of our sponsors. Thank you so much. Well, great we'll day. see you guys again as we continue the backdoor shootout of 2022. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you Isaiah very Walker, much for having us. Ezra. Ezra Rodriguez.